kind of off to the uh, south and west there of Tuscaloosa at this point. Uh, that storm is moving right over Tuscaloosa here. And if Dave, I've produce... got that pulled up on the okay, camera. Do we so have it? Is, is it back up? This running? is the live there we look, go. look of at that. that cell. Here's the wall cloud. Yep. Here's the lowering right here. Uh, the weather service is calling this a radar indicated tornado, and, and we can see that there doesn't really appear to be anything right now, but if there is one, this is where it would develop. This is looking kind of southwest. Can we take uh, that full back in control? Just yeah, so we can take keep, this keep talking. Screen, Just, uh, there we go. I'll, I'll manipulate the camera here. There we go. There's the wall cloud where your mouse is right now yeah, uh, I'll, with uh, that one. Pan over that to raindrop needs to go bit. away. Um, there we go. There we go. So this is what we need to keep an eye on. This, yes. If there is anything that, uh, if there's a tornado that develops with this storm, that's where it would be, in the southern suburbs of Tuscaloosa. So you can see there, this on. heavy rain coming down, you see right there. Yeah, I see uh, that. There's a little bit of that rain shaft. The rain shaft, shaft coming there. on in. Uh, but this is the storm that's under that tornado warning here. This is uh, the one for including Tuscaloosa, Northport area there as well, too. This is coming from the hospital there, looking off to the south and southwest, I guess, at this point. Uh, but you can see here, uh, that's where we're watching. Very heavy rain continue to come on down with that one. Uh, but uh, have not seen a tornado coming out of this. That is definitely your base lowering. Uh, look, waiting to see if yeah, there's more coming out of that. Very well defined wall cloud. It there. is. Uh, again, it's definitely, uh, we're, you know, we talk about rotating thunderstorms. This is definitely one of those with that uh, lowering there continuing. Um, <clears throat> uh, still, again, mainly just seeing that heavy rain at this point. Not seeing much else. Uh, at, at this time coming from that, but it, you can see it's moving fairly quickly too. Uh, yeah. Uh, I believe it's 30, 35 miles per hour. Yeah, uh, so it's uh, in the chat room. Uh, but uh, again, looks like just rain at this point coming from that, which, hey, we'll take that. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see strong winds coming out of that as well. Yeah, yeah especially in uh, any, any part of the downdraft of this storm. With the winds as fast as they are higher up in the atmosphere, it doesn't take much to see 50, 60 mile per hour winds mixed down to the surface, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's the, there's the rain shaft there you see on the right hand side of the screen. Um, it's, it's certainly a lowering. Uh, doesn't appear to be a tornado down there right now, but uh, it's, it's certainly worth, worth keeping an eye on. And obviously, this is not the only cell in Tuscaloosa County. We have another cell that's farther east in Brookwood that had a history of producing uh, damage, especially in the southern part uh, of uh, Tuscaloosa County. On the, uh, what, what do we have there on the right hand side? Is that? Okay, so that's from 5920. Okay, uh, is that uh, that looks is that the McFarland exit that's right there? Okay, looking off to the north, that is uh, where we're trying to. Looking off to the north from the McFarland exit from 5920, that's where we are there. You just saw the lightning flash there uh, in the screen. Um, let me uh, let me switch over to the radar here and see how this. Let me get an exact location on if there is any rotation. Um, so this this cell that's in uh, over top of downtown Tuscaloosa. It doesn't look like there's actually a tornado down with that. It doesn't look all that impressive. But this one in eastern Tuscaloosa County, there's something there, uh, without a doubt. Uh, north of Brookwood, moving northeast near Patterstown. Uh, let That's me stronger over. than we've seen in a while here. Right, yeah. Maybe just a very faint Maybe. signature near Davis Road. Maybe some debris there. Um, that looks a little bit more impressive than the one over Tuscaloosa. But still, regardless, here in Tuscaloosa, stay sheltered for a little bit longer while we uh, wait for these storms to pass. Because it'll take, uh, I, I would say, at least the next 30, 45 minutes need to be stayed sheltered in your interior room away from doors and windows. Dave? All right, uh, again, here, again, another vantage point there, the Tuscaloosa shot we are watching here as well uh, as it continues you moving through it here. But still, still watching this here very closely uh, going forward here uh, with a storm as potential uh, for a tornado. You can see here again the darker skies are clearing off to the uh, south there with it as well, too. So uh, we do have, uh, again, the potential for this storm to uh, possibly do something. As we mentioned earlier, it does have that uh, rotation with it, and uh, we saw that as well, too. So we're going to keep a very close eye on this one. One is it continues to quickly move there off to the northeast at this point. So let me go back and switch it here to the radar again uh, and show you what we have going on uh, across the area there as Griffin continues to monitor that uh, right now. If we can get the radar to pop back up here, it'd be great here. Uh, well, uh, we'll continue checking that out here. But nonetheless, though, as Griffin continues to move through the region here, uh, we'll still watch and see uh, what we're talking about uh, with all of this at that point. Dave, so, I've got uh, there's a debris there ball go. with that eastern Tuscaloosa County storm now. 
well. Yeah, there, okay, here is yeah. the radar right now. Uh, looking at debris uh, again, just kind of Brookwood. Coming there's a TDS on in. there. Yeah, uh, so still watch. Oh, there is that one you're talking about. Yeah, there we go. That east. one, yeah. Let's go over to there's this a one. There's tornado here now. back down again. That one is definitely a tornado here, kind of north of the Brookwood area at this point. So uh, we do have debris coming on in that location there. Uh, let me go ahead and Kind of get a little tighter in on this, what we're talking about here. Uh, County Road 59 here, that same area we're talking about. Hannah, uh, let's see, uh, Creek Road, this area, this is where we do have a tornado right now at this point. So if you live in those areas, Hannah Creek Road, Alabama Junction Road, uh, we're also looking at County Road 59. Uh, Surlis area here, just off to your south, this is actually debris showing up. This tornado has kind of recycled a little bit, it's continuing to get a little bit stronger. And indeed, we do have that, at least at this point here. Uh, so there's Birch. Field area, there's East Brookwood. So it's just off to the north there of each uh, East Brookwood area. Birchfield, again, we are talking about uh, that storm as it continues to move on in, uh, at least at that point. So still watching this one here, uh, giving you a track on it right now, uh, kind of working its way on in toward, uh, say, the Birchfield area again right now. Just got bigger. It did just get bigger here. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll give you an update here. Bull City, 15 minutes. Mud Creek, 20. North Johns, 21. Ezra there, uh, kind of about 24 minutes. So, uh, Birchfield, if you're watching us, safe place right now. And that's where we need to be. They, we have a, definitely debris showing up here uh, with that storm. Uh, giving you an idea, it's rain wrap, folks. You're not going to be able to see this. So, you're just going to have to uh, listen. If you hear that roar of the wind, that's what we're talking about here with this storm as it continues to come on in. Uh, that storm continues to uh, work its way here. And eventually, on in toward uh, coming on into Jefferson County. So we're going to be watching this one here uh, with that because the, the track will take it here uh, over on in eventually toward Jefferson County. So I'll be watching here on into Hueytown area right now. You're not uh, quite in the path of it, but you could be. So we'll have to see here. Definitely the storm has ramped up quite a bit here uh, in the last little bit. You can see where we're talking about. There is that tornado. That is that debris ball we're talking about here. That means debris is being lofted into the air and working its way here off there toward the north and east at this point. So that storm is what we're keeping an eye on right now, coming out of Tuscaloosa County, eventually on into Jefferson County, and I think there it continues to get pretty much bigger there. Look at that uh, at this yeah. point here. Um, so again, if you're watching Al Junction Road there, Alabama Junction Road, uh, that is what we're talking about. Again, that debris right in Birchfield. So Birchfield area, uh, the storm is right over top of you. That's what we're talking about. This is a tornado. This is debris being lofted in the air, and the radar is picking it up. Up. Birchfield Road area, Hannah Creek Road, right between the two. That is where the tornado is. This is just a snapshot, so it's likely the tornado has already moved a little more to the northeast of there already, too. Uh, so we're likely going to see here some of these other areas. Let me kind of zoom in tighter here out ahead of this uh, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, right now, some really rural areas, of course, too, but at County Road 54, the biggest one we're watching, though, uh, some of these other ones not really uh, have much of a name, kind of more than probably some backcountry road types. Uh, but nonetheless, though, that storm is continuing to work its way uh, in toward parts of the uh, eastern part there of Tuscaloosa County. This is the Jefferson County line right now. Uh, definitely uh, looking at a significant tornado at this point. Give you an idea, a perspective here. Let me kind of zoom out and show you where the interstate is. Here's Interstate 5920. So it is north of there at this point, north of Vance, off to like the northwest of the Lakeview area now. But that is definitely what we're talking about a tornado. That's continuing at least half on that a mile track. wide, that debris ball. There, I just half mile wide. Yeah, these are large tornadoes. Yeah, uh, I just so, measured it. Uh, yeah, th these are going to be significant. Large tornadoes coming through throughout the day. It's only 3:33 in the afternoon, uh, so this is going to continue here in the morning. Remember, we told you the first round is going to be the afternoon, evening, individual thunderstorms that are going to be capable of producing some tornadoes, some strong, some long-tracked and large tornadoes. Remember, this is just round one. Round two comes later today and tonight with that line coming in from the west. But we're still tracking here uh, that storm, uh, kind of giving you a better perspective of what we're talking about here. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit more for you uh, and show you that we do have this continuing to move on in Birchfield area. You are under the gun right now with that tornado moving on through your area here. That is debris tracker. This is our indicator showing there is debris at this point. Uh, still showing here that, uh, again, right now in the Birchfield area, Bull City, you're next in 13 minutes. Mud Creek, around 19 minutes. North Johns, 20. Ezra there, 22 minutes. Uh, so it's going to continue working its way on in. Uh, it does not have too big of a hail, but a three quarter inch size hail with it, but some strong wind shear with it as well. Uh, but we do have definitely some debris being picked up there. That tornado 
later warning does go till 4:15 uh, with that storm as it continues to move its way on in toward eventually here on in toward it could be Jefferson County. So we're going to watch this one here uh, because if you continue on that track with it, uh, it looks like this one potentially could move uh, north of Birmingham if it holds together. Uh, there it is. There's the new tornado warning just coming out Jefferson yep, County there it is right for now. Jefferson County. Uh, just popping up for that supercell, that thunderstorm there. Uh, notice this does not include Birmingham, does not include Hoover, Bessemer area, Hueytown, kind of on the edge of that warning. Uh, but if it holds together, I got to watch out here, Gardendale area, and right along the I-22 corridor here. That's kind of where the direction that is headed. So, uh, report of a confirmed tornado, at least at this point, uh, with this one significant debris showing up there uh, with that as well too. Looking at the uh, velocity products here, still watching that tornado back, potential tornado in Tuscaloosa. Although we're seeing rotation, but as we saw in the live camera. I did not see anything coming down from the base lowering, which is good news. Uh, but by all means here, the storm we've been watching here uh, is going to be our strongest one coming on in. So that's the new warning here till 430 for uh, Jefferson County right now uh, with that storm coming out of Tuscaloosa County. Uh, so that's, that's at least some good news there. As we zoom out even more a little bit, uh, fortunately, not much else going on around the rest of the area here. Let me go ahead and throw the reflectivity of the radar back on to get down to the south here. Still watching those storms, but potential for a tornado down there, too. Uh, these are still some, some of the other storms we're keeping an eye on uh, down here to the south as they move on in, have the potential here uh, to produce tornadoes. So we need to keep an eye on some of these. They too are showing some rotation at this point. Uh, not seeing it as quite strong though as the one we have coming out right now of uh, right now into Tuscaloosa County, heading further on in toward Jefferson County at this point as well. So that's the big storm we definitely need to keep an eye on. I uh, don't want to forget about the one here over in Tuscaloosa. Uh, this storm's kind of working its way right into your area here. Still showing some signs of rotation, likely a little bit of some hail tied in with that as well too. Uh, so still going to keep an eye on this one. Uh, the rotation with it is still there, uh, but haven't had a report of anything at least, but still going to keep an eye on it right now. Uh, right, that one could get up toward Birchfield area. Around 13 minutes, Patterson Town 16, Bull City 18. Again, assuming this one holds together over toward North Johns, they're around 23 minutes as well, too. Uh, but by all means, the one we're really keeping an eye on is the other one kind of just here uh, across part of the northern part there of Jefferson County here, north of Brookwood at this point. Uh, this storm, again, is going to eventually cross into Jefferson County, Birchfield area. Again, that's where this tornado is. So you need to be in your safe place. This is likely causing damage and maybe a large tornado as well, too, as it continues to work its way through the area there here. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit tighter for you and give you a better feel. Uh, Birchfield Road, Kellerman area here, County Road 54. All these are under the gun here as well, too, uh, as it continues that track here moving through Birchfield. So it likely has been just cleared there uh, by County Road 54, some of the rural county roads here as well, too. You definitely are looking at the potential here uh, for this storm as it continues to move on in. Again, this is north of the interstate, uh, so we're talking about rural parts there of um, Tuscaloosa County. But it is going to be moving its way out of where it is, a rain wrapped tornado here, eventually crossing on in toward uh, Jefferson County. Also, keeping an eye on this one back here in Tuscaloosa area. Uh, that one looking pretty interesting as well, too. Sarah? Dave, this tornado you're talking about that just moved out of Brookwood, the National Weather Service has confirmed that this is a large and very dangerous tornado that was spotted near Brookwood. This same cell right now is tracking into West Jefferson County. That's why we have that tornado warning, and these are the towns that could be impacted here shortly. This was our initially a pretty impressive debris signature, not as impressive right now, which is good, but this cell has a history of producing a very dangerous tornado back towards Brookwood. So we want to watch this one closely. This is tracking towards Ezra. Hueytown, Molga, Fairfield in about 20 minutes. So you guys have time, but you need to be getting into that safe place. Zooming into some of the locations of roadways that are being impacted right now. Mud Creek Road in West Jefferson County. County Road 59 in West Jefferson County. County Road 15. Moving a little bit closer towards Hueytown. Now, the center of Hueytown, this is moving just to the north of you. So northern portions of Hueytown Town here. That includes White Drive, Lily Lane in northern Hueytown, 
14th Street, just north of Hueytown, 8th place north of Hueytown in that tornado warning right now, and then extending a little bit farther east towards Mulga. So this is where the cell that produced a large, dangerous tornado near Brookwood, this is the cell that is tracking towards Lock Road right now, Park Road. This is Taylor's Ferry Road in West Jefferson County, White Drive in West Jefferson County as well. Zooming out a little bit more to show you where exactly Exactly, we're talking about. We do have a new tornado warning that does include the cell um, just to the west of this that Dave was talking about, past the city of Tuscaloosa. But we do have this tornado warning here, still in Tuscaloosa County, and then in West Je uh, West Jefferson County. The cell that was near Brookwood is tracking into Jefferson County. It does include the southern tip of Walker County, but that is well south of Jasper County. So if you're hearing sirens, possibly. Possibly in Walker County, if you're in Jasper, you guys are not in the tornado warning. It is the southern tip of Walker County and then West Jefferson County. Something to note if you are hearing sirens and you are in Jefferson County, if you hear the sirens, you need to be in your safe place because Jefferson County now makes it where they only activate sirens that are in the tornado polygon. So you are not going to hear the sirens if you're not in that polygon. So if you are hearing sirens right now in West Jefferson, Jefferson County. You, this is an imminent threat. You need to be taking shelter right now in West Jefferson County because there was a very destructive and dangerous tornado in Brookwood that is now tracking into West Jefferson County. If you hear sirens outdoors, you need to be in a safe place in West Jefferson County. Also including the southern tip of Jasper County here right now. But we do have this new tornado warning that is for Tuscaloosa County. I want to send it back to Dave to give the latest on this one that is uh, also included in West Tuscaloosa County right now. Actually, we're going to send it over right now to Sherry and Art with the latest. Sarah, thank you. We want to go to Tuscaloosa County. As you said, Brookwood uh, affected already by a large tornado on the ground. We have the director of the EMA on the Yeah, line. Nick Lally is with us right now. I'm really concerned about hearing that there is a large tornado on the ground there and also a lot of debris. What can you tell us, Nick? Yes, Art. We are still waiting on damage reports from Brookwood. There was a deputy that spotted uh, the tornado on the ground at uh, Brookwood Parkway earlier. So we have a lot of damage uh, from the earlier tornado on South Rosser Road, mobile homes and tree uh, damage. So we, they're still uh, just getting to that area now just to check on everyone. Uh, Indian Creek Road near South Rosser Road, uh, we have a car basically that's been flooded um, on 30, uh, 32nd Street and uh, 20th Avenue. So we have crews now in the South Rosser Road area, which is uh, 69 South in Tuscaloosa County. Director Lawley, we know that this, this system, um, we're not out of the woods just yet. What are you telling people there as far as where they need to stay away from? I know people want to get out and see what's happening near their homes. Yeah, we're just telling them right now just to stay in the storm shelter because there's there's more storms coming and and right now we we'll we got some power lines down and to stay away from the power lines and uh, the good news is is right now we do not have reports of any uh, of any uh, damage as far as uh, loss of life or anything like that so that is a plus uh, a positive thing that that you know we can say right now. We're looking at a couple of images. We're looking at our radar now, which indicated from our storm team, weather team, saying about the debris there on the ground in Tuscaloosa. Also looking at one of our vehicles driving into the area, the storm chaser into the area. What kind of preparations went into today? Because we knew this was coming, and it's certainly people very concerned when you look back to 2011, Nick. Yes, sir. We've been planning for this now for about four days. Uh, I've been talking with Public Works, met with our elected officials. I uh, spoke with Mayor Maddox this morning uh, and probate judge uh, Robertson. And uh, I spoke with uh, all the engineers, city of Tuscaloosa, city of North Port, and uh, the uh, sheriff of Tuscaloosa County, Sheriff Abernathy. And uh, it's all worked to, to plan now for the citizens of Tuscaloosa County. So uh, the planning has worked out. And uh, a couple of things we've had to change, but uh, so far everything's been good. We just we hope we keep getting reports that nobody's hurt. You you said those shelters were open. Did you guys find that you had a lot of people who took advantage of those shelters since there was so much time to plan? Uh, we do know of, of a couple that uh, yes, ma'am, that 
people did get in. We do not have a count yet. We will not have that until, of course, after the storms tomorrow. Well, Nick, certainly uh, you guys are not out of the woods yet. Um, what's your word to um, people in Tuscaloosa County right now as we understand this tornado warning is still in effect until after 4 o'clock this afternoon? Well, if you're, if you're still in the polygon, please, please take cover. Uh, get in your safe place, but when, when this is over, please watch the news. Stay by your weather radio because the night is not over. We still got another line to go, and uh, it scares me because everybody is awake now, and, and later on is when people will be in the bed. And so, just keep your uh, ways of getting alerts, and uh, and just stay safe, please. And so, if you have power, Director Lawley, thank you. Uh for that, and we'll check back with you once you guys get more assessment of the damage that's in that area. We know this system is moving towards Jefferson County. Jefferson County now having a tornado warning itself. Um, let's get to meteorologist Dave Nussbaum, who's following this right now. What's happening for us in Jefferson County? That's right, Sherry. That storm that we were just talking about, that's the one coming on in toward Jefferson County right now. And also behind it, another storm coming on in. Fortunately, these are the only storms right now locally that have a tornado warning. There's some more in the southern part of the state now. Uh, but watching both of these, that's the storm here that had the uh, tornado warning earlier with it. Let me go ahead and stop with it, or the tornado earlier with it. Uh, kind of zooming on in here at this point, I uh, want to show you the first one coming into Jefferson County here. This is the one we were talking about. Uh, still has the chance here to produce maybe uh, another tornado with it here. It did have a significant one earlier. Still showing some of the rotation, but it does not have quite the debris uh, like it showed earlier with that. Again, we had some significant uh, debris with it. I kind of go back a little step here, and you can see uh, it did go up, kind of worked its way there off to the northern part there before kind of weakening just a little bit across northern part of Tuscaloosa County. Now behind it though is another storm we're watching. Uh, this one here again uh, looking quite interesting has potential here. This one kind of working its way immediately just north of Brookwood which was just hit by that first tornado. Uh, still watching this one here pretty closely as well too. Giving you an eye with that again Birchfield around 9 minutes, Patterson Town around 13 minutes, Bull City there at 16, Mud Creek around 21. Uh, I think it's all the way to Ezra there coming on in at about 23 minutes. So we're going to continue watching that one here. Uh, definitely the Birchfield area. You need to take shelter immediately with this one here as it continues to move on into your area as well, too. Uh, that's the storm we're continuing to watch here. Has the potential uh, for maybe getting a little bit stronger. Not really seeing any debris really showing up with it at the moment, uh, but it has shown signs of strong rotation here with that. And that's so you see that uh, red going away from the radar, green going toward the radar. Are, get the counterclockwise circulation, and that's what we're talking about. Uh, latest reflectivity again still shows here on the radar uh, what we're talking about with that storm here as it continues to move on in uh, toward the area there across part just north of the Brookwood area here. Uh, across uh, the Birmingham area, though, we're watching these storms as they move on in. Uh, you can see Birmingham itself kind of be missed out on most. This is going to be part of the western and northern part of Jefferson County as it continues to move on in here from the southwest to the northeast, the typical track we see around. With these storms here as they continue to move on in. And uh, we'll show you here that uh, motion with them. Again, and there's tornado warnings that are in effect as well, too. Uh, but uh, still going to be watching that one coming on in toward Jefferson County. That storm, the initial one here, again, remember it had a pretty large tornado, didn't really have much with it, and then kind of got stronger. So it's moving over an area where we've seen rain, but haven't had any severe weather really coming on through. So the atmosphere is still kind of favorable and going to stay favorable all afternoon into tonight for that severe weather coming on in. So these are our two tornado warnings here in Tuscaloosa County and into Jefferson County here. Uh, they go again for a little while longer. We can see this one until 430 here in Jefferson County. Tuscaloosa County warning till 415. So it's going to be a little longer uh, for those. Current time is 348 right now uh, here across the Birmingham area of course too. So Hewittown, heavy rain falling for you here, but we're not seeing uh, anything too significant. Again, uh, still seeing some rotation with this one here uh, as it continues to work its way off there to the north and east and then watching behind it that other storm here uh, that definitely is turning to be more of the stronger and the better looking one at least at this point with respect to potential for a tornado with it I may have actually had a little bit of a, a tornado try to form earlier with it uh, the debris was kind of trying to show maybe something was coming from
from that one. Uh, but we're still going to watch that one here pretty closely. Fortunately, they're the only warnings we have in the viewing area, but we do have some just down to the south of us now, and those are what we'll be watching here. And notice how there's not too much coming out of Mississippi at this point, uh, but that's something that's going to be changing a little later on during the day today. We're going to watch more storms developing here. It's heating up out there. It's warm. It's humid, and they're going to race off in our direction as well, too. So we'll be definitely watching those pretty closely as we go forward here uh, through the next, of course, uh, potentially, believe it or not, Griffin, 12 more hours of this. Yeah, I've got the, uh, the bigger picture here. I just want to give everybody some perspective of how much longer we're going to be dealing with this. We've only been wall-to-wall -wall for about two hours now. All of this is out ahead of the cold front. We're not out of the woods until the cold front gets here, and it's way back over in central Louisiana and central Arkansas. You see the line of storms developing here back towards Monroe, Louisiana, and here's where we are. We've got a long way for all of this warm, moist air to to clear, uh, to clear the area and for the cold front to get here. You see down to the south, we have a bunch of more uh, tornado warnings that are popping up in rural west Alabama. You go due west uh, down Highway 80, like you're traveling from Montgomery to Demopolis and eventually to Meridian, Mississippi. All in that general area, there's a ton of uh, other tornado warnings that are popping up. Obviously, this, we've had more than just the Tuscaloosa County storms today. Many people, I'm sure, tuned in when we have these Tuscaloosa County warnings that are popping up. We've had others. We've had uh, a tornado that produced damage in parts of southern Chilton County uh, that continued northward up into Coosa County. We had a potential tornado that uh, that formed about 30, 45 minutes ago near the steam plant in Gorgas in northwest Jefferson County. Uh, but those two prior tornadoes I just described have since, uh, have since dissipated. Those warnings are no longer active. And I'll zoom back in to show you the current active warnings that we have uh, at the moment. So here's what we've got. Just these two active warnings uh, with these two distinct supercells that have tracked through Tuscaloosa County for about the past hour. Uh, tracking up to the northeast at the moment. That tornado warning includes western Jefferson County. Obviously, a lot of people watching in the Birmingham metro. This warning does not include Birmingham, Bessemer, Hueytown, Vestavia, none of those places. This is all going to be in the far western part of the county, kind of out towards Oak Grove and out towards Mulga and Adamsville. So if you're near Oak Grove or kind of in the western part of Hueytown, I would stay sheltered for a little bit longer because these storms uh, have a history of producing some rotation there. And I'm Obviously, the live look from Tuscaloosa County as we have uh, people, have we have, as we have boots on the ground that try to follow this storm uh, t as it continues to track northeast up into Jefferson County. Uh, Sarah, if you're ready, I'll go and toss it to you. Yeah, Griffin, it is important to note, just like you mentioned, if you are in the tornado warnings, even though it's not looking impressive from our end on radar right now, that does not mean you should let your guard down because what we've seen is these storms re strengthen. So if you are in that tornado warning, keep it uh, very close and make sure you stay attuned to the latest tracks of these storms. So here's the current warnings we have right now one in Tuscaloosa County, just north of Brookwood. Here is the possible rotation on radar just north of Brookwood, seeing some lightning strikes there. And then we have the active warning in West Jefferson County right now. So zooming in a little closer to the Tuscaloosa County warning. Here are some of the roads impacted. We have Stanley Road, Birchfield Road, Hall Road, Lock 17 Road. This is all in west or yeah, eastern Tuscaloosa County, up towards Bull City, and then into West Jefferson County, County Road 50. 54 in West Jefferson County, Providence County Road 15 in Jefferson County. Zooming out to show you the big picture here, here are the current active tornado warnings. And then these darker red boxes show the flash flood warnings. That's also something to consider if you have anyone traveling on the roadways right now. Potential for flash flooding. That is very dangerous. If you are, have anyone traveling home from work right about now, they need to be very careful if they are in the flash flood warning. So that includes the Birmingham Metro back into Tuscaloosa as well. Because of these storms that have moved through, we've seen flooding and ponding on the roadways. So if you're under the flash flood warning, you should not be traveling in those areas right now. So the dark red box here through the Birmingham Metro uh, definitely 
already prone to flooding as these storms continue to move through. I'm going to show you the big picture that we have going on right now from our cameras that extend all the way from West Alabama to East Alabama. It's soggy really all across the state. We're seeing uh, through Tuscaloosa County, uh, Rainfall, Gadsden, Birmingham as well. Giving you the big picture of what's going on, as, this, as the, we mentioned earlier, we are not done with our storms. Even though these are moving through, we still have active warnings that extend back into Arkansas and Louisiana, near M Monroe, Louisiana. That's out ahead of the cold front that's going to move through later this evening. So another round for potential for severe weather later this evening. Timing it out for you on Futurecast. Widespread showers, thunderstorms across the area through dinner time tonight, possibly seeing severe weather in this as well, specifically down to our southwest as the storms through Sumter and Pickens County continue to lift up through our area. We're going to be watching those closely through the dinner time hours. We'll get a break in the rainfall and the storm um, activity for uh, in spots around 8 p.m., but you can still see widespread coverage here. The cold front is going to approach the area by around 11 o'clock this evening in West Alabama, continuing to track towards the Birmingham metro around midnight. Could continue to be dealing with severe weather at this point, so we are not going to be done with this anytime soon. The line will push to into East Alabama after midnight. We will be giving the all clear to West Alabama around 2 a.m. We'll give the all clear through the Birmingham Metro just after 2 a.m. and then by East, uh, starting to see clearing by early morning in East Alabama. Uh, for the latest information on the warnings, we'll send it back over to Dave. All right, uh, live look here uh, again, Tuscaloosa County. Looking at the video there on the uh, right side of your screen, uh, you can see here uh, our storm chasers out there. They were just driving through some trees down, uh, following looks like an, a, maybe a police officer or something out ahead of them. Uh, but it looks like we just kind of followed through there. Uh, they've been looking at trees down across the area. There you can see uh, looks like some more stuff on the roadways uh, as they continue to move through some trees down, uh, possibly even some power lines down. I don't know where exactly they are. Brookwood. This is Brookwood. Oh, okay, wow. that's, that's a lot can we take that full, there. guys, uh, in the back, if we could? Uh, just to give you an idea here, uh, you can see they got some snap trees, uh, some uh, significant uh, uh, damage there. Look Looks the like the trees tree are bent damage. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, looking up here again. Uh, maybe the road's blocked yeah, up here now. Yeah, that road's completely blocked. Uh, so, wow. yeah, I don't know if that's a storm chaser in front of him or not, but you can see here the road's definitely blocked. Uh, but that's damage here. Uh, looks like power lines may be kind of down with that as well, too. Uh, this is in Tuscaloosa County, the Brookwood area. Uh, from our severe studio, uh, John Humphreys there, uh, continuing to look through here. He's kind of going around and checking out. There's that tree on the power line. That can't be good news. Uh, but uh, look, this looks like some significant tree damage. Uh, fortunately, it looks very rural. I uh, don't know. If he's going to be able to get through there, wow. I can see those power lines definitely are down with those trees. Uh, but that's uh, some pretty significant tree damage we have right now. Uh, this is in Tuscaloosa County, inside the Brookwood. There, you can see here a better perspective of it. Uh, he's not going to be able to get through that. That's uh, definitely power lines down. Um, but uh, this is from that storm that was a tornado. We showed the debris tracker from that. Uh, this is a pretty significant tree damage here. T trees look to be in different, uh, laying down in different directions, which would lay, led us to believe this was a tornado debris damage here. Uh, but uh, he's going to have to <laughs> turn around, unfortunately, and try to find another way around. Um, but uh, yeah, this is near the Brookwood area. Uh, with that storm uh, that it can move through that is now working its way on in toward Jefferson County. And as that moves on into Jefferson County, it has weakened some, which is some great news with it. But uh, nonetheless, though, it still has some rotation with it. And it's definitely something we'll be watching here uh, moving forward with it as well, too. Uh, but we will have another storm kind of just north of Brookwood here. That secondary storm we're still watching as well, too. So looking at the latest here, if we go switch back to the radar. That may uh, be getting some steam again. It is. Uh, I hate to say that here now in Jefferson County. Uh, as we're watching that next storm coming on in, uh, looks like this one here could be uh, trying to get reorganized. This would likely be the third time it's trying to do something. Yeah, that and is pretty right much in the, That's in the here. same spot that that previous tornado was in, uh, right on top of Birchfield there. Yeah, so they have the one down here, and then we got this the original one. This is the one that caused original damage to the north, and then the secondary one uh, to the south as well, too, here. Uh, looking at the debris tracker right now. 
now. There's, uh, there's a little something there. Something trying, not this. This is not, not what we're looking it's at. No, flow, it's back in that. here, what we're talking yeah. about here, kind of going back to reflectivity. That's the location we're looking at here. So let me go ahead and do a little track on that one here. Uh, Bull City, about eight minutes for you. Mud Creek, about 14 minutes. North John's, 15. Uh, Ezra, 17. Glen Hills, 28 minutes with that storm. So uh, that's, the second, that's the second storm, kind of working its way through the Birchfield area at this point here. Uh, our rating on it is pretty high there that we look at with the BTI rating you see in the bottom of your screen. So uh, anything around six would indicate likely a tornado trying to form there as well. And looking at the velocity with it here, again, we're still seeing it. May, it looks like it's getting a little bit uh, stronger there. Let me go ahead and zoom on into that storm. Um, and you can see, yeah, it's starting to get a little more right over Birchfield. So if you're yep. watching us in Birchfield, uh, we could have another tornado forming right now over top of your area. So you were just kind of brushed by the other storm here. Uh, now we have this one coming on into your area as well, too. And again, there's a chance we could see, uh, if I can get this to work here, we get some debris uh, showing up right in the Birchfield right area. There. Not that. That's not what we're looking at. This is right in through here. So it's likely we could have a tornado coming down for you right now in Birchfield. So if you watch Watching us in the Birchfield area, uh, you definitely want to uh, take shelter immediately. Of course, you should be in shelter. We've had a tornado warning for a while. Again, could be seeing another tornado developing uh, in Birchfield right now. This is the storm that was back that moved over Tuscaloosa with the warning, but fortunately, no tornado. This is now in this location here, kind of giving a perspective of what we're talking about. Uh, again, that's the storm we're looking at here. Don't look at that. That's not what we're talking about. It's this right in through here uh, and looking at the radar again. Uh, this is, oh, there we go. Uh, look at that, uh, Griffin. Yeah. It is strengthened just, significantly. Yep, there is definitely a tornado in Birchville right now. There's no question about that. Or we are looking at this has been the signature we've seen here uh, all afternoon with this. Uh, so, again, that is what we're talking about here. Uh, this storm here is definitely one that we're watching uh, and been, been watching, and now we have a tornado. So, uh, Birchfield area, it has moved kind of just off to the north, but fight likely formed here, and now has jumped here to the north. So, again, remember, this is just a snapshot. Think of it this way. You're looking at the interstate traffic going by. You see an 18-wheeler come. You take a picture of it. By the time you look at the picture, where's the 18-wheeler? A couple hundred yards down the street. Same concept in, indeed here with the radar when we look at this. So again, this is a tornado, folks. Yep. This is what we're talking about here. Again, just off to the north, the northeast of Birchfield, if you will. Uh, continuing on here, let me go ahead and do a track on this one just to give you an idea if I can get the tracker to work there. Uh, we'll show you here again. Bull City, five minutes. Mud Creek, about 11 minutes. Ezra, 13. Hewittown, again, if this holds together, we're talking about 27 minutes there and uh, looking at just continuing on that direction there. Guys, uh, uh, Art and Sherry, uh, what do you have now? Well, I certainly want to let people know there in Birchfield, if you know people in Birchfield, give them a call and tell them to take cover right now because you're listening to uh, Dave there. He says there is a tornado on the ground yeah. right now in Birchfield. Still time as well for Hueytown. We have Tuscaloosa Mayor Walt Maddox on the line for us right now. An eerily similar day happening for us right now, Mayor. What's happening there in Tuscaloosa? Well, we've been two for two in a positive way that we've had two tornado warnings. Two tornadoes hover virtually over the eastern half of the city, but no damage thus far. We consider ourselves very fortunate, but certainly reminds all of us of April 27th. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at some, some of our storm chaser video right now where we can see uh, trees have been snapped, trees on the ground in different directions. This is out in the county, um, not in Tuscaloosa City, but certainly as you look at this damage, and with that tornado warning still being in effect, well, you have to be, Mayor Maddox, you have to be very concerned about uh, the residents there in Tuscaloosa. Uh, we need to be very concerned, and hopefully these two warnings in the past hour will also alert us to, we still got this evening uh, storm front that's going to come through, and you look down in Louisiana and Mississippi, and you see things getting fired up. So um, I think for all of us, this is the pregame, and we've still got uh, the rest of the game to go. We know you guys have some shelters open. We talked to Director Nick Lawley earlier this afternoon. He talked about your planning. Are you telling people to get to those shelters? Uh, yes. In fact, we are shelters. I don't remember them being this full. And, and you and the, the entire media are to be congratulated because you've given people a warning to prepare. And so shelters are full. That's a good thing. We do know some people are leaving, but we need people to realize we still have another few hours to go uh, in this weather event. You're right, uh, Mayor Maddox. This is round one as we listen to our storm team. This is just round one. We've got round two coming much later tonight. But right now, Brookwood is, is, is an area that's still, I 
still recovering from 2011, even though we've seen a lot built up in that area. That is under the gun right now with the severe weather moving through that area. What's your message to, to, to people in the area? Get, take cover. Um, don't doubt your instincts. This is when you need to take cover. Um, this is when you need to be weather aware. And once you get through this round, take a deep breath, but realize there's a second round coming. Tuscaloosa Mayor Walt Maddox, thank you for joining us. We'll check back in with you a little later on as the system continues to rekindle. We need to get back to the CBS 42 storm team, though. Yeah, Dave. Thank you. Uh, no, all right. Uh, yeah, still watching the sto uh, storm here. Again, we were talking about it earlier here. Uh, heading north there again. We're talking about off to the north now, northwest, east there of Birchfield. So this storm has kind of cleared that area now, but continues to move on in here. That is a large tornado. This that is, is a down. large. I don't know if you tried measuring that one yet, Griffin. But, yeah, I'll uh, measure that. This is headed right toward Bull City area. This is the uh, county line. So Jefferson County. Uh, Jefferson County and into Tuscaloosa County. So, uh, the Bull City area, we're talking here, Groundhog Road, uh, County Road 59. County Road 59, we mentioned that a lot. Dave, a lot of same thing. That thing's about a mile wide. A mile wide. So, folks, again, Bull City area, take shelter now. The storm's going through. Again, potentially a mile wide, a very large tornado confirmed here on radar. Uh, this is a pretty significant size uh, tornado. It is working its way here off there to the north and off to the northeast at this point here, uh, showing you what it Looks like on uh, the reflectivity, it's right in through here. So we're looking at a rain wrap tornado, strong rotation tied in with it as well. But the best way to show you here is the debris. Uh, again, just even showing you where the strong winds are, that's where they're going to be right there as well, too. So uh, that's what we're talking about here. And I want to give you a storm track here. Let me zoom out a little bit and grab that debris here once again to show you. That's the best way to show you here uh, what we're talking about here, where the debris is indicated by the Doppler radar at this point. So uh, giving you an idea. What we're talking about here. Again, Bull City, it's basically on your doorstep. Mud Creek, 10 minutes. Ezra there, 12 minutes. Hueytown, uh, it could be coming up very, very dangerously close to you at 25 minutes there. And Hoag Town there, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, we're talking about uh, 25 minutes at this point. So I think, Ezra, you really need to be ready for this one. It is coming toward your direction, the Bull City area, as we speak now. Again, that is the storm we're talking about here as it continues to move on in. Again, at a fairly good clip. 30, 40 miles per hour. So that's the storm. We're not looking at that down there. It's this one right here. And this has been persistent here. Kind of show you the loop here. Of, watch how the debris really started showing up here as it got just north of Brookwood area and coming there to the north as well, too. So uh, this storm is definitely the strongest one we've seen out there. Definitely going to be talking about a tornado. There would be your kind of debris ball with it. From perspective, there's Birmingham right there off to the right side of your screen. So this one's going to miss the Birmingham metro area, or rather the city of Birmingham. Rather, but kind of just off into parts of Jefferson County. So, zooming on into this, this is going to be crossing over the county line here if it hasn't done so already. Uh, again, Groundhog Road, Franklin Road area, Bull City, you are under the gun. Tornado is moving through right now here uh, with this. And you can see where our debris tracker is uh, right now with this. Uh, but there you see it there. Again, it's uh, not as impressive. That's good, but it's still showing a tornado uh, across the area. There's Bull City area here, a Groundhog Road right across there. This is now crossing into Jefferson County from Tuscaloosa County. Franklin Road here off to the uh, south there uh, kind of worked its way right through there, uh, continuing all the way through here. I'd see some of the uh, Produce Creek Road there, uh, Stanley Road as well, County Road 59. Uh, these are all these roads that we talked about kind of coming on through. But again, right here, uh, Groundhog Road. Uh, again, this is where we're seeing right through Bull City that tornado is coming right through. Griffin measured it earlier, potentially mile wide tornado. Uh, I know we see these more often than we'd like to here in, South, in central Alabama. But nonetheless, though, uh, that is the storm we're watching here. Again, the storm is moving there off there uh, to the north and east at this point into Jefferson County now. So it's now into Jefferson County and will continue on that track here. Fortunately, this is still the only storm we're watching here locally uh, that we have to worry about. Uh, everything else is far enough to our south. But uh, by all means here, uh, we need to be keeping a close eye on this storm as it moves on into Jefferson County. So it's not 
this part. It's this right here. That is where we're keeping a close eye on as it continues to move on in. So Groundhog Road here again, just passing the Bull City area here. County Road is at 59 and Etheridge Road uh, kind of coming up here to County Road 59. That is where we have our tornado. Of course, it's probably a little bit beyond that at this point as it continues to move through. Looks like a new warning has just popped in there, Griffin. I don't yeah, have details and it's, on that um, one. it does include a few more towns that are in the Birmingham metro. This is uh, a new warning that you see kind of popped up right in here. So the new towns that are going to be included in that include Hueytown, Fairfield, and looks like Midfield as well. And dare we say it, a good chunk of the Birmingham metro included in that tornado warning. Now it's farther away from the actual tornado. It's way down here on the southwestern uh, part of the towards the southwest of downtown. So let's measure this out. If there is anything out there, it's still about you know, 20, 25 miles away from the actual city of Birmingham. So we can say that uh, for any of you watching us here in downtown, uh, that it's a really good distance away. That being said, you are included in the tornado warning polygon. So just to err on the side of caution, you may want to seek shelter just in case this tornado ramps back up, especially this area of rotation here that just passed through Bull City. We had, I mean, this storm has been pulsing back and forth, but in various scans of the radar, when you measure out the debris ball, it's potentially up to one mile wide. Let's pull up the debris uh, indicator one more time, see what we look at. Okay, so right here, that is where the tornado is right now, tracking northeast up towards County Road 15. If you're in Toadvine, Gilmore, Hopkins, Ezra, you guys are really close to this. You really need to seek shelter immediately. But uh, we can say right now it doesn't look nearly as daunting as it did a few scans ago on the radar, but there's still a tornado there. Uh, I can say that with confidence, that there's, there's a tornado right about here that's tracking northeast like that. This big blue area you see here, that's normally what you look for with tornado debris signatures, but this is inflow. That's all the winds going into the tornado, so that's likely not it. It's most likely this right here. So let's uh, switch over to the velocity one more time, and uh, I'll pull up the storm tracks. So we can get an ETA on these uh, in this little area of rotation we have here. Uh, this will be moving what looks like toward the, let me, we just got a new scan of the radar. Hold on one second. Let me uh, pull up the storm track one more time. Uh, if, if, we, if we measure this out, it looks like for the most part, this will be moving towards places like Molga in about 19 minutes. Uh, Fairfield for you in about 22 minutes, and then Graysville in about 24 minutes, if this area of rotation holds together, that is. I will say, and this scan doesn't look quite as impressive, but, uh, it, I mean, it's, we, we, we've seen it. It's, it cycles back and forth, so it's not something you really uh, want to take a chance with. Uh, Sarah, if you're ready, I'll toss to you. Yeah, Griffin, let's go a town by town or city by city to where this warning is going to move through, because as we've seen, these storms strengthen, they weaken, and then they strengthen again. So if you're in this tornado polygon that is in Jefferson County, you need to be in your safe place right now. So the wide view here shows Mulga and Adamsville right now in West Jefferson County. This is tracking towards Mulga, Adamsville, Fairfield, Midfield, and Hueytown are in the tornado polygon, but that does look like the area of circulation and the potential tornado right here is going to track just north of Hueytown. So folks in Hueytown, out of an abundance of caution, stay in your safe place, but I do want to say that it's likely going to track north of um, the center of Hueytown here. So zooming in to the roads impacted right now, and if you live or have family on any of these roads, make sure you tell them to get into your safe place right now. Taylor's Ferry Road in Jefferson County. This is where the area of circulation will be crossing over here in a matter of moments. Uh, Port uh, Birmingham Road, McLean Road, Patton Road, Park Road, Lock 17 Road. Moving a little bit farther east towards Mulga, you guys have a few minutes to be getting into your safe place right now, but towards Porter Road and Shady Grove, Shady Grove Road, Slope Drive near Shady Grove, Bayview as well. You guys are all in the tornado polygon right now. Zooming out to give you guys the big picture here, here is the active tornado warning in West Jefferson County. We current have a, currently have a flash flood warning that goes through Jefferson County and included um, through uh, Jefferson County, the downtown Birmingham metro 
tomorrow. Those are the only active warnings we have currently. But we do still have these storms firing up down to our south that are going to continue to lift up to the north, and that's what we're going to be watching here closely as those storms continue to fire up. We'll send it back over to Dave. All right, just uh, giving you a kind of perspective here, I want to zoom down to the south of us here and watching some uh, big storms down south of our area here. Uh, these are also of concern that we're watching. They're just outside the viewing area, but if they hold together, could be heading the way toward uh, parts of the viewing area. You can see here we actually have a fairly strong uh, rotation here with the storm here coming just south of Marion right now, uh, continuing to work its way here uh, over towards Selma. So again, I know this is outside the area, but it's worth watching to see how these storms fair as we go on into the rest of the afternoon hours here. Uh, so these are coming on in toward Dallas County and then eventually heading on in toward um Atauga County there heading towards, say, Perry County. So these are just south of Chilton County and as well. But you can see here uh, with the storm we're watching, this definitely is some strong storms down to our south as well. Uh, fortunately, they are south of us, which is good news. Uh, but nonetheless, we need to keep an eye on them because they are moving off there to the north and east. Uh, again, the storms we we're just talking about with Sarah has, these are the only ones in the viewing area right now that are gone severe with a tornado warning in effect. We still have some rotation. Fortunately, they seem to be weakening a little bit. But but as we've seen with many of the storms here uh, so far this afternoon, a lot of them have been strong, produced a tornado, weakened, and then kind of gained some more strength again and are doing that again. So uh, we'll be watching those closely too. Fortunately, though, with the debris tracker here, it's not this. It's what we're watching here back to the west of it. So right now, though, again, still going to be watching this storm here, kind of tracking it out for you here uh, at the uh, Hoag Town, about 13 minutes, if I'm saying that right. Mulga, around 19. Fairfield, around 22. Adamsville, 23. Brookside, 28. Legion Field, about 28 minutes too. So be watching this one. This one's going to be kind of getting closer to Birmingham, but still staying off to the north there uh, right now, what we're talking about. So we'll be watching here to see how that one plays out. But uh, still seeing some uh, rotation with it. Again, not as impressive as it once was. Uh, kind of seeing it coming off from the south and west there. Both storms, that one and the one north of it here too. That was the original one that produced the tornado in the Brookfield area is this rotation you see there. Uh, but that storm's kind of, they're, they're kind of uh, merging, if you will, at this point. Now, just because they merge doesn't mean it's going to produce a significantly large tornado or something. It's just that <clears throat> one's running into the other one, robbing the, the uh, moisture from it, and traditionally the more southern one would take over. And this is the case of exactly what's happening here. Uh, that's the second one produced that large tornado as well, too. Uh, fortunately, these tornadoes, while they have been big and producing some damage, they have not been lasting very long, uh, but still could be very, very strong tornadoes here across the area. So uh, we are still watching all of these. As you look live, look Tuscaloosa there. Uh, uh, you can see here again uh, some of the tree damage there again from those the last two storms that moved through. Uh, fortunately, this is the only systems we have here in the viewing area uh, with tornado warnings. We do have some heavy rain falling north of Tuscaloosa, Gordo area, back on in toward the Reform area, Fayette area as well too. Off to the east, we really haven't said much about you. That's one storm that came through Coosa, Talladega County, and into Clay County it really died out. So that's good news. It kind of ran into more stable air with all this rain, which is good news. Uh, but you can see down to the south. Here, that's where the unstable area is. This is where, again, the best uh, uh, development area for storms is starting to fire up here in southern part of Mississippi. My father in law lives uh, over here, kind of in Franklin County, Mississippi. Uh, just messaged me, hey, we've got a tornado warning. Storms are starting up out here in southwest Mississippi. So, if you notice the direction of all the polygons, it kind of give you an idea of where these storms are moving. And while we don't have a radar down there, uh, you can see here this is what we're talking about with respect to uh, where we're talking all the rain is coming in. So I'll go ahead and show you some of uh, the radar here, uh, even back there. Uh, you can see there is that line of storms. That is what's coming later for us. Severe storms, tornadoes down there in Lafayette, uh, Louisiana, back to the Baton Rouge area. So we're going to keep an eye on all these. That is part of that main line that's going to be coming through. So round one is what's happening right now. Round two is what's going to happen later. So uh, we can't put our guard down. There may be a little lull between the two. Uh, but uh, that just means we're just waiting for some more going on there. Looking at that video there over into uh, Tuscaloosa County, look at those trees down. You can see here showing up in that video as well, too. Uh, coming back on into our area here, uh, you can still see um, all those storms we're continuing to keep an eye on here across the area as well. 
uh, going back over to our radar and show you a more detailed look at what we have. Again, there's storms here, and again to the south as well. Uh, again, you can see the tree damage here. Look at those trees snapped a couple feet wow. up there in that's Tuscaloosa amazing. County. If you guys want to take that shot full, since we actually have some uh, decent video to find there, that'd be good. Uh, but you can see here, uh, we do have those are the storms that came through uh, parts of the Tuscaloosa County area there. Uh, power lines down. They already got the front loader out. Um, that's cow. pretty quick. Uh, getting those roads cleared is key. Uh, fortunately, this is just tree damage. I have not seen any homes damaged here. We did have reports of homes damaged uh, from earlier storms, Griffin, you were talking about. Uh, yeah. But uh, this, these guys are prepared. You know, Tuscaloosa County, this, <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, it's not the first rodeo for them. Um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed that they're actually, you know, clearing the scene that quickly. That, I mean, they got the front loader going there. Yeah. I mean, this isn't just chainsaws. Uh, this thing's going to push them off the road. We'll clean them up later. And do we know exactly what road that is? Uh, maybe up in the booth they might know. I know this. Okay. We, we do, okay. Uh, this is uh, somewhere in eastern Tuscaloosa County near Brookwood, uh, where a lot of this damage has occurred. Fortunately, uh, it it's appears to be just tree damage. This is a pretty rural part of Tuscaloosa County, so it's thankful that we haven't seen. Uh, yeah, we're thankful we haven't seen any structural damage at this time, but we have had reports of structural damage from Tuscaloosa County EMA. Uh, so there is reports of uh, this this tornado, which we we can call it a tornado. We saw we had the debris signature that formed uh, earlier in Tuscaloosa County, uh, and there's still an active warning for western Jefferson County and what looks like the southern southern part of Walker County as well. Fortunately, though, that is the only current active warning, so uh, we're keeping a close eye on that, and for more on the latest information, Art and Sherry, you already have Tuscaloosa. All right, Griffin, and as you said, that's Tuscaloosa County. This system moving through Jefferson County and Walker, Hueytown, Fairfield, Midfield, Adamsville, Bayview, those are areas that still need to be in their safe places. Yeah, and Walker County tornado warning is still in effect right now. We've got our crews deployed throughout the area. We want to get to see CBS 42 News reporter Jake Chapman, he is in Walker County. Jake, uh, things look pretty calm there now. Tell us what the situation is where you are. Well, Art, it was rainy throughout the afternoon when we got here earlier, but the good news is things are calming down right now from what we've seen. And also, we've been told there's been no reports of damage from emergency management and the Walker County Sheriff's Office. You can see right now, clear as day, but that doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet. I spoke with the public information officer here with the department. He says all hands are on deck right now, and all officers are on call at this time. The Sheriff's Office, office excuse me, also shared with me some storm shelter locations in the county, including Balto Baptist Church. Church, but call them fire and the Townley Community Center. Now, first responders are urging people if they haven't taken shelter yet to do it right now. And for the rest of the list of the shelters here in Walker County, the Sheriff's Office has posted it on their page, and we should have a link to that inside CBS42.com. Now, different story when we were on the way up here. When we were driving past door, we saw the dark clouds, the heavy rain, the lightning. We saw dozens of cars pull over on I-22, not driving in these conditions. And if it does get bad out there, law enforcement encourages you to do whatever you can, pull over to the side, and do not drive in these dangerous conditions. But right now, things are calm. We'll be out here monitoring the situation, so stay with us both on air and inside CBS42.com. But for now, guys, I'll send it back to you. That's Jake Chapman there in Walker County. And again, our crews are out in different places. Some of that video you're watching where they're driving through and seeing some of this firsthand when it's safe to get inside. But right now, as the system continues to move through, they are reminding people that if you hear those sirens, if you're in that polygon, you should seek shelter because these systems have a history of damage. And we've got a team of meteorologists, our storm team. Meteorologists are watching the storm, tracking the storm, and tracking the tornadoes. As long as this tornado is on the ground, as long as there is a warning in place, they are going to keep you aware of that. Let's get back over to Dave Nussbaum now. And Dave, tell us what's the latest now. I'll take it from here, Art. I, I, I think um, for the most part, what we're looking at in western Jefferson County uh, appears to be, well, of course, we still have the tornado warning that's in effect for western Jefferson County. So if you're in Brookside, Adamsville, Mulga, you should have gone, you should have gone to your shelter about 20 minutes ago when the warning was first issued. But Here's the good news. The rotation, if there is any, has really uh, kind of dissipated a little bit. That's not to say it couldn't revamp back again, but if there is any sort of tornado here, it would be to the southwest of Mulga, kind of near Port Birmingham Road, uh, near uh, what looks like Taylor's Ferry Road. This is where it would be. 
but it's not that pronounced. So that's some good news, kind of getting maybe a little bit of a lull in this storm overall. And then maybe another area of rotation that's farther uh, north up towards Adamsville. So two areas we're kind of watching here. Let's switch over to reflectivity so you can see the storm itself. It still has really good structure, though. Here's the thing. I mean, that is a really textbook looking supercell. Here's the forward flank downdraft, rear flank downdraft, inflow notch. So right there, it's, it's exactly where the tornado would be if there is something there. And again, like I, like I mentioned just, uh, just now, uh, there's really not much of a clear indication that we have any sort of tornado that is down, but uh, it's, it's, it, there's a chance it could uh, redevelop. Of course, and it is kind of isolated. You know, typically uh, when supercells are um, are kind of too close together, they can kind of interfere with each other. But when there aren't many other supercells around them, they can hold their structure pretty well. And I think that's what's happening here. Uh, this this there's no storms to the south of this, so it's uh, been cycling back and forth, especially when it started back in southern Tuscaloosa County. So let me take you through the hour lapse. This is how these this storm has tracked over the past hour. So it started. Uh, back over eastern Tuscaloosa County about an hour ago, and here's where it is now. It started back down here and tracked up to the northeast like that. Now, the cell that was back here uh, appears to have, you know, all the stuff you see back here isn't really that organized. What we have up here is the only cell that we're really watching uh, at the moment. So let's take, a, let's take a brief pause to kind of reset here. We only have, well, technically two uh, active tornado warnings in our viewing area. And this includes the western part of Jefferson County. Uh, you can see that supercell that's moving up to the northeast like that. Uh, this is going to be well to the west of Birmingham, even though Birmingham is technically included in that tornado warning polygon. You probably you need to seek shelter uh, and be in your safe place. But the good news is, if there is a tornado, it would pass well to the, uh, well to the west of Birmingham. Pausing the lapse here, uh, let's zoom in on that particular storm, obviously. Thankfully, I mean, earlier we had about three storms that we were tracking all at once, but thankfully uh, we only have one particular storm that we're tracking. That is a look at the damage that, that, that this particular storm produced back in Brookwood. Uh, when it was tracking through Brookwood uh, near places... Uh, Near, near the eastern part of Tuscaloosa County, this storm uh, definitely produced some damage, especially near Bull City, back when that tornado debris signature was the strongest. In fact, I'm going to show you that right now. So we're rewinding the radar here. Right about here at 4 p.m., right at the top of the hour, that's what the debris signature looked like, right there. Uh, we obviously have a lot of damage that occurred here near Franklin Road, south of Bull City, and near Stanley Road. And now, let's take you forward in time to right now. And if there is anything, it would be about right there, I believe, near uh, Rock Creek. Okay, yeah, that's where it would be, right on top of Hopkins. Uh, if there's a tornado, that's where it would be right there. So again, tornado warning in effect for western Jefferson County. Uh, this is fully exited Tuscaloosa County, so I think we can give the all clear to Bull City from this particular storm. Uh, same goes for Brookwood, uh, for Lakeview. Uh, if you're near the Mercedes plant in Vance, Coaling, uh, all clear for this storm. Obviously, there's going to be more uh, for the rest of the night tonight, but uh, for all of Tuscaloosa County, just an all clear for this storm. Uh, there's certainly some heavy rain back to the west, but uh, any, anything that's severe or potentially tornadic is uh, moving up into Jefferson County. So again, just, uh, just to recap here, if there is any rotation, it would be near Hogue Town right now, near Mulga, Graysville, Adamsville. But just based on my point of view, uh, that doesn't look very impressive. So that's good. We don't want it to be impressive. Uh, it's tracking up to the northeast like that, but if there's any rotation there, it's pretty broad and doesn't look to be uh, too strong, too much to worry about. But it's headed in the general vicinity of Adamsville. So if you're in Adamsville, just stay put uh, for just, just a little bit longer. So zooming back out here. Well, you this do is have what some we stuff got. to the south there uh, we were watching, too. I'm sorry, Dave, go ahead. No, we were watching some of the storms just south of the viewing area near yeah. Selma again. Dallas County, like it was happening earlier, uh, keeping an eye on some of those. So we're, we're, here's the storms we're talking about here. Griffin was just talking about. But we still have some that are working the way down south here. So we're down, again, outside of our area, but, again, coming pretty close. So in the near, uh, some places that we hit earlier today, uh, some of these storms continue to kind of get closer and closer toward uh, the Chilton 
County once again as well, too. Looks like here Selma again getting hit hard. We have the Dallas County area, the Marengo County uh, still dealing with again these storms. They have been showing some uh, pretty good rotation with them, especially this one to the west here. Uh, but nonetheless, though, keeping a eye on both of these, uh, but the potential for maybe a tornado uh, with them as well, too. Right now, not seeing any debris showing up necessarily right exactly where it is. The one to the west, though, uh, again, you can see that's not quite lined up perfectly with uh, where the uh, rotation is. But these are some stronger storms down here to the south. So we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on all of those uh, as well, too, as they're kind of working their way off to the northeast here. Could be coming a little bit closer on in toward the viewing area here over the course of the next, say, 30 minutes, an hour or so. So we're uh, not really done yet. We have a long time to go with this, as Griffin was just showing you, watching also all these storms coming off here out of the west. Uh, these are not necessarily tornadic storms, but they're showing some interesting signs there. And we're seeing even more coming up further on in towards southern part of Alabama. Uh, these also have tornado warnings here. Uh, so we're continuing to watch a lot of these. They're moving off here to the northeast. These could possibly be missing Birmingham, uh, but still impacting parts of Chilton County, Coosa, heading over toward Tallapoosa County, maybe a little later on over toward Talladega and into Clay County. So we'll be watching to see how all these uh, work their way through the area here next. Uh, not to uh, take light of the ones we do have here with those tornado warnings currently in effect uh, with these storms here coming on in toward the Birmingham area, uh, but we still have to keep an eye on that. This one still looks very interesting, heading right toward Mulga. So you definitely need to be in your safe place for sure as well, too. Looking at the velocity with it, uh, starting to get a little bit stronger, a little better organized here with this one as well. And uh, checking out the debris tracker with it. Uh, man, not quite uh, buying into it yet, but it could be trying to recycle or do a new cycle with this as well. Uh, definitely need to watch this one. So if you're in Mulga right now, you definitely need to be in your safe place at this point as the storms continue to get uh, maybe a little better organized. We're seeing more of that uh, hook shape echo with that as well, too, as it continues to come on in. So uh, definitely need to watch this one now, right now. Hoag Town, we'll be talking about that one right there. Port Birmingham Road. This is right where that storm is. If we don't have a tornado with this one here, uh, it's likely going to be some very, very strong winds tied in with this. So we'll just be aware of that one. That's going to continue its way to Crocker Junction, Mulga area there. Uh, see Shady Road, Rove, Porter Road area as well, too. Uh, so going to be watching this one really close here. Again, looking at that uh, uh, rotation with it, uh, it's, it's not quite as impressive as it once was, but still looking pretty good with this one. So we do need to keep an eye on that. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit here and do kind of a track with this one here, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at with that. Uh, right now, though, uh, the, the Hoag Town there, if I, again, saying that right, uh, we're saying about right now, Mulga about four minutes, Adamsville sitting there at seven minutes, Graysville 11 minutes, Brookside 11 minutes as well, Fairfield here 15 over toward Fultondale. Uh, again, 16 minutes. Gardendale right around 17 minutes with this one. So, of course, we don't want anything going near that area after what we had back in January. But uh, be prepared there nonetheless, though. Uh, so, we're still going to be watching that as it continues to track there uh, off there to the northeast at a fairly good clip. But uh, still looking very impressive. Uh, the thing with this, uh, which uh, Kind of concerning is there's nothing south of it, so right. all that warm, humid air is going right into the storm. Nothing south of it to block it here. Storm kind of downwind of that one. We'll have to keep an eye on too. It doesn't look anything interesting, at least at this point, coming just off to the north there of Tuscaloosa. But uh, this one here across northern part of Jefferson County, uh, definitely something to keep an eye on here as it's headed toward Gardendale area, Fairfield area as well too, possibly up toward the Warrior area. That's I-65 corridor right. In through there. Uh, so we do need to watch this one as it comes on in. And uh, again, that tornado warning continuing here. Uh, looks like this one's trying to get a little bit organized there, uh, Griffin. Um, yep, it is. Uh, it's not uh, seeing any debris yet, but that would be the zone yeah. we're looking at coming right toward Mulga. Mm -hmm. If you're watching us in Mulga, you need to be in your safe place. This storm is headed right toward your direction now. Again, it has the potential here to produce a tornado. It's kind of had a tornado weekend, had a tornado weekend. Uh, so and it's had a fairly large one. This is the one, Griffin, right, that we had the uh, potentially a mile wide tornado with it Correct. in Tuscaloosa County. Yep, yeah, that is the same cell that uh, produced that really large uh, debris ball that we saw in eastern Tuscaloosa County near Bull City. And just like you mentioned, Dave, 
Uh, this is this has a lot of untapped energy to work with. I mean, there's nothing to the south of this storm, so that's why it's been able to hold its structure so well. Uh, there's the inflow notch. There's the uh, rear flank downdraft, and all the forward flank downdraft. Right now, the rain is coming down really hard in Graysville and Adamsville. Stay indoors. Don't bother trying to see anything. You're not going to. Uh, but I'm actually trying to get a good view of this thing from the BJCC cam. I just looked at the tower camera, and we're kind of up in the clouds, so we can't see much. But we may be able to get a good vantage point from this from the BJCC cam. So I'm, I've got the cam. Oh, let me pull up the camera for you real quick. I've got this uh, right in my uh, storyboard here. I've panned the camera off to the west. So there is 5920. There's the, inter the junction with I-65. We're looking off to the west, and it's really just dark clouds. Another great example of why you probably don't need to go out and try to look for this thing. Uh, we, obviously, we can do that with our cameras safely and not have to venture outside. But looking off to the west, this is from downtown Birmingham, the BJCC camp. Can't see all that much, uh, but that is where we're going to have to keep our eyes open for anything that could develop. This is going to be about 10, 15 miles west of Birmingham. Uh, but that's one particular supercell is what we're keeping an eye on that is tracking uh, within the vicinity of Mulga, uh, Dave has it pulled up right now. This is tracking right towards Adamsville, right towards Brookside, uh, tracking northeast. That'll put it there within the next, uh, I'd say, about 10 to 15 minutes away. Uh, if there's anything there, that's where it would be. Uh, moving, yep, like Dave is drawing it out right now, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. That would put it in Brookside in about 13 minutes. Graysville, about eight minutes away from you. Mount Olive, 20 minutes. Uh, Gardendale in about 22 minutes. Now, it's got a long way to go before it makes it to Gardendale. Uh, it could cycle up and down within that time, but, uh, and Gardendale's not technically within the warning, nor is Fultondale, uh, but if for everybody who's within that polygon, especially Mulga, Adamsville, and Brookside, you need to stay sheltered for, uh, for and, until further notice, until we can give you an all clear. So again, we're going to keep an eye on that BJCC cam to see if we can see anything. But as of right now, uh, we're just sort of lost in all the dark clouds. Cloud bases are really low, so it's really tough, tough to see too far out uh, in the distance. But uh, we're keeping a close eye on it. And uh, obviously, if, um, if there is any indication that this appears to be uh, you know, developing another tornado, we'll, we're, we'll certainly pass that along. I will say, though, I mean, there is a little area of rotation that's just west of Mulga now that appears to be maybe ramping up a little bit. Uh, yeah, so just looking at it here, Mulga Mine, Bayview area all around Mulga, Middle Street, Park Avenue here, uh, those areas, Port Birmingham Road, uh, Crocker Junction area, all of you uh, be in your safe place now, Porter Road area as well, uh, heading to Shady Grove, Adamsville, all of you need to be in your safe place right now uh, as the storm continues moving there off there uh, to the north uh, east around 35 miles per hour. So uh, watching this one here, it's, it's, it's trying to uh, come back to doing some sort of uh, something right now. Uh, maybe a little something. Maybe right there. a little something trying. It's about that's the right On spot. Top of Shady, so Gro Shady Grove Road. Shady right Grove there. Road. So right in through here. Uh, Porter Road, Grove Road, Mulga Mine, in possibly here Bayview area, Port Birmingham Road area, Park Avenue. This is where maybe we could have something trying to be going on there. We'll get the new scan with the radar as it comes back around. But that's where we're going to be watching here uh, with potentially something coming on into those areas. So uh, that's what we're talking about here. Possibly something we'll see the new scan comes in here. Uh, but that's where we could possibly see. That's where we have our little uh, ball there, if you will, on our hook echo. We have our rotation. Lined up right there as well, too. Uh, so things are coming together there for this potentially to produce a tornado. So if you're watching us in those areas, you need to take shelter immediately. Graysville area, Adamsville, Brookside, in the path of this. Again, it could be a potential tornado here right now, though, with this storm. Uh, so it's going to go right into Mulga here, kind of going just through there, uh, heading over toward the Adamsville area as well, too. Uh, as this continues to move on in, uh, there at 35, let's see if we have a new update here. Uh, <clears throat> again, still watching that area there. We'll see if the new update jumps in here in a moment, uh, but with the radar coming in. But nonetheless, though, uh, that is where we're looking at here. Again, for that rotation here, we've got the red going away from the radar, green going toward the radar, your counterclockwise circulation here going on in uh, at this point as well, too. So again, potentially here a tornado developing. Uh, Griffin, maybe it's trying to do something there, kind of yeah, just, just a uh, north of the uh, Mulga area there. there. It does line up kind of where we're talking about. So yep. uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we do have a tornado right now uh, developing here just near the Mulga area.
and then heading toward Adamsville and Graysville. Take shelter immediately. Looks like a new warning may have just popped in there uh, from the Weather Service as well, Griffin, if you want to check that one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, looks like uh, this, this, this could be something trying to develop there just based off of what we're seeing. Maybe a little bit of something, uh, debris trying to show up there yep. uh, near the Mulga area. Yeah, that warning has been extended okay. into uh, northern Jefferson County. That's going to be in effect for until 5.30. Uh, and that's uh, it's this is very preemptive. We got a lot of lead time with that right. particular storm, uh, so it'll it'll take a while before it actually gets to places but like that, Gardendale. Actually, look 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 here we go. Yeah yeah. Let's zoom uh, in so on So I think we definitely have. Uh, something going on. Yeah, we oh, do yeah. have tornado here, folks. Uh, right near North and Mulga Mine, uh, Grove Road. This is in Jefferson County here. Uh, this is what we have debris being shown up on the radar. This storm, again, I think this is maybe the third time it's try it has produced a tornado up with this. South of Shaded yep. Road here, uh, Bayview, Mulga. Again, the city of Mulga ju is just to your north here. So this is where we're talking about, right in through here. This is where our tornado is going to be located here. Uh, so again, this is where we're going to continue to watch. We kind of zoom in a little. Tighter, get some of those streets for you here uh, where this is. Again, remember, this was the snapshot we took here from the radar. So, again, we're talking about Shady Grove Road area there, heading over toward Grove Road itself. Again, this is where we're talking about. Uh, again, the storm kind of moving on in here uh, as we kind of zoom out a little bit more here. There's not many roads in this location. There could be a lot of trees, of course. If you have that really sense of um, uh, pine smell out there, maybe pine trees that are snapped from, again, this uh, storm here. So, again, this is kind of what we're looking at uh, with. The storm. It's headed towards Shady Grove, Gray's Garden area here. Let's see, that's Dogwood Road, Dogwood Trail. Looks like a subdivision there. Take shelter, lowest level of your home now. This is likely a tornado with debris lofted. This was the snapshots at 438, so likely going to be jumping a little bit beyond that. Remember, as I explained earlier, it's like you're watching a truck go down an interstate. You take a picture of it, you see it. By the time you look to see the truck, it's already well down the interstate. Same concept here with these storms moving at 35 miles per hour. They're going to be moving fairly quickly. So Adamsville, you're in the path of this, what is likely a tornado. There you can see it jumped already here. Uh, again, and heading over toward Hazelwood Road, uh, Poplar Lane, Hillcrest Estates. Again, Adamsville area, State Route 5, uh, Sunset Drive here. All of you, this is headed your way. So we do, looks like, we do have another tornado coming from the same thunderstorm that has already been had a history of producing tornadoes. By the way, it's rain wrapped. You're not going to see it here. It is really embedded with all this rain. Uh, you can see the road. Rotation here is fairly strong with it as well, too. Uh, but again, that tornado here is again near Shady Grove area. It's going to be crossing right over Sunset Drive, Hazelwood Road as well, too. Again, this is going to be north here of Birmingham. There's Fairfield area uh, showing up. There's Birmingham as well. Again, so the storm is off to the north and west here of Birmingham, heading right toward Adamsville area. Again, the better perspective of where it is, right there between Adamsville and Mulga, heading toward the Adamsville area here. We'll give it a little track here. Kind of show you Adamsville around two minutes, Graysville to Brookside five minutes. You got uh, as this heads over to your direction, Gardendale. Uh, again, if it holds together, it could be going by just close to you here. Uh, we're talking about 11 minutes, Morris about 15 minutes, uh, over toward Warrior 18 minutes as well. So again, continuing to watch this one here. That is where we're talking about here uh, with the possibility of that tornado uh, coming on in. This is in parts of uh, north and western Jefferson County. This is where we're talking about this. Is be where our tornado would be located at this point here. Again, kind of working its way here. Bay views down to the south. You're in the clear, but over toward Gray's Gardens, coming right toward you. Adamsville area, you're watching us. It's coming your direction. There you can see the newest update. Not quite as impressive looking here with the debris, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, likely we had some earlier here, so we do yep, likely have there. a tornado uh, with this. You can see on the radar, it'd be right in through here. So it's going to be rain wrapped. You're not going to be able to see it. I see you have the uh, tower camera up there. Uh, we see the dark skies, the ominous skies there. But if this thing is rain wrapped, we won't be able to see that anyway, Griffin, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, like you mentioned, Dave, this, this thing looks like it's fully rain wrapped. So um, despite, I mean, we're. We're still pretty far away from this. This is from the BJCC cam that we're looking at. Uh, so this thing is about, it's still about 10, 15 miles northwest of downtown Birmingham. Actually, let me let me measure this out and see exactly how far away we're looking here. This tornado, yeah, about 10 and a half miles okay. northwest of Birmingham. But this is coming literally right into downtown Adamsville. Yep. Uh, this is there's right through there. It's, I mean, it doesn't get much more clear than that. I mean, there's this is going to go right through downtown Adamsville. Yep. It's probably there right now. I mean, it, just yes. the new update. You know, the, again, this is the snapshot. So Adamsville, uh, you better be in your safe place right now. This is coming right into your area here.
here, heading up toward the Glasgow area. You're going to be next as well, too. Uh, as we continue to look here, again, showing this is uh, Adamsville Parkway. You're going to be crossing right over there, heading toward, let's see, uh, Westwood Garden Estates, Gray's Gardens, King's Drive. Uh, looks like Spring Street, uh, Cruz Road, if that's how you say it, Crusade Road. Uh, this is going to be right over County Road 112. 110, 110, uh, but again, Old Jasper Highway as well, too. So mm -hmm. that is where we're looking at this storm kind of working its way on in here. Uh, this is where we're talking about. This is where our tornado would be located there, uh, continuing to move through Adamsville, Glasgow, uh, also heading over toward uh, right now Daisy City. Uh, that's where it could be moving toward your direction as well, too, as it continues on that track here. Could work its way up toward uh, the Brookside area and then points farther to the north. But uh, that is where we're talking about right now here uh, with, with that. And, of course, this is I-22. Looks like it'll be crossing over yep, I-22. it'll be crossing over 78 uh, and I-22 uh, soon. This, and this, uh, before we go to the anchors real quick, Adamsville, it is right on top of you right now. Uh, so we are looking at this here. If I can get it to zoom in, uh, we are looking at it right over top of Adamsville, right now. So again, uh, Art and Sherry, uh, again, this would be something really to be concerned about here in the Adamsville area. Yeah, you're watching your severe weather coverage with CBS 42 News at 4 o'clock and our storm team meteorologists letting us know about a tornado on the ground. This is Mulga, Adamsville, also spoke about Glasgow, Shady Grove, um, Graysville as well. So if you are in those areas, take cover now because a tornado is on the ground there. Don't go outside to check it out to see if it's there. This system has been moving across our area from Tuscaloosa. Before it hit Tuscaloosa, it was in the Hale County area. We had the Hale County EMA director, Russell Whedon, who was on the line. But again, this system in Adamsville right now, this storm cell. Let's go back to the CBS 42 Storm Team Weather Center with meteorologist Dave Nussbaum. Um, what do you have there in Adamsville? So uh, again, uh, th this is this was the snapshot a little bit ago, and there you see there's a new update right over top of Adamsville. This is where our debris is. So when we talk about this, this is our debris tracker. Is the uh, easiest way to describe what we're looking at here. Basically, tornado is formed. It's lofting debris into the air. A radar beam goes around. It detects, hey, this is not rain. Uh, this is not hail. This is something else. It is debris, and this is what we have. And you go look at the reflectivity, as it's called, or the radar, and that is where we're talking about here. If I Zoom out a little bit here, you'll see this is our supercell thunderstorm, the rotating thunderstorm. There is that little appendage down here. That is where our tornado is located. Uh, looking at velocity here, just to double check, you can see, yep, there's that rotation tied in with it. So when they all line up like that, that's how I know, and we are trained as meteorologists, that this is what we're talking about debris tied in with this storm here uh, coming in with that tornado. So that is where we're talking about here with this storm. We're watching that one again. That new tornado warning goes in effect till. 5:30. Uh, so this is going to be moving there eventually over toward possibly close to the Gardendale area here in just a little bit. Now, Sarah, uh, what do you have an update for us? Yeah, Dave, I think it's important to give everyone the most lead time possible. We want to give you as most advanced notice possible to get into your safe place. So if you're in the tornado warning, warning right now, I'm going to include some areas that if you live in these areas, you need to be getting to shelter right now. So if you're in Gardendale, if you're along 31 stretching from Gardendale up through Morris, up 31, even towards Warrior. You guys are all in the tornado polygon, the tornado warning polygon, and you need to be getting into your safe place right now. So zooming in to where we're likely seeing debris right over Adamsville, that's the corner of your screen. This is going to be lifting up to the north and east towards Brookside and then towards Mount Olive. So this is where the track will likely take the possible tornado that we're seeing likely on radar right now. No confirmation whether or not this, this is on the ground as we speak. We're just going by what we're seeing on the track here, giving you as much advance notice as possible. So through Glasgow, through Brookside, up through Crocker Junction, towards Downs Road, in between County Road 12, over towards Mount Olive, Newfound Road in Mount Olive, Fieldstown, Cliff Road just to the north of Cliff Road, Watson included in this tornado polygon, the warning here. And then even towards I-65 through the Gardendale exits and up towards the north. This is in the tornado polygon right now. So if you guys have anyone driving home, maybe from work right now, if they're traveling on I-65 north of Gardendale or even south towards Gardendale, you need to let folks know that they should not be driving along I-65 right now. It's going to be dangerous regardless of whether or not the tornado actually tracks over the interstate. It's going to be dangerous regardless.
surface because of the heavy rainfall that we're seeing. We're also seeing a lot of lightning with this as well. So through uh, Highway 31 through Gardendale, that's in the warning zone right now. So just in, even extending farther east, the point here is we're trying to give you the most warning possible. So Kimberly and Morris, you guys have enough time right now. Get into your safe place. We also, through Samstown Road, through Morris, even Cunningham in Jefferson County right now, Columbus, Crosstown, Bradford as well, all included in the warning, get to your safe place. If you have a basement, that is the best place to be. But if not, get to the lowest level of your home, interior most room, put as many walls as you can between you and the outside. So that means an interior uh, closet or a bathroom, just a place with no windows. That's where you need to be right now. So Mount Olive Road, you guys need to be in your safe place. County Road 77 through Mount Olive as well. You're seeing the head Heavy rainfall through now uh, Crocker Junction as well as Brookside. This is tracking towards you right now. We'll send it over to Griffin in the Weather Center. All right, thank you, Sarah. I want to take a minute to acknowledge this. Uh, obviously, this has been a very long day thus far. We've been wall to wall for about the past three hours now. And at the start, we began with a tornado that developed down in, a, in Dallas and Atauga counties. That. Uh, uh, pass near Billingsley. We now have two more storms that are soon going to be entering Chilton County. They're on the border of our viewing area. Right now, they're in basically the same spots that were impacted three hours ago. We have a similar situation developing where we have two distinct supercells that are forming one northeast of Valley Grand and then another one that's to the south of Marion. There. So, and they're tracking up to the northeast like that. Two distinct supercells, uh, one that uh, uh, both of which have a chance to turn a, to develop into a tornado. We told you before we got to today that really anything that popped up in this warm sector has that chance to produce, and we're seeing that uh, regrettably. And it's mostly across most of our southern counties where a lot of the action has been. You know, a lot of you are probably watching in, uh, in Anniston or Gadsden or Coleman. The good news is for folks that are farther north, the dew points have remained fairly low. A lot of the warm unstable air in the atmosphere is farther down to the south, and that's why uh, we're seeing all of these tornadoes develop across our southern counties. So let's pause the radar here. Again, I want to take a minute to acknowledge uh, we don't have a tornado warning for you guys yet in Chilton County, but there could be one forthcoming for places like Maplesville, uh, Clanton, uh, looks like Jemison, it's a little bit far out, but same places in southern Chilton County where we began three hours ago. It's going to be those same spots that are going to be potentially impacted by these two incoming tornadoes. The tornado warning we have in our immediate viewing area, much closer to Birmingham, is uh, just north of town. This tornado warning until 5.30 p.m. That's going to include uh, Gardendale. It's going to include Morris, Kimberly, Warrior. All of you guys need to be in your safe spot. Let's take a closer look at the debris indicator. Okay, so right now, after this storm appears to have uh, appears to have passed through Adamsville, uh, the debris indicator itself doesn't look all that impressive. That's what we want to see. Uh, let me show you what that looked like uh, about 10 minutes ago. You see here we had a little bit of returns right about there about 10 minutes ago, and then it tracked up to the northeast like that, and you see how. Here it dissipated. There may still be a little bit of something, a little bit there, but it certainly isn't quite as well defined as it was about 10 minutes ago when it passed through Adamsville. So it's enough that you need to take this seriously. If you're in Gardendale, uh, if you live anywhere up and down I-65, you need to be in a safe, uh, safe place. Mount Olive to the west of 65. Uh, Fieldstown, you need to be in that safe place for sure. Uh, this is going to be passing to the north of Fultondale, which obviously was impacted very heavily by the tornado that hit in January. This is going to be to the west, northwest of y'all, but you're still included in that tornado warning polygon. So if you're in Fultondale, just uh, t seek shelter to err on the side of caution, but this, in all likelihood, is going to be passing to the, uh, to the northwest of Fultondale. And once again, there is some rotation there on top of Brookside, but see, it's, it's not very well defined. We've watched this cell as it began in southern Tuscaloosa County, and over the past 50, 50 miles, it's gone up and down and up and down and up and down. So it's obviously worth watching now because there's nothing to the south of it that could disrupt it. So zooming out a little bit, it's still got that supercell look to it. You see a little bit of a hook echo here, the forward flank downdraft, rear flank downdraft. That's, that's, what, you, that's what you look for uh, whenever you're looking for a supercell thunderstorm. You see some structural damage right 
right there. That is from this particular cell when it came through Tuscaloosa County. All the more reason you need to take it seriously. That appears to be uh, structural damage. I would, I would imagine that that's either in Bull City or Brookwood where uh, we saw tornado debris signatures that developed uh, with this storm. So, uh, Gardendale, Warrior, Kimberly, can't emphasize it enough. You guys need to be in shelter for at least the foreseeable future until this thing passes. For those of you who are watching elsewhere, if you're watching uh, in Hamilton, in Fayette, Lamar County, Winston County, it's been pretty quiet for you guys today, uh, but we've got, we've got to, uh, one more time that's damage in Tuscaloosa County to report. Okay. South Rosser Road, we've got damage to report here. Is that where that live shot's coming from? Okay. Okay, yeah, so that is from South Rosser Road uh, in Tuscaloosa County. That is uh, some pretty significant damage there. It looks like little bits of the roof came off there. Definitely some tree damage that you see there. Wow, that is just um, really a really humbling sight. And I mean, the sad thing is that we're, we're, we got a long way to go, folks. We could see a lot more cells that develop uh, over the next few hours. That is some, uh, what looks like very significant damage there. Uh, you see the crews already trying to uh, clear the scene a little bit there. A lot of... Uh, Utility crews that, and maybe EMA personnel that are uh, cleaning up some of the wreckage there. Uh, and this was from this same cell that we're tracking that's now in Jefferson County. This is what it did about 40, 45 minutes ago when it came through Bull City and near Brookwood. Uh, you can see um, pretty much as far as you can see a lot of, wow, very significant damage there. That looks like a piece of the home that came off uh, from that damage in Tuscaloosa County. So again, this is a, it's a very long day. We've, we've been through outbreaks like this before. Uh, we've, we've got a long way to go before the cold front gets here. And this is, uh, it's just going to be a very long day, folks. Uh, and it may be, uh, we've got about, uh, let's say about two hours of daylight left. So we, once we lose daylight, that's, that's when we can't, you know, we, we've got people out, crews out there reporting, but when, when darkness falls, that's when everybody just, you need to just stay inside and stay there because we've got multiple tornadoes that have been uh, down over the past uh, few hours. So, um, Sarah, if you're ready, tree I'm, too. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Sarah, if you're ready, I'll, I'll toss it over to you. Well, Michael, uh, or, sorry, I'm looking at Michael on the screen there. That uh, is reporter Michael Clark on the scene looking at the damage there in South Tuscaloosa County. If you want to go back to that live shot, we can talk about what we're seeing right now as far as the damage goes. Um, just looking at the current warnings on the screen right now, we currently have the warnings um, in northern Jefferson County. This includes Gardendale right now. This is tracking towards Brookside. Gardendale included in the tornado warning. Kimberly in Morris right now. If we have a tornado on the ground, it would be right here. This is the area of greatest concern just east of Brookside, tracking towards Interstate 65. Um, that's where the greatest concern here. This is the pic radar picture showing potential rotation there. This would be lifting up to the north and east towards uh, Morris, just basically south of Morris, and then continuing towards Alabama 79 there. So just north of Gardendale, but along 65 and 31 right now. So anyone traveling needs to be very careful because what we've seen with these cells, they have weakened and then they've re-strengthened and we've possibly seen um, indications there of debris being picked up as these storms continue to lift off to the north and east. So we cannot uh, give the all clear by any means because these storms will continue to strengthen potentially as they move through northern Tuscaloosa County. And we were showing you the damage that we saw in Tuscaloosa just a few moments ago. These storms have already produced damage and we're going to continue to see these images come in as people are surveying the damage. And we need to not let our guard down because we are not done with this. I'm going to zoom out here to show you the bigger picture of what we have coming our way. We have a lot of storms right now down towards Selma and towards the Montgomery viewing area, but these are lifting up into Clanton, uh, into Chilton County. So we have some storms south of 
plant in right now, tracking towards the Chilton County line that we'll be watching really closely. Also, tor storms um, towards Perry County, and then a few storms that are tracking into Green and Hale County as well. Giving you the bigger picture on what we're tracking off to our west, we still have tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings back through Memphis, down towards Greenville, back into uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and just southwest of Jackson as well. That's going to be the next round of storms that's going to move in here later this evening. So looking at future cast timing in this, out, this out for you, we'll continue to see these storms move through uh, really about 8 o'clock this evening. We're going to start to see some gaps here. So as these storms lift off to the north and east, we'll see a little bit of a break for some of us around 8 o'clock, but then the cold front is going to approach and notice storms start firing up in West Alabama just before midnight. We'll see a line where we're really going to worry about damaging winds here. Um, tornadoes will be possible along the squall line as well, but I do think that the heavy rainfall and damaging winds will be the main threat. Around 11 o'clock tonight towards midnight, the line will near uh, the Birmingham Metro and then push into Shelby County between about midnight and 2 a.m. We'll have the all clear in West Alabama by 2 a.m. and then we'll give the all clear through Jefferson, Shelby, Chilton, and Coleman uh, counties by around 3 a.m., pushing into East Alabama. East Alabama by around 3, and then we will finally be done with this by 5 a.m. So tomorrow morning, all clear. We will be done with the severe weather then. But unfortunately, it's going to continue to be a long evening here as we continue to track the latest warnings. I'm going to send it over to Griffin right now with the current active warnings we have in place. All right. Thank you, Sarah, very much. Uh, this is we, the live look at the radar as it stands right now. The time right now is 4.58 p.m. And this is what we've got. We've got an area of rotation that is coming up on I-65. It is uh, not too well defined. But it's there. There's some rotation there. And this is just west of Gardendale. Uh, this is right on top of Mount Olive. Uh, it'll be coming up on what looks like Beasley Road, Mount Olive. Uh, all of the, uh, all of the uh, northern part, uh, most of the northern part of Jefferson County is included in that tornado warning. So obviously, this is passing to the north of Fultondale, which was very heavily impacted by that tornado warning that came through in January. But uh, again, this is going to be impacting areas north of there in Jefferson County. So if you're in Kimberly, Morris, Gardendale, can't give you an all clear just yet. Stay, uh, stay shelter for just a little bit longer uh, while, these, uh, while this system passes through. And we'll, we'll give you an all clear when things improve a little bit. I want to take you back down to the south where we have another, two, another pair of supercells that are tracking north towards Chilton County. Uh, there's two very well-defined hook echoes there. You've got, hold on one moment while I draw this out for you. You've got uh, one here with the inflow notch, and then you've got another one here with another inflow notch. Both of these cells right here. Uh, it's a very similar situation to what we just had in Tuscaloosa County, where there were two supercells that were tracking northeast at the same time, basically on railroad tracks, uh, tracking up to the northeast. So this is going to be headed to the same areas that were just impacted about about three hours ago, uh, when the, when we first went wall to wall with you. It's now 5 p.m. and this is what we're looking at. We have a significant tornado outbreak that is in progress across central Alabama, and at, and now that it's the top of the hour, I think now is as good a time as ever to do a quick reset. This is what we have happening. Over the past three hours, we've been watching a very big cluster of supercell thunderstorms that have tracked through the area like this. You see just warning after warning after warning that's popped up over the past three hours. And it all started with this first warning that popped up near Chilton County that tracked up to the northeast, eventually dissipating by the time it made it up to Sylacauga. So right now, okay, we got a new, Ch looks like we got a new Chilton County warning. Uh, so uh, right as we were discussing it, this is a new tornado warning that is going to include the city of Clanton. So that first warning we had about three hours ago, that didn't include Clanton. But now, if you're in Clanton, you need to take shelter. You guys are kind of uh, 
it's a little bit too close to call for Clanton to, you know, for, for us to say you're not in the polygon. You're in the polygon, so you need to take shelter immediately. That includes Clanton. This is all uh, southern Chilton County. Uh, we've got a pretty well-defined hook echo, what looks like even a, a bounded weak echo region right here uh, with a... With a that is a clear indicator that there, this is a supercell that, is, that has some rotation with it. So again, a new tornado warning until 6 p.m. You've got one hour of lead time with this. So here's the thing. That's a lot of lead time, uh, per, and you really need to, it's, it's important to know, it's going to take a while for it to get to you. So I know an hour, that's a lot of time that you're just kind of waiting on the storm to get there. I know it's a lot of time to stay in your safe spot, but uh, given all the damage, all the tornadoes we've seen earlier today, uh, you need to take this seriously. So let's pull up the base velocity here. Yep, there's something there. Sure enough, there's an area of rotation that is uh, just south of Highway 82. Very similar to the same tornado that we saw three hours ago near Billingsley. Uh, this is going to be coming up on County Road 22, tracking up to the northeast. Uh, how fast is it moving? Moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. Okay, so let's draw a storm track with that. Uh, northeast at 40 miles per hour. If there is a tornado there, that's... If there is a tornado in that storm, that's where it would be. So here are the arrival times. It's going to come up on Mulberry in about seven minutes, Enterprise in Chilton County in about 19 minutes, Clanton about 26 minutes away, moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. So it's going to take about half an hour before it actually gets there. But that tornado warning is, is in effect until 6 p.m. Verbena, about 28 minutes, another familiar town that was impacted earlier today. Tornado warning in effect until 6 p.m. for Chilton County. Look at the looking at the debris indicator. We're trying to see if there's anything in that cell that's not rain or not hail. Whenever that's what we're looking at. Whenever we see the debris indicator, anytime you see those shades of blue show up, that usually means it's not rain that's falling. That it's something else. But the good news is not really seeing much of that right now. Looks like it's just. Uh, does, there doesn't appear to be any debris lofted. And I think the National Weather Service is calling this, they're calling it an observed tornado that's uh, moving into Chilton County. Uh, but as of right now, the good news is I'm not seeing any debris with that on radar. So that's definitely some good news to note. Now look uh, at the one behind it, though. That yeah, there's another cell, getting too. a little bit, uh, it had some rotation and then kind of weakened in the back southwestern part of that one seems to be getting a little bit stronger now. Yep. Uh, so we have two, as you mentioned, supercells. Uh, when you go look at the, uh, the uh, debris indicator on that one, uh, something might be trying to pop up in the back there, but um, at, this, at least at this point, though, uh, two, two not really can't confirm everything with this it's one yet. It's a little noisy. But, yeah, it's, I mean, it is a little bit farther from the radar, uh, but uh, watching that warning, that's going to also impact Chilton County. Um, this one kind of right near was at Perry to Dallas, uh, kind of all right in those counties there. That little yeah, Atauga kind of County and into Atauga County there. So um, definitely worth watching all of those. Those two are be working the way on in, impacting you to the south at this point. But uh, yeah, the one other one is about to cross into Chilton County right now. Yep, uh, we got two distinct supercells, and just uh, want to take a moment to go back to the Jefferson County storm. This is what we're looking at now. Uh, when we were looking at this about five, six minutes ago. It wasn't too impressive of a signature, but this is what we have at the moment. Still just an area of broad rotation, enough to keep the tornado warning going, but um, it's, it's not as, as scary as it could be, I guess, for lack of a better word. Uh, at least when you're a meteorologist, that you're really looking for those bright shades of, of inbound and outbound winds, and we're really not seeing that. There is some broad rotation there uh, that's passing to the north of Gardendale and south of Morris, uh, but it's not too daunting of a presentation on radar, but enough to keep the warning going. So can't give an all clear yet if you're in Warrior or if you're in Kimberly or Morris, Gardendale. Uh, just stay sheltered for just a little bit longer. Uh, if you're in center point, this is going to be passing well to the northwest of you, so no need to worry there. Uh, but just a little bit longer before we can give an all clear for Jefferson County. I will say that um, this cell, when it was back in Tuscaloosa County, looked really mean, uh, producing a uh, debris ball near Bull City. But that uh, is not there anymore, so that's good. You can see on the debris indicator there, uh, it's really just just kind of fanned out, so that's good. Uh, that's definitely some good news here. But uh, there's a there's a lot going on for sure, Dave. I mean, this is this is uh, 
We've been wall to wall for three hours straight now, and it, it's hard to keep track of time when you have this many cells. It's almost like you're playing whack-a-mole with the radar <laughs> with all these cells that continue to pop up. You really are, and this is this we'll be watching here throughout the evening hours now. Some of you getting ready for dinner time now, and, and don't put your guard down. Well, we only have one here uh, north of Birmingham. As mentioned here, Griffin was talking about these continuing to coming on in here uh, just to the south here of Chilton County, about to come into Chilton County. We have more of them developing as you get down toward the Mobile area. So uh, really, you're going to be watching all of these here for you as we go forward here throughout the evening hours here. Uh, we talked about earlier at noon. Today, there may be a little lull in some activity for a couple of hours before a bigger area of rain, round two of severe weather, is expected to come on in. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and I want to show you what's going on here uh, in the bigger picture of things. Uh, what we have, not just what's coming on here in Alabama, uh, but what we have coming down the pike, and that's what's coming through parts of Mississippi. Notice right now here from Jackson, the Meridian area, not a lot of rain going on. Energy is building here, so when this line of storms comes in. These storms will likely continue to be severe, which they are now. Storms are even severe all the way down to Baton Rouge area. And all this is eventually going to come on into our area, but it's going to happen after dark. This is going to be our front that's going to be moving on in, have enough energy with it. Some stronger winds are expected to arrive later. And that's going to help to fuel some of these thunderstorms as they come into Alabama. Right now, though, uh, fortunately, this is nothing too significant uh, at the line. It's just a few of these storms severe, but we're expecting more of these to come in as the day goes on. And eventually, we could fill in the radar here uh, between what you're seeing across the area right now. But going back over toward the viewing area here, we do again have all these thunderstorms that are still trying to work their way on into the region here. And as they do so, again, they have been somewhat severe. Watching this one still north of Birmingham, uh, kind of just crossing over Interstate 65 at this point as it does so, still has that uh, unique shape to it as we talked about going through Kimberly Morris area, kind of just north of the Gardendale area here. Uh, still has has some rotation with it, so while we may not necessarily have a tornado, we're trying to see that uh, maybe trying to get a little better organized there. Uh, really haven't seen anything debris-wise coming back from this. It's already had at, at least looks like maybe three different times it produced a tornado. Uh, so we're still watching this one. It originated there in Tuscaloosa County, and you can see here. Look what it's done. Uh, significant tree damage, some homes damaged out there as well, too. Uh, so, again, uh, tree damage is better than home damage, right? Uh, we, can, we can regrow the trees easily there. Uh, but this storm has had a history there of producing uh, some uh, pretty large tornadoes and producing a lot of damage with it. So, right now, still a tornado warning that does go into effect till, till 530. So, we still have that one going on for another uh, 20 minutes with that one as well, too. So, we'll still continue to watch this storm here as it comes on in. Let's go back down here to the the south and heading over down toward the Chilton County area. And that's where we do have these storms down here that are continuing to move into Chilton County now. And as they continue to move on in, they are also have tornado warnings with them at this point. And as they continue to build on in toward Chilton County, we have two of them we're keeping an eye on here. Uh, both, again, have somewhat of a hook echo with them here. This is what Griffin was talking about. You have the inflow. Remember, there's nothing south of them. So both of them are able to thrive, even though they're right next to each other here. They do again show rotation. Again, uh, still some strong rotation with the one to the west. This one now coming into southern parts of Chilton County continues also to have uh, some rotation with it, though. We haven't really seen any uh, debris, at least at this point, showing up with the, the, at least the one coming into Shelton County. Uh, not really seeing anything with this one yet either. Uh, a lot of inflow winds coming on into that one, but uh, nonetheless, though, need to keep an eye on both of these as we move forward here, because both of them do have the potential here uh, to produce uh, tornadoes as they work their way on into the north here. So again, parts of the southern and eastern Chilton County area you already felt the impact of one supercell earlier. Now it looks like more of the western parts. So this one's headed toward Maplesville area. So here's Highway 82. You can see the corridor. Uh, that'll be impacted again as well, too, with these storms as they continue on that track there off to the northwest. So we're going to be watching all these, kind of giving you a little bit of a storm track with that. Peltzer there right around two minutes. Fairview around 10 minutes. Enterprise, again, Enterprise in Chilton County, not the Coffee County one, Chilton County. Probably some of you were messaging me. I didn't know there was a second Enterprise, uh, but there is there in Chilton County. 
County. They're in the southern part, of course. Uh, Highland at 15 minutes. Clanton about 22 minutes. So again, watch this one here. Peltier, it's right on your doorstep, heading over toward Highland, the Clanton area here. So this is the one we're watching, uh, potentially with a tornado coming toward the Clanton area. we are watching that one very, very closely for you as well, too. Now, the other one we're keeping a close eye on is this one here. Uh, this one looks to be going to Ritterville there as we get into about, uh, say, 16 minutes. Parnell around 19 minutes. Dixie at 22 and Stanton around 24 minutes. So that one's going to continue working its way on in toward the western and southwestern part of Clanton County, which will eventually include the Maplesville area. Now, and it isn't warned in that part of Chilton County yet, uh, but definitely be watching to see if that does anything. This one here, again, still has what we look for, that inflow notch, that moisture coming on in, fueling that thunderstorm there, and that's why we do have that rotation tied in with it here. Getting a little bit stronger, it looks like. Also, this one here, fairly strong rotation, too, hence the reason why we do have those tornado warnings in effect for those areas. And again, still not seeing anything from either storm that's concerned where we have debris being lofted into the air. But nonetheless, we're watching that. Some of these could also be producing a little bit of some hail. Uh, nothing too significant at that point. But they do have some strong winds with them. Definitely here, kind of right along Highway 82. We do have some severe winds. We're talking winds potentially then that location, about 60 miles per hour or so. So we do have the strong winds tied in with that. And that's right where we have that strongest part of the thunderstorm continue to move on in there over towards southern part there of Clanton County. So we'll continue to, or not Clanton County, Clanton. In Chilton County uh, at this point. So here is the Interstate uh, 65 corridor. That'll be crossing right over that as we move forward here, uh, going on in as well, too. So uh, definitely keep an eye on both of these storms and still watching that one well off to the north of Birmingham here. Not well off to the north, but just north of Birmingham. This one still is trying to do something uh, again. Uh, it hasn't gone away, hasn't totally dissipated. We talked about earlier there's nothing south of it to rob its moisture source, which is the southerly winds there. So this one has been kind of persistent. Crossed over I-65, Highway 31 right now. I'll take a quick look and see uh, how this is doing with rotation. A little bit showing up there now, uh, again, but not seeing any kind of debris with it. So we're not looking at, at this point, uh, any kind of tornado with this one right now. So be keeping a close eye on all this. We're not done yet. Sherry and Art, we still have a long way to go this evening. Uh, Dave, we do indeed, as you said, another round coming through for places that have already been hit. We, we are live on the scene at another location uh, looking at some of the damage. Down in Tuscaloosa County, let's go to CBS 42 News reporter Michael Clark. And Michael, tell us what are you seeing there in Tuscaloosa as we're looking at the damage where you are now? We're going to get road here in Tuscaloosa County. It's about 10 miles south of the city of Tuscaloosa. If you can go ahead and take a look in the yard here, you can see just this was what's left of a storage shed that was split uh, in all directions because of some of the uh, wind speeds that blew these trees over and then into the shed. As we kind of get over to this home here, you can see several trees by the chimney. That's where the bedroom is, where homeowner Lynn Taylor was taking shelter during the storm. Lynn is actually here on the uh, back of his pickup truck just trying to take all of this in. Lynn, I'm, I'm looking around your home. You've got at least six to seven, eight, nine, ten trees uh, snapped. You're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Talk to us about what this was like this afternoon going through uh, this and, and what you did to stay safe. Well, uh, everybody, I got the warnings on the phone, so I looked at that and I, I was just laying around. I, I heard that train coming. When I heard it coming, I, I looked out the window and I seen, I seen wind blowing the trees and it was blowing them around. I went to the front door to see what was going on. It pulled it where I couldn't open it. Now, Lynn, you told us that you've got some family members back up the road here. It's blocked. You can't get there right. because of all the trees. How are they doing? How are their properties tonight? Oh, uh, now I got a cousin that lost her house up there, and the lady that lived next to me lost her trailer up there. Wow. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're okay. Is there anything that, that you need tonight? Do you have power to the home? Or do you, no, no. We, we won't have power. They, well, I won't have power for a while because they, the tree took my box off the side of the house. Well, Lynn, thank you for, thank for you. sharing this uh, this with us. And um, again, as we uh, have kind of show you, is the uh, other portion of Rossa Road. Y'all, this just hit within the last two hours or so, and already there are so many volunteers that have come out here. We've seen trucks from uh, county fire departments, Alabama Power, uh, different utility providers here uh, in Tuscaloosa County, all trying to do their part to clear this road for uh, first responders who need to get back 
uh, through here. We've seen chainsaws and heard buzzing chainsaws throughout. And as you kind of look beyond here on Rosser Street, you can just see all of the insulation that's just infused in some of these branches and the trees uh, beyond our view here. And obviously, that's one of those signature uh, sites that we see with strong winds when uh, some of these uh, mobile homes and the insulation just kind of goes in all directions. And so we've seen several uh, portions of the home being removed uh, already from some of the equipment that's out here. We saw a mattress uh, that had somehow got out of the home onto the road that was uh, pushed to the side just a few moments ago. So they are working very hard to try to get this clear and hopefully we'll have uh, that done for at least traffic to be able to move through here within the next uh, 30 minutes or so. There's probably not a lot of daylight uh, left and then there's obviously the concern for a second round of storms uh, here to come uh, later this afternoon. But again, back in here to Mr. Taylor's front lawn, you can just see all of the trees down around here and the damage to his property. It's going to be quite uh, the night for cleanup here and obviously crews will be looking to the skies to make sure they stay safe. But of course, we'll be out here trying to give you a look at the damage as we can make our way a little bit further up the road as long as it's safe and we'll share those images with you on air and online at cbs42.com but for now reporting live in tuscaloosa county michael clark cbs 42 news local coverage you can count on well michael before we let you go there if we get back to michael for a minute we want to say obviously we we hope things work out for mr lynn taylor there in tuscaloosa county on south rosser road um, giving us a really good look at that damage in the area. Can you give us a sense of how widespread that damage is, how far down South Rosser Road that damage goes, Michael? Well, it's difficult for us to, to get a, an idea of that because we can't even uh, go beyond where we are right now. But we've talked to some of the neighbors here. They've said it's as much as two miles uh, beyond where we're standing uh, to, to clear all of that out. We had to walk a pretty good uh, portion to get to where we are moving past some of the uh, first responders. We obviously didn't want to bring our news car back here and uh, get in the way of uh, the hard work that these crews are out here doing, but it's certainly uh, a long way back here. We uh, definitely believe it to be at least a mile uh, of damage through here. So we've heard, you know, before about these long track storms, still unclear what happened here. We'll wait for the National Weather Service and uh, the meteorologists to, to kind of dive into that. But uh, obviously it was on the ground or uh, was in this area for at least a mile uh, based on the neighbors that we've talked to out here. And we've seen uh, really trees down uh, in all directions, both sides of the road um, for the last, I don't know, quarter mile of half a mile that it took for us to get to where uh, we are. But there's been quite a bit of progress that's been made in just the short time we've been here to see all of these uh, trees that are already cleared. You can see all these pine needles just in the middle of the road here, uh, obviously. Crews wasted no time getting over here to help uh, and make sure that everybody was okay. So, uh, like I said, we're going to try to walk a little bit further up here to follow uh, these crews safely to uh, to get a look at uh, what some of these other property owners are dealing with and just how far along uh, this road it is. As you see, another uh, piece of equipment that's coming by us here. This is really the only way crews are able to get around right now uh, until they get all of these trees and other debris. Uh, items picked up, um, they're all having to use that. So we'll send it back to y'all. Yeah, Michael, thank you. Uh, there in Tuscaloosa County uh, on South Rosser Road, looking at some of the damage. There are reports going on right now more tornado warnings and a uh, tornado on the ground. The CBS 42 Storm Team Weather Center right now. Dave? Uh, yeah, another tornado warning. We've been watching this one here over just off to the southwest of Clanton in Shelton County. Uh, looking at the latest debris right now. It looks like we now have a tornado with this thunderstorm here as it just crossed on into uh, the Shelton County area here. There is Clanton with this one tracking it out here for you here. That would put it on into Highland around 10 minutes. Clanton, 18 minutes or 17 minutes. Low max around 20 and Cooper in about 20 minutes. So you need to take shelter uh, immediately. We do have again the debris showing up with this thunderstorm. Now, as it works its way on in toward the southern part of Chilton County, here uh, heading over to parts there of uh, eventually the Highland area in about 10 minutes, and Clanton right around to uh, say 17 minutes now for you at this point. So that's kind of what we're looking at here with this thunderstorm. You can see it does have some strong rotation with it right now. Uh, that's what we're looking at right in through here, and then a reflectivity with it here again, showing again uh, what we have going on uh, with that uh, that little hook echo we talk about so much for 
for here. So let me kind of zoom in on what we're talking about here. The southern part of the storm, this is where we're talking here, has the potential for that, or likely a tornado. We're seeing that debris starting to show up here at this point here. Uh, again, the pools, crossroads area, this is going to go right by your area there to the Kinchin area as well, too. We're talking about County Road here. It looks like 37 at this point here. County Road 34 crossing right over in those locations. So this would likely be a new tornado uh, coming on into the area there. County Road 9, County Road 24, County Road 37. I uh, just came over County Road 350 at this point. Headed toward the Pools Crossroad area there. Headed toward the, the eventually here toward the Kinchin area. Continuing over a County Road. Let's see, eventually here about uh, 369. Heading over to 387. Over toward the Highland area as well. So want to give you enough lead time, folks. Uh, we do have the radar indicating we do have another uh, potentially here. It looks like a tornado showing up here uh, based off of what we have. There we go. Yep, this is going to go ahead and show you that we do have uh, debris being lofted in the air. A new tornado. This is now down in Chilton County. This one is headed toward the Clanton area. So again, uh, Clanton, get ready. Uh, this one is going to be headed toward your direction here as we move forward here over the next little while here, uh, kind of giving a little bit of a storm track as well too with this one here as it moves off to the north here, roughly about 30 miles per hour. Again, Clanton, you got 13 minutes. Take shelter now. Safe place in your home. Lowest level of your home. Basement. Best place to go. Highland, you're in six minutes. Lomax, 17 minutes here. Uh, this is definitely another another storm we're looking at here. I've been watching these coming out of the south and then heading on in toward uh, from Otaga County, heading on in toward their uh, Chilton County right now. We do again have that new storm. Uh, this is now producing a tornado uh, based off of uh, what we've seen here. So we're going to continue uh, watching this one as it moves on in. That tornado one, it continues in that location there uh, for a little while longer as well, too. So we have that till 6.15, the new warning. But this is the storm we're talking about. That is where we do have that rotation showing up here. Again, this storm is, again, continuing to get uh, a little better organized at this point. And that's why we have that new tornado there. Again, this tornado, again, the crossroads right now. Remember, this is just a snapshot. So it is moving here pretty quickly. Uh, but pool crossroads right over top of your area. This is where we are being reporting debris coming on end of the area here, heading its way over toward the county road here. We got County Road 9. We have County Road, let's see, that's uh, over toward uh, 16, heading over toward, uh, that's all County Road 16, kind of curves around there, makes a loop. So uh, this is what we're talking about. It is moving here pretty quickly off to the northeast. So uh, Kinchin area, take shelter now. It's headed up toward your direction as we do have, again, debris from this being shown up there. That is, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, that's even that, is, reflectivity, uh, yep. that is a really high reflectivity. Of course, this is fairly wow. close to the radar as well, which is just up I-65. Uh, but that is our tornado, folks, right there, right near the Kinchin area. This is where we're talking about. That's what you call a debris ball. Right over Kinchin. Right Look over quick. top of Kinchin. Right, right over now. top of Kinchin right now. Uh, this is where that tornado is located right now. So you need to be in your safe place right now. County Road 6 and 9, we're talking about there uh, at this point here, heading over to County Road 30. If you live on those roads, tornado is here. It's already in Kinchin at this point. And you can see there we have it. There's the debris tracker showing the debris from this storm right over top of that area now as it continues working its way farther to the north. It is going to move its way eventually or tor over toward or up toward the Clanton area. This is coming toward Highland. So Highland, you're next with this. It's coming up your direction. So get ready for this to continue to move on into that area. But right over top of Kinchin right now, that is where our storm is located. This is our debris tracker showing debris is being lofted into the air by the tornado here. Again, right over top of the pool's crossroads, right over top of Kinchin. County Road 16 at this point and 30 as well as 365 all in the path of this tornado right now. Take shelter immediately. Lowest level of your home, away from windows, interior room and closet. Out of, you shouldn't be in a mobile home today anyway uh, because not going to be safe no matter where you live at this point. So we're going to continue watching that. Uh, real quick before I send it over to Sarah, I want to watch the storm that's behind it heading over to parts of the western part there of Chilton County. That is the one we're talking about right now as it continues to move to the north. Stronger one eventually headed toward Maplesville here. Uh, I just want to check this real quick as well, showing some pretty good rotation with that one. That one uh, is not showing anything right now. We have the one tornado, not seeing the one down there quite yet, but definitely be watching. Maplesville, you're in the need to take shelter immediately as well, too. No confirmed tornado like we have with this one right now, uh, but, but definitely here, this is the one we need to be watching very closely, headed eventually toward the Clanton area. Just went right over top of the Kinchin area. Sarah, what do you have? Yeah, Dave, we're looking at these supercells in Chilton County as we speak, and if you are in Clanton.
Edmonton and you are listening to us right now, you need to be in that safe place because this is a very dangerous tornado that is really showing up on radar right now that is tracking directly towards Clanton, specifically south of the center of Clanton here. So here is where we're talking about right over County Road 30 in Chilton County. This is tracking towards Clanton, towards County Road 53, Wilson Road, County Road 7, County Road 49 also, and then right towards I-65, the Clanton exits here. That is where the center of circulation, the likely dangerous tornado on the ground, will be tracking towards I-65 as we speak right now. We also have a cell just behind it that has another warning for Chilton County. So this one is going to be tracking towards Maplesville. Folks in Jemison and in Thorsby also need to be getting into your safe place right now. You have enough time if you are in Jemison and Thorsby, if you're in a mobile home, get to a storm shelter right now because you do have time if you're in Jemison and Thorsby. But if you are in Clanton and you are in a mobile home, it's too late to leave right now. You got to get into a safe place. If you have a neighbor with a sturdy structure, get to there right now because this is a dangerous storm that is tracking right towards Clanton. You don't want to get in a car right now if you're right in Clanton because that is even more dangerous. But this one back towards Maplesville, this is tracking towards Maplesville and eventually will lift towards Jemison and Thorsby. So you have enough time if you're in Jemison or Thorsby. Talking about some of the roads that are under the gun right now in Clanton. You guys need to be in your safe place if you're in County Road 49, County Road 53, as well as County Road 358, and then up towards County Road 28 as well in Chilton County. That is where the storm is tracking right now, getting closer to the I-65 corridor, but still about 15 to 20 minutes away from the center of Clanton. These are the storms that are the most concerning for us right now, but also so the one up towards Blunt County, we still have an active tornado warning nearing Aniana right now. So Blunt County, you guys have the tornado warning as well. We'll, we'll send it over to Griffin right now with the latest on the warning in Chilton County. Yes, I want to talk about the Chilton County storm. Obviously, there is definitely a tornado there. I also want to give a shout out to folks in Blunt County. We have that same cell that produced all the damage in eastern Tuscaloosa County. That has fully made its way through Jefferson County, and now it's moving into Blunt County. There's an area of rotation right here south of Locust Fork that just crossed over Highway 79. It's tracking up to the northeast, <coughs> excuse me, at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. So if you're in All Good or if you're in Aniana, up to the northeast, all up and down Highway 231. You need to go ahead and, go ahead and get to your safe spot right now because um, there's another uh, area of rotation up there in Blunt County. So once again, if you're in Blunt County near Locust Fork, Cleveland, Aniana, or All Good, get to your safe spot right now. It's an interior room away from doors and windows, lowest floor possible. And once again, let's take you back down to that Chilton County storm, which uh, is soon to be heading into downtown Clanton. There's a look at that area of rotation that you see here right near Highland, uh, moving up towards downtown Clinton. Let me switch over to the uh, debris indicator, see if we can see anything here. Uh, there's still a little bit of a return here. Maybe not quite as impressive as the past couple of scans, but you can see it pretty well right here, right on top of Highland near County Road 9, County Road 387, County Road 53. Uh, but if it continues that track northeast and maybe gains a little bit more energy, this could pass right through the center of town. Uh, if you're in this downtown Clanton, this could be really headed your way, and we don't say that lightly. Uh, you know, this is this is on that northeastern track. Uh, this is this could be headed right towards downtown Clanton, a pretty well populated, uh, familiar area of central of central Alabama. So let me pull up the storm track real quick. This is another look at the. Uh, Estimated. Well, let me let me draw it for you. That'll that'll work a little bit better. Uh, let me get some of the arrival times on this. There's that area of debris that we potentially see there, and a look at the arrival times. It'll be moving through Clanton in about seven minutes. So you have seven minutes to get to your shelter if you haven't done so already, uh, because there's certainly enough indication there that we uh, have something that could be moving into downtown Clanton. Also, another community that was impacted potentially earlier today by a tornado, Dollar, about 27 minutes away from you in Quincy in about 28 minutes. 
So again, the uh, most noteworthy storm on the board is this one that's in southern Chilton County. It's 5.30 p.m., and there's still, even in that last scan, maybe not as pronounced as what we saw in Tuscaloosa County, but enough indication that uh, there's, there's debris being lofted by this tornado right there in the center of your screen and tracking up to the northeast towards Samaria, towards County Road 28, 7th Street, Wilson Road. Uh, any of these streets I name, if you live near them, now's the time you need to take shelter. Interior room and away from doors and windows. You're not going to be able to see this thing because it's pretty much fully rain wrapped as most tornadoes are that we've seen today. Also farther west, we've got this, another storm that is uh, prompting a tornado warning for Maplesville. This storm, uh, it's about 13 minutes away from passing through Maplesville. Uh, also for uh, Isabella, about 21 minutes away from you, Tucker in about 21 minutes as well. Uh, and this one, uh, let's take a look at the rotation signature with that. Getting a little bit of noise here, uh, so it may not be as well defined, but if you're in the warning polygon, you got to take it seriously. So Maplesville, Clanton, uh, Jemison, and Thorsby also included in the polygon. Uh, if you're in Chilton County, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter where you are. A lot of the well-populated areas of Chilton County included in two separate uh, tornado warnings. So now it's the time to hunker down, let these storms pass, and we'll all be okay. You know, as, as long as you take precautions, move away from doors and windows, you're going to be fine. Most times, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, as long as you take those precautions, you're going to be okay. Uh, but still, nonetheless, we, it's something we need to take really seriously because uh, just storm after storm after storm, we have more of these warnings that keep popping up. So here's a look at the latest scan and that debris indicator. If there is anything, it's right there. Not really as well defined. That's some good news. We like to see that. We want it to kind of dissipate a little bit, but that's where it is on top of County Road, uh, County, County Road 9 right now, tracking up to the northeast up towards Clanton, and, uh, and that's going to be the center of town as well. So fortunately, uh, that's, that's good news to hear. Uh, as we kind of, let me do a quick reset here just to give, show you the bigger picture. What we have going on across the state is a very large tornado outbreak that's currently in progress. Uh, we have a big slew of tornado warnings that have popped up all across Alabama earlier today. Uh, farther to the west is the cold front. You see it tracking across the Mississippi River here. We have to wait until this fully passes through the area until we're completely in the clear. We're still going to get a big batch of storms that develops along that front. So we got a long way to go. Uh, it probably won't fully clear the area until around maybe two, th three, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, by, by tomorrow morning, we're going to have to be still on guard as these storms uh, pass through all of central Alabama. So once again, we got two tornado warnings in Chilton County. If you're in Chilton County, just Stay put, let it pass, and another tornado warning uh, up in Blunt County. Uh, Dave, if you're ready to, to give a little bit more input, I'll toss it back to you. Yeah, uh, right now, again, those are the two main storms we're watching here down in Shelton County. Uh, the one heading right into Clanton here. If we don't have a, the actual tornado coming on in, that'd be wonderful news. Uh, but uh, it's likely we could still have some very, very strong winds, 60 mile per hour plus winds coming your way as well, too. Here, looking at that debris tracker, uh, again, not as pronounced here with this one here. Again, this is not what we're looking at here. That's inflow into our storm. You can just see where that's located. Do you want to have that if it's a tornado down here? Now, we still have, again, strong winds and rotation with that storm coming toward Maplesville. So we need to watch that one here. We saw the one off to the east kind of quickly develop, produce a quick tornado here. And now it looks like it's going to be lifting a little bit, uh, but it is moving right over top of the Clanton area as we speak. Uh, fortunately, it may have weakened just a little bit, which is good news here, but we still have very heavy rain, probably some strong winds with that as well, too. And you can see here looking at the radar, there's downtown Clanton. This is where that tornado would be about probably over top of Clanton right now uh, if it hold, held together. But fortunately, the radar is not showing near as much debris being lofted into the air like it did just to the southwest of Clanton. So that is some wonderful news there. But nonetheless, uh, the worst part of that storm is about to come on in. This is where you're going to see the winds picking up. This is where you're going to see that heavy rain continuing to come down here. Uh, if there even is a tornado still, if it's still around, likely wrapped in rain anyway. So just listen for that roar of the wind as it heads over in your direction there across the Clanton area. So that's the first one we're going to continue to watch here as we move forward. Now, the one back over toward the west. Here, this one's going into the Maplesville area. You have the heavy rain and hail coming in now. Here is that hook echo with it here, uh, still showing that rotation tied in with it, too. Uh, again, not. Uh 
looking too bad here, but it's not really hasn't produced a tornado quite yet. Uh, it is going to be moving over an area of land that really has not uh, been actually moved over with rain or a, any kind of tornadic storm here in the in most recent hours here. Uh, looking at the debris tracker now, we're not seeing anything. Again, that's not it. It would be over here uh, based off of where our little hook would be at this point. So that's what we're going to watch to see if this tries to get a little bit organized, just like the other one did as it's now moving over Clanton right now. But again, at this point, looking at the debris tracker, we're not seeing that significant uh, debris uh, signature like we saw just a little bit ago as it moved up to the, from the southwest right over top of Clanton. So good news for you in Clanton. Uh, those areas farther south of you, uh, that was not so much good news. Down here, uh, this is where we had it. So we had it going over Cross County Road 9, area 365, area 2. Highland it went right over top of that area as well, too. Kinshin went right over top of you. Likely we have some damage here. Hopefully nothing significant, uh, but those are the areas that we definitely had some of that damage earlier, too, uh, as that storm moved on in. But now uh, what's left of that storm here is moving over Clanton, and you can see here looking at the radar, there we have it right there, just off to the north here, crossing the interstate, of course, and Highway 31 up near Lomax. Heavy rain, maybe a little some hail out there as well. Still some strong winds, though, possible through Clanton. We're talking winds here, potentially around 60 miles per hour. So we're still going to have that if we don't have the tornado, which is good. Uh, we don't have a tornado, but still be prepared for some of that. Uh, right now, though, here looking at the velocity product, and still see there is some of that rotation over at Clanton at this point, uh, but still watching that storm as it moves off to the north, still watching the storm in Maplesville. But let's go back to the one here. Don't want to forget about our storm we had earlier uh, coming on in just north of Birmingham. Uh, this storm is now kind of working its way farther to the north as well, uh, heading on in toward uh, just north of uh, the Warrior area, going over toward Locust Fork at this point here, and heading toward All Good on Iana area as well, too. Highway 2. 31. Uh, this one still has some rotation tied in with it, uh, as you'll see here, and pull the velocity product. Uh, not as impressive as it once was. Still have it, though, showing up at this point, uh, but still an all good area here. Aniana, uh, Nectar, Cleveland, Locust Fort still have to deal with all of this. Fortunately, we're not seeing any kind of debris showing up, which is good news, but we still had the potential here for some very heavy rain, hail, and yes, even some strong winds kind of showing up out there. Uh, so do be prepared for that. Still have that tornado warning for that storm until 6 o'clock. It's currently 537, so we still have that one under ways for quite some time. So uh, we still have, again, some storms to continue to watch here, some stronger storms over toward the Jasper area right now. Fortunately, these are not severe, uh, but still producing some very heavy rain heading on into parts of Walker County right now, Carbon Hill area back down to Oakman. Very heavy rain, maybe some hail even uh, mixed in there as well, too. A little bit of some of that light hail coming on in, and maybe some of these winds, uh, not too, too strong, but some maybe 40 mile per hour winds it kind of mixed in with these thunderstorms. So we're still looking at some stormy weather for you there. Back over toward Fayette area here, Hamilton, some pretty good rains coming on in. Back down to Tuscaloosa as well. We still have some rain there. Uh, watching again these storms in the part of Clanton County, but south of Greensboro, watching these storms. These also are under tornado warnings a little later on until 630 here. Uh, this storm here eventually kind of working its way on in closer here towards southern part of the, the Bibb and Green County area. Is eventually uh, still seeing some very heavy rain with it. It does have some pretty good rotation here, uh, but not getting any detection that there's a tornado coming from this one, at least right now. So that's that that is also some great news to see here with that. But we're gonna continue watching all these. Also watching new storms that have been kind of going tornadic here back in the Mississippi. Uh, that area there, while well, it doesn't look like there's much rain, we do the radar not going that far over. Uh, we do have to watch some of those because they are gonna continue moving on in toward Meridian. And eventually toward Tuscaloosa, possibly here in the Birmingham area as well, too. So still a lot to watch. It's only 539, 540 our time here. We are expecting this to continue as we get into midnight, 2 o'clock, maybe 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, all until that line uh, Griffin was showing you comes in a little later on. So this is still round one coming on in uh, with these individual storms. We'll have round two coming on in a little bit later on. So we do need to be prepared uh, for all of that. Let me go ahead and show you here kind of what we're talking about, what's coming down.
down the pike at this point. Uh, that's, these are the storms that are coming out of Mississippi uh, and parts of uh, into the Baton Rouge area there. We had some pretty strong storms. My father-in-law lives here at Franklin County here on into parts of southwest Mississippi. Said so it was pretty rough. May have been a tornado that uh, touched down near his area there. Uh, but we'll be watching this line as it continues to move on in uh, up toward the Memphis area here. It's kind of a broken line with it. It isn't necessarily a good thing because we get those individual storms that start to rotate with it. But uh, between what we have now and when that line comes in, we still are going to be in a favorable area uh, for some severe weather to continue across the area. So I wish we could say once this moves by, we're done. We'll just wait for that squall line and cold front to come through. Unfortunately, that line is going to slow down as it comes in here. So not only is our threat going to be for some severe weather and tornadoes and severe thunderstorms here, but heavy rain. I already picked up over an inch of rain from the, what we had so far today over at the airport here in Birmingham. Some of you picked up even more than that. So we're going to have to watch out for some flash flooding issues as we head into later on this evening, overnight into tomorrow too. So if you're in an area that's prone to flooding, we get some of these downpours to come in, especially if this line slows down. That is going to give us the threat for more flash flooding issues through the night, which again, you won't be able to tell. And of course, you never ever want to drive through any kind of flooding issues out there whatsoever. So again, going back here at home, uh, we do have again, those storms we're still watching out there. Those coming on in toward Chilton County here, uh, still watching both of these here pretty closely as they get in toward Clanton. Right now, some of that heaviest uh, uh, the storms kind of coming on in for you there. And the one behind it headed toward the Maplesville area. Actually, it's about almost in Maplesville now. Looking at the rotation, still showing uh, some of that counterclockwise rotation with it. Checking the debris tracker, not seeing anything, which is good news. Same for the one over in Clanton, uh, but still very, very heavy rain. Gusty winds continue to fall for you, both of you areas here. So Clanton looks like you are in the clear with this storm now. So if you took shelter, uh, you can go ahead and get out. The storm has moved off to the north of you right now as that storm continues northward here, crossing over I-65, working its way up <clears throat> across part of the gap of the mountain area there, heading over to Parts County Road is at 450 at this point, uh, going over toward 448, uh, County Road 43, County Road 77 as well, uh, so State Road uh, 145 as well. So here's the Interstate 65 corridor uh, coming through Clanton. So storms still moving through, still could produce heavy rain, hail, and also some gusty winds, but uh, fortunately looking at the debris tracker, we're not seeing anything, which is some great news. Just have to deal with that very heavy rain continuing to come on in uh, toward that area. So we're still watching that one, and we're still going to be watching this one here coming right into Maplesville. Uh, this one, again, still talking about some uh, pretty heavy rain coming on in with this. The magenta color you see there, that would be hail. So just crossed over Highway 82, County Road 17, 324, coming right to the heart of Maplesville. Uh, we are seeing this uh, moving on in. Uh, we do have, again, some rotation still with this storm here. Likely some severe winds coming into Maplesville right now. Strong winds, 40, 60 miles per hour for you on top of that. Uh, but fortunately, we're not seeing any debris showing up. So uh, that uh, gives me a little bit of a... Uh, Dave, whew. we do have some damage reports, though. We near, do? Uh, Pools Crossroads. Okay, that uh, was... Uh, southern Chilton County. Yeah, that was the uh, other storm. Yeah, that is... Um, in southern Chilton County, we've had reports of homes that are damaged near Pools Crossroads. And once again, that's going to be in southern Chilton County. What I have pulled up here is the Blunt County storm. There's another tornado warning that's in effect for Blunt County with a potential area of rotation that's near Locust Fork. Uh, this is going to be impacting Aniana. We, we mentioned this about 10 minutes ago. This situation hasn't changed all that much. So if you're still uh, staying put in Aniana or All Good, all of these northern areas of uh, or, or southern areas of Blunt County, I should say, uh, you need to seek shelter immediately because. Um, once you get on top of Sand Mountain there, uh, that's a little bit of higher elevation. So that's a little bit less elevation necessary for a tornado to form. Historically, Sand Mountain can be a pretty favorable area for tornadoes, and we're kind of getting close to that up in Blunt County. So once again, if you're in Blunt County, that tornado warning in effect until 6 p.m., uh, that's going to be impacting potentially, if there is any rotation there, it's going to be near uh, what looks like just east of Deaverstown, Easley, uh, Rosa. This will be coming up on the eastern sections of Aniana here within the next five minutes. Uh, if you're in Greystone right now, the wind is howling. Uh, we've got potentially 70 mile per hour winds that are rolling through uh, Greystone and all good right now. And let me highlight the area of rotation. If there is anything, uh, tornado-wise, that's where it would be, right about there. 
Uh, so that's the Blunt County storm. Again, once again, if you're in Aniana, stay, uh, stay put, stay sheltered for just a little bit longer. Uh, it looks like the Weather Service is deciding to continue the tornado warning that's in Chilton County for that easternmost cell uh, to include Coosa County and southern Talladega County. So as far north as Childersburg. Uh, that's getting close to Shelby County, actually. Uh, if you're in Childersburg or Wilsonville, yes, that is the southeastern portion of Shelby yeah. County. Uh, you need to seek shelter if you're in, you know, well, I mean, if you're in Childersburg, it's still a good ways away. Same goes for Sylacauga. But farther down to the south, that same cell that likely just passed through downtown Clanton, uh, the warning is being continued for that for another 45 minutes uh, downstream. So if you're, uh, let's see if the closer look at the communities here. This is going to be coming up kind of close to the Lay Lake area. Uh, this is where a lot of that really heavy rain and uh, really high lightning output is showing up there. Uh, so two cells that are still tracking through Chilton County. Uh, we may or may not have had a tornado that just passed through Clanton. Uh, there were certainly some really strong winds that just passed through downtown Clanton. Uh, so. Thankfully, uh, that, that particular cell is lightening up a little bit. That same cell is uh, thankfully passed through Clanton. But, of course, we have this other one that is impacting Maplesville. It's just it's one cell after another. It is just uh, we're kind of in that type of situation that we were afraid would happen where kind of all at once we have supercells that are popping up in discrete locations. And each one of them is capable of producing a tornado in this type, this type of environment. So, once again, recapping here, that new warning that just got issued for Coosa County, uh, that's going to include... I, 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 that's going to include the Lay Lake area. So if you live along Lay Lake, otherwise known as the Coosa River, uh, south of Columbiana in the, you know, the southern fringe part of uh, Shelby County, you need to go ahead and get to your safe spot. And that continues northward as far north as Sylacauga. It'll be a while before it makes it to Sylacauga, but if you're in Sylacauga or Childersburg, you need to have your guard up to uh, go ahead and get to your safe spot. Right now. So, a little bit more on the bigger picture. Sarah, I'll toss it over to you. Yeah, Griffin, you talk about how it's one after the other. You can see that on the big picture here. Storms down through Selma are going to continue to lift towards the north and east and move through Chilton County once again. So, do not let your guard down, even though the threat for Clanton is over. You still have storms that are going to continue to move into Chilton County. So, the flashing red boxes, those are the tornado warnings. Solid darker red boxes are the flash flood warnings in effect. Zooming out though, we have to look off to our west to see what's going to come later this evening. We have severe thunder warnings through Jackson and down through southern Mississippi and into Louisiana as well. That is what is going to be our severe threat later this evening. Later tonight, once the sun goes down, we'll be watching to see how those storms behave in West uh, or in Mississippi. And once they start to near the uh, state line, that'll be a good indication of our over severe, over severe weather threat. So we will know if the storms in Mississippi, how strong they are as they near our area. That'll be a good indication of our overall severe weather threat later tonight. Let's time it out for you on Futurecast. You can see the individual cells still popping up uh, down through much of our area. That'll, those will continue to lift off to the north and east. And then here comes the line that is back through Mississippi. We'll near the state line around 11 p.m., move through the I-65 corridor from Coleman down through Birmingham around 11. By midnight, we'll start to see that cross basically right along the 2059 corridor right around midnight. Gusty winds, strong winds, possibly even tornadoes along this line cannot be ruled out later this evening. After midnight, we'll see that sink down into really southeastern central Alabama and then over towards east Alabama by 2 a.m. Really heavy rainfall, strong winds will be possible as well. Isolated tornadoes possible too from Gadsden, Aniston, Talladega, down through Clanton, and then into Clay County by around 3 a.m. We'll have the all clear really for West Alabama around 1 to 2 a.m. Along the I-65 corridor from Jefferson to Shelby County, we will be done with this by 3 a.m. In East Alabama, the threat will be over between about 4 and 6 a.m. So this is going to be a long event. We're still going to be dealing with this for the next several hours. But tomorrow, all will be clear and we will be done with the severe weather threat. For the latest on the warnings, let's go back over to Dave.
All right, thanks so much, Sarah. Uh, late now, we're just kind of looking at the storm here uh, coming out of Blunt County. We do have from Alga to Aniana reporting funnel clouds here, but no tornadoes as the storm's coming up to Highway 231, Rosa Cleveland area as well as all good. Uh, just reports of some funnel clouds here, but have not seen a tornado, which is good news. Looking at that debris tracker, we're not seeing anything at this point, but there still is some rotation with this one here. So we're starting to keep an eye on this storm as we go forward here. Uh, so we can't. Uh, give the all clear here yet, though. Uh, but at least at this point, we haven't seen anything uh, saying that we're going to be dealing with again uh, the threat for an actual tornado on the ground yet. So that's good news here as the debris tracker again shows uh, nothing like that showing up. But reports of some funnel clouds up there. Uh, so definitely something we need to keep an eye on for sure too with that storm as it continues on further off to the north here. You can see obviously over toward those regions still keeping an eye on that. Kind of doing a quick little track for you here. Uh, over toward Cleveland around three minutes. Rosa seven minutes. Uh, Murphy area there around 15 minutes. And over toward Bright Star 29 minutes. Again if it holds together at least at that point for you. So we're going to continue to watch uh, uh, that one here, again, not looking as organized as it once was, but it's had a history of some strong rotation and also some tornadoes across that area as well. So we're kind of continuing to watch in that one here. Uh, still going to keep an eye on those coming out of Chilton County right now. Uh, we also talked about this one heading over toward Coosa Air, uh, County and then heading on into parts there all the way up to Childersburg, too. Uh, so this is a, a long track uh, storm here in Supercell. Uh, this one's going to kind of maybe split between Sal uh, Silicaga area and Wilsonville. Uh, still going to watch this one here. Again, it, it has still some rotation tied in with it, uh, but not seeing any indications that there is actually a tornado uh, at this point. So we're still going to be watching that one here uh, with our debris tracker. The one behind it, though, uh, kind of worked its way out of Maplesville. Also, uh, just rotating, not seeing any debris with it. Uh, this one is likely just going to be a heavy rainmaker, but still showing rotation. So still watch out in Jemison area, back to Thornsby, Thornsby area. We still have here along Highway 31 uh, the chance that this possibly could get stronger and produce a tornado. It hasn't done so yet, uh, but that's not to say it won't do that. So definitely be watching that closely as we go forward here. Uh, definitely showing that rotation and something to keep an eye on as well, too. With that, that tornado warning goes until 615. Right now it is 551, our current time there. Uh, the other uh, storms we're watching here uh, over toward uh, outside of Clanton, which did not report any damage. Happy to report there. Uh, we are also seeing, again, the threat here uh, for this storm. Which is try to get maybe a little better organized, kind of messy looking at this point. I think it's starting to feel the influence of the storm behind it, uh, but the, neither one of them have any storms south of it, so they could be kind of persisting for a while. Still showing that rotation tied in with it here, kind of more of a broader or a larger rotation with it, uh, but uh, we still have to keep, we'll keep an eye on both of those two storms as they continue on the track there, uh, heading even kind of clipping parts there of Shelby County as well, kind of staying just off to the southeast of Columbiana at least at this point. Um, so we'll be watching all of those. And again, really across the area, that's what we're watching there closely. Storms farther off to the south, as Sarah was talking about here, also severe with some tornado warnings with them as well. We're going to continue watching all of those uh, as they kind of work their way on in closer to the viewing area. Still kind of just south of the Greensboro area, at least at this point. And uh, that storm there, again, still has been pretty potent uh, with uh, some strong rotation at times, uh, but not seeing anything significant here. Looking at our debris tracker at this point, not seeing anything there either. So right now, some heavy rain, strong winds, maybe some small hail mixed in. This is headed toward the Marion area. And eventually, if it holds together, could work its way back into parts of Chilton County as well. So uh, Chilton County, you're not uh, out of the gun yet with this. We'll still have to watch these coming uh, up the pike, if you will. Uh, from the southwest. So they've been had a few tornadoes not too far from the Selma area, Dallas County, uh, heading over toward Marengo County as well as Otaga County uh, down to our south here, still keeping an eye on all of these here across the Alabama River and still watching a few more storms coming out of Mississippi too. Uh, these storms here, uh, some of which have been severe with some hail uh, heading toward the Meridian area. We can continue to watching all of those uh, producing some pretty heavy rain, also some of those gusty winds. But right now though, uh, still going to keep an eye on our storms coming on in toward much of the region here. There's storms down there to the south. We have storms up to the north, off to the west. Nothing too widespread, but they've obviously produced some significant tornadoes some fairly large tornadoes. At one point earlier today, we had uh, coming out of Tuscaloosa County into Jefferson County, fairly large tornado there. Uh, that's this storm, believe it or not, still persisting. 
coming out of Blount County, at least at this point. Uh, still kind of producing some uh, strong winds at this power. And uh, if I can get this one to work here, that would be great. Ah, well, uh, but uh, it's still going to continue producing here uh, the threat for maybe a tornado. Right now near the Aniana area here, heavy rain, some gusty winds with that too. Looking at that uh, winds here, some stronger winds between Aniana and Cleveland area about to come out of Blount County at this, at this point and work its way farther off to the north uh, toward Douglas area. But at this time, uh, not seeing any kind of debris uh, showing up on the tracker, which is good news there. And Dave, I but, want to mention that you know, this, in, once you get into Blunt County, those are some a little bit of higher elevations. Right. So I mean, you don't really necessarily have to have a tornado in order to have some really strong straight line winds. Yep. Uh, I'm getting some pixel queries in the velocity data. You know, 65, 70 miles per hour. That's up towards uh, this this little area of rotation that's passing through Rosa and Aniana. Some pretty severe winds here. Uh, let me pull that up for you. Um, so that the area of rotation's right there up towards Rosa, but on the eastern side of that, we have some really intense winds that are coming in here 67 miles per hour, 68 miles per hour. Doesn't necessarily take a tornado to do a lot of damage. So it's, it's even though. Um, we may or may not have a tornado here. Uh, it's, it's worth taking seriously just based on the straight line winds. So again, uh, that little area of rotation appears to be passing to the north of Aniana right now, tracking up towards Sneed. Uh, it should be moving through areas like Sneed within the, past, within the next 15 to 20 minutes. So again, that is the, uh, the Blunt County storm. Let's take you farther south to the, uh, the mess that's happening in Chilton County. Uh, right now, there's uh, there's a lot to a lot to diagnose here. You know, we've got multiple tornado warnings that are kind of overlapped with each other. Uh, this one, the, the latest one, is in effect until 6:30 p.m. On, uh, for for eastern Chilton County, northwestern Coosa County, and even as far north as Childersburg up in Shelby County, technically included in the warning. Uh, that is for this cell in particular here, which. At this present time, doesn't look very impressive. If there's anything, it's going to be right about here. Uh, but when you overlay that with velocity, it's just noise. I mean, we're not really getting a whole lot of well-defined rotation there, so that's good. That's what we want to see. Uh, if there is anything in the storm, it'll be down to the southwest uh, across the. Uh, well, it looks like it's crossing over the Coosa River right now. Uh, so if you do have anything, that's where it would be, but not very impressed with it right now. So that's some good news. And then we have that second cell, which is uh, in the western part of Chilton County now. This impacted Maplesville about 10 minutes ago. Ton of heavy rain coming down now in Jemison and Thorsby. It's just raining cats and dogs down there. Uh, and Chilton County's been getting storm after storm today. Uh, let's have a closer look at this storm. Uh, same thing, you know, not very well defined rotation. There's enough. There's enough evidence there that you need to take shelter. Um, we, we've talked about how any storm in this environment can obviously uh, can, can go tornadic really quickly. And that's why uh, we're obviously emphasizing that anytime you're in a warning polygon, you need to, to take action. Let's look under the hood with the Shear Ray product. This is a special uh, Baron product that we have here at CBS 42. And uh, it's kind of showing the same thing. There's a little bit of a hint of severe winds there, but nothing too uh, outlandish. Now, the Chilton County, or excuse me, the eastern storm that appears to be crossing over Lay Lake right now, that's a little bit different. That's a little bit better of a presentation to it. So this is going to be near Wildwood Shores, uh, near Hidden Valley and Marble Valley. Any, all these places that are along Lay Lake, uh, or at least the southern part of Lay Lake, uh, you, need to, you need to be taking this seriously. It looks like it's crossing over Lay Lake right now. If there's something there, that's where it would be, right about there, near Wildwood Shores. So let me pull up the debris indicator again. Fortunately, no TDS with this. We've seen a lot of that today. You know, especially with that Tuscaloosa County storm, uh, we saw really well-defined debris ball. But uh, fortunately, not seeing that right now with the Lay Lake storm uh, that's tracking up to the northeast. And again, this is uh, the warning includes Silicaga. It's still a good deal away from Silicaga, though. Let me measure this out for you. If there's something there, that's about where it would be. And Silicaga is about 20 miles away from it. Uh, so even though you're in the polygon, it's still a good ways away. Same story for Childersburg, another well-populated town that uh, is uh, still pretty close to the Birmingham metro, down 280. St same thing, about 20 miles away from you. And let me check the uh, chat room here. This is moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. Uh, so let's put a track on that. Uh, if there is anything there, that's about where it would be. North, uh, northeast at 40 miles per hour. 
This will be moving into Sylacauga in about 27 minutes. Same story for Childersburg and, uh, in, you know, in the general vicinity of those areas in about 20 to five, 25 minutes or so. So, again, we're going to keep watching this. We'll stick with the storm because, obviously, we've got more than one active warning out there. We've got this cell here, which is in northeastern Chilton County. We've got this one, which is in southern Chilton County. And then you go farther north, and there's another one uh, up into Blunt County. That is, uh, once you get into the higher elevations, uh, it, it really doesn't matter if you have a tornado or not, because once you get to that plateau, higher elevations mean stronger winds. Uh, so, another storm that is worth watching up in uh, northern Blunt County. So, the time right now, it is the top of the hour. It is 6 p.m., and we have right now three active tornado warnings in our viewing area. We've got one storm that's in Blunt County with a tornado warning in effect until 6.30 p.m. So if you're in Sneed, uh, if you're in Douglas, if you're anywhere along Highway 278, uh, really between Holly Pond and Sneed, you need to uh, go to your safe spot right now because there's enough there to indicate there's a possible uh, tornado that could be tracking through Blunt County. Then farther south, you've got two more storms. You've got one in central Chilton County with a ton of torrential downpours in Jemison and Thorsby. Uh, so if you're in Jemison and Thorsby, you're in the polygon. Stay sheltered for at least the next 30 minutes. Wait for this tornado warning to expire. Well, I take that back. In the next 15 minutes, and we'll see if that warning gets extended. Then you've got this other cell that has a tornado warning in effect until 6.30 p.m. That's going to include Far northwest Coosa County, Lay Lake, uh, southeastern Shelby County, just east of Columbiana, uh, and as, as far north as Childersburg, all up and down uh, Highway 280. It looks like it's labeled as 231. That's actually Highway 280, I believe. That's uh, between Childersburg and Sylacauga. Pretty well known part of the uh, Birmingham Metro. So if you're in any of these areas that I've just mentioned, uh, you need to just Take action, interior room, lowest floor away from doors and windows, and we'll get, we'll get through this. You know, it's a, we got a long night ahead, Sarah, so uh, if you want to show the broader picture, show what we have left to contend with for the rest of the night tonight, we'll toss it to you. Yeah, that's right, Griffin. A lot of times with severe weather events, it's kind of like a one and done for your area. You have your tornado warning, you can come out of your shelter and be done. Well, that is not the case today. So just because you're in Chilton County and had uh, tornado warnings move through much of Chilton County earlier, unfortunately, we have more storms headed your way. I'm seeing some pictures from damage in Clanton, cars flipped over. That is what is possible with these storms, and we have more tracking towards Chilton County as we speak. You can see towards uh, Perry County right now, just south of Uniontown and Marion right now. Tornado warning, this storm will track towards Chilton County. So do not let your guard down uh, for really all across the area. Because zooming out to give you the big picture here, back to our west, we still have tornado warnings through Mississippi, one through Tupelo, and then the flashing orange boxes, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. So that means uh, that all threats will be possible as we continue to see the main line of storms move through later this evening. Timing that out for you on Futurecast, you can see the cluster of thunderstorms will continue. These discrete cells will continue to pop up across the area. Isolated tornadoes in the mix will be possible through about 8 o'clock tonight, but continuing through about midnight as we see the main line nearing West Alabama. We'll see a almost a squall line develop, broken squall line will develop from Coleman down through Birmingham, back through Jasper and Moundville just around midnight. And then West Alabama will be in the clear by around 1 to 2 a.m. Birmingham Metro will be in the clear after 2, but then East Alabama dealing with the thunderstorms ahead of the cold front. That's going to move through by around 2 a.m. through Gadsden, Aniston, Talladega, Clanton. Stretching farther into East Alabama along the Georgia State Line from Cleburne, Cherokee, and then uh, towards Roanoke as well through about 3 a.m. Severe weather threat will not be over for the entire state until around 4 to 5 tomorrow morning. So we're going to be dealing with this for quite a long time. Before tomorrow, we will clear out and be done with the severe weather threat after around 5 a.m. tomorrow. So do not let your guard down for the remainder of the evening. Storms firing up back into Mississippi that we're going to continue to track that'll move into Alabama over the next several hours. Looking across the looking at the skies all across the area, you can see Vinny the Vulture and Aniston how strong the winds are in East Alabama right now. So while we're not seeing 
SEVERE WEATHER THROUGH CALHOUN COUNTY RIGHT NOW. THE WINDS ARE VERY GUSTY ALL ACROSS THE AREA. UPPER 60s STILL IN BIRMINGHAM, SO WARM, UNSTABLE AIR IN PLACE ALL ACROSS THE REGION. TUSCALOOSA AS WELL, 72 DEGREES RIGHT NOW. SO WE HAVE A WARM, UNSTABLE AIR MASS THAT THESE STORMS ARE GOING TO CONTINUE TO TAP INTO AS THEY MOVE ACROSS THE AREA. WE'LL CONTINUE TO SEE THAT THREAT FOR SEVERE WEATHER OVER THE NEXT SEVERAL HOURS HERE. FOR THE LATEST WARNINGS, WE'LL SEND IT BACK over over to Dave. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, just looking at those temperatures, they're actually getting warmer now uh, than they have been all day today. So, uh, again, that's near 70 already here in Birmingham. That's why we're expecting a second round to come in. Still has the potential as some warmer air and more humid air continues to work its way up from the Gulf of Mexico heading up our way. Uh, this storm here that we have, it worked through uh, from reports from when it went through Aniana. I did knock down some trees there. So, we did a report of a funnel cloud there. Uh, haven't seen any confirmed reports of a tornado yet, but did produce some at least strong winds as it moved on in. Now, into Marshall County heading up toward the Huntsville area. Uh, over towards Sneed right now. You can still see uh, the storm is still having some rotation with it right now. Uh, continuing to work its way north there, up over toward eventually the Douglas area too. And as it continues to move in, we haven't seen anything yet uh, with respect to any kind of debris, but it is producing heavy rain, uh, likely also some strong winds with it. You can see kind of swirling through there too. So uh, don't be surprised to see those winds uh, gusting 40 to 60 miles per hour potentially with that storm. The farther south we go here, you can see we do have all of these coming up still again. From parts of Chilton County, kind of closing the way into parts of southern uh, there into Shelby County now, heading over toward Talladega County as well. Uh, nothing with this, at least at this point. So uh, you can still see here the storms kind of coming through Jemison area back to Thorsby area here, Highway or Interstate 65, Highway 31, uh, about to get uh, those coming across those areas. So kind of just south of Calera, Columbiana may be impacted by those as well. Uh, tornado warning still in effect there for parts of uh, the Chilton County area. Area, heading over toward eventually the Childersburg and Sylacauga, as mentioned, 280 kind of coming through there as well. So we are continuing to watch uh, all of these storms here, uh, but looking at their rotation with them, not as impressive as they once were. Uh, but when they came through Clanton, we're starting to see some pictures, there was some damage maybe uh, with some of the storms that came up there through southern parts of Chilton County. Uh, they did produce some pretty uh, strong winds if they were likely probably a tornado. We saw the tornado debris signature showing up there as well too with these storms over there just south of kind of moving into Clanton. So uh, just outside of Clanton, maybe city center, we saw some of those. Watching these storms here coming off uh, not too far away from the Brent area here. Uh, these are going to be coming on in eventually toward uh, maybe Alabaster if they hold together. Fortunately, they're not severe, just producing some heavy rain and some hail with these. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll keep an eye on them too. Uh, they are not showing a lot of rotation with them, which is great news. Uh, but we're still going to keep an eye on all of that. And farther to the south, these storms here uh, kind of off to the west of Selma. They've also been tornadic type storms here as we've moved forward throughout uh, really the uh, last couple of hours here. As they continue to move on into the environment here, favorable for tornadoes, we'll have to watch all of them. They've been showing some uh, rotation with them. At this point, not seeing any debris but there, uh, but we can see here uh, the velocity products still showing some pretty good rotation tied in with them. So definitely need to keep an eye on all of those as we move forward here uh, throughout the rest of the late afternoon now. It's actually it's evening now, six o'clock our time. Uh, so we still have about an hour's worth of daylight here left. Uh, so so that's at least some good news as we continue to watch all these storms coming on in from the south, Sylacauga area, get ready for these to kind of move on in. And up there, again, across part of, uh, out of Blount County now, uh, this storm here going on into uh, uh, Marshall County at this point, kind of just south of Huntsville. Uh, still keeping an eye on this one here. Uh, not showing any debris showing up with this one, but we are looking at the velocity here. Let's go over to the Huntsville radar. It's probably a little bit closer, giving us a little better perspective of it here. Uh, still kind of seeing, again, uh, some pretty heavy rain, maybe some gusty winds and hail. Looking at the velocity, you're still seeing some of that uh, stronger velocity at this point, uh, but uh, not showing up any really debris uh, at this point. So still going to be watching these storms here as we go toward Douglas and Albertville area, Sneed area, still feeling the impact of all this as it came out of uh, Blunt County there. It points off to the north. So in Marshall County now, working its way farther north as well. Gadsden still looking at some light rain here, uh, which is good here. You're not seeing actually cool temperatures in the 50s to around 60 degrees. Uh, not much going on there. And real quick, going on in back to town, we're still watching these storms to the south, but really uh, the city looking pretty quiet and pretty dry out there right now. Let's go back up to Sherry and Art.
All right, Dave, thanks a lot. We want to give you a look at what we know right now in terms of damage reports we've been seeing, um, some of the areas now. We want to take a look at some damage now. This damage is over in the Moundville area right now. This is in Mulga, actually. This is live. As we can see, the fire department on the scene there, trees down across the road. Don't know how far this is extended, but certainly you can see what the storm has done to these trees in that area. And again, this is just one of the locations. This in the Mulga area. We also had a crew on the South Rosser Road. Um, and we have a crew in the Moundville area, too. We have some images from Moundville. But you can see a lot of these trees that have come down as these systems have started um, hitting some places a second time. This is Moundville, we're told. Um, there were some 20 houses damaged, but a lot of the damage light like that, shingles off of rooftops. Uh, this is in the Hale County area. Some of the damage more severe, though, as people get out and try to assess what's happening there. Um, and it, our crew, this particular person, is driving around Moundville to look at some of the other yeah. areas of damage. Absolutely. Let's take you back to that live look at that damage in the Mulga area. And you can see just trees snapped by the force of the storms that moved through the area. And as Sherry said, this is just one area. We've seen damage reports coming out of Hell, out of Tuscaloosa, out of Chilton, out of Jefferson. So. There is extensive damage throughout the area. And one thing that we were told by our storm team prior to the storm hitting today, that we will hit a series of storms that will hit in the afternoon and that we will see a number of storms like we've seen, obviously some tornadoes we believe to be confirmed tornadoes in some places throughout the day. But this would just be round one, that you would have to be on guard throughout the day because we're going to get another round later tonight, but you can see just how extensive the damage is. And in some of these areas where there are warnings, there are also, you know, more than one um, tornado uh, sighting in these communities. So Chilton County in particular is one that they are watching uh, as this system continues to move through our area. And as our crew here, I'm um, walking down this road in Mulga where um, the, the preparation has meant a lot to being able to get these crews out. Um, people knew well in advance that this system was as enhanced as it has been. So lots of crews on standby. These are um, uh, the county EMA crews, but, you know, just the, the road crews, the power company as well um, for places where there are power outages right now. Lots of trees down certainly means lots of power lines down. And Sherry, you speak to how quickly these crews have been able to move in because of that preparation, and that's what struck me as I look at some of this damage. We're looking there live. We also have a look inside the damage in Chilton County now. Well, this is that that That's cloud it. that moved through the area. That's we it, believe man. that there's a tornado that moved through earlier in the Clanton area. This is from Roger Beam. I believe that's from um, that video came there. And you can see the yeah. system moving through the area. Certainly, that is not what you wanted to, to, to witness today. We, but we got early warning that we could be seeing scenes like this. And this yeah. was not the only one. We saw them throughout the area. But that is certainly a frightening site there. Very much so. When we talked to Mayor Walt Maddox, and he has since tweeted that there were two tornadoes hovering over Tuscaloosa, and they were grateful nothing touched down, but reminding everyone that none of us are out of the woods just yet with this system of storms moving through our state. This is one that is a boat wrapped around a tree. Um, this picture given to us courtesy of the Alabama Electric Cooperative, but again, the Central Alabama Electric Cooperative grabbing this picture of a boat wrapped around a tree in Dallas County earlier today. And, and yes, and we just want to keep you uh, aware that you can just go ahead and hunker down with us. Spend the rest of the day and the evening with us because we're going to stay on top of this throughout the day. We've got our storm team meteorologists, team of reporters and photojournalists out in the field, our storm chasers out there as it's well, right there. our digital team of producers gathering information here at the station, it's all right of us working right as a unit as we look at Tuscaloosa County and what appears to be that one of those tornadoes that Mayor Watt Maddox spoke about when we talked with him live earlier. And, and what you can hear, um, thank you Derek Osborne for sharing this picture, but you can hear those sirens going off in the back because that's also what's happening. People who are in these polygons are hearing the sirens and what we're hearing from the meteorologists, if you hear those sirens, go ahead and seek shelter because these storms come with, with damage. Um, so people being safe here, but amazing, those two 
tornadoes hovering over Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa County and not touching down. Um, people grateful, but certainly we've seen damage in places just north of there where tornadoes did touch down. And our crews are trying to get back into those areas of northern, uh, north and east Jefferson County to see some of the damage that took place uh, when those tornadoes did touch the ground. And we know before the tornadoes hit here, they marched in from Mississippi across Mississippi. This is some drone video from um, Brian Infinger, I believe, Infinger there, who gave us this video. We were able to use this video from him. And this is in Whistler, Mississippi. And you can just see debris just scattered throughout the area, some of it hanging on the on the top of power lines throughout the area. Fortunately, those power lines are not down. but. Who knows where this debris came from? Because you know, with tornadoes, look at it, it's just strewn wow. throughout the area. Um, that's what happens when a tornado comes through. They pick up debris and they drop it sometimes miles away from where they even um, damage the home or the buildings. And, and we are not um, the only ones. 16 million people in the Deep South um, under the gun tonight for these, these storms. Uh, and people need to be safe and protected as you look at the type of damage this system has done in other places as it continues to march its way back into Alabama. Those are earlier images from Mississippi. We do have a crew out in the field right now um, gathering some of the, the information, looking at some of the damage we're able to see on the ground now. Yeah, we want to go to Marina Box. She is live in Amalga now to give us a sense of we were looking at some of the damage there, and you are now, Marina. Uh, tell us about what you're seeing there as we can see the crews trying to get into the area to get some of this truck damage moved to the side. Tell us what you got. Yeah, we're here on Shady Grove Road where you can see crews behind me. We have the Maytown Fire Department help. She says so the Maytown Fire Department. We're just trying to clean up the roadway. Go yes. ahead, Marina. Your so signal's talk going to some of them out. down there trying to. Spoke with some of the guys down there trying to clean up some of that debris down on the roadway. They said there's over a mile of debris clogging up that roadway. They're calling in for backup. Contacted Jefferson County who called EMA for some hand to help. They can't handle all this debris on their own. Again, they said there's about over a mile of debris still out on the roadways. They're calling in some backup for help. They've been out here for 35 to 40 minutes already trying to clean up that debris, but we'll keep you guys updated throughout the evening. They said it's going to be a long night. These guys are going to be out here for quite some time cleaning up this roadway. Reporting live here at Shady Grove Road, Marina Box. CBS. Everyone, welcome Marina 42. to the um, CBS 42 um, team of reporters. Marina, thanks a lot. We bring you here, and then we have this storm that hit throughout the area. So we're going to be busy throughout the night, as we said. We're going to be here. We've got a full team. We want to get back over to storm team meteorologist Dave wow. Nussbaum now. Yeah, busy day today. Going to be a busy night, Sherry and Art, as we continue looking at uh, still some storms with tornado warnings here coming across part of the area here, not too far away from the Shelby County area here, heading to Talladega, Coosa counties as well, and still part of Chilton County. Uh, still watching some of these storms to kind of work in the way away from Jemison in the Thorsby area too, uh, but still have the potential for some of these storms to show some rotation here. As with that storm there, looking at the latest velocity product, does it show kind of a broad or a wide uh, uh, rotation? which is, uh, again, some good news and not seeing any debris from those uh, rotations or th the tornadoes, at least at that point, which is good. But still have, a, again, a wide variety of storms. They're kind of a little bit weaker now. As you go over toward Blount County here, heading points far to the north, still watching this storm here. Uh, likely produced, uh, did knock down some trees near the Aniana area. Uh, still producing some pretty hefty rain with this as it moves on in. Uh, not seeing any more uh, significant, uh, any kind of tornado debris damage. But uh, right along here, 270. We do have some rotation showing up with that. Uh, at this point, though, not indicating any debris on our debris tracker, which is good news. Uh, but nonetheless, though, we are going to continue looking at uh, the threat here for uh, this storm and some others may potentially try to get a little bit better uh, for us here, or better organized, I should say, here. Uh, but at least it's not uh, that classic looking supercell thunderstorm we traditionally see here uh, a lot across the area we've seen so far for throughout the day today. Really, across much of the region here, again, there's tornado warning. Storms are watching to our south, watching some severe storms here in central part of uh, Mississippi that will be coming in on later, too. And you can see live look there over in the Mulga area are dealing with, again, storm cleanup with all the tree damage. Just, uh, we talked about earlier 
that's storing the mood right over top of Mulga. Uh, so again, it looks like significant tree damage there. The fire crews, emergency responders, thanks guys for doing such a great job uh, getting everything cleaned up out there. And these crews, I'm impressed. They've been getting this, these roads open quickly, within less than an hour after a tornado has moved on through. So uh, they're doing it really good with getting all those uh, cleanups continuing across the area. Heavy rain moving on in parts of the north here from Coleman back to Huntsville, causing some flash flooding concerns across the northern part of the state right now. Uh, but you can see here, though, uh, with all the tornado warnings, a few of them down to the south here back into Mississippi, that whole line is gone severe. Let me go ahead and show you here uh, what that line looks like, at least at this point right now. And as that continues to move on into Mississippi, uh, it's kind of working its way on in toward Jackson, at least at this point, and it points all the way to the south. Now, right now, there's no tornadoes with this, but it's going to be moving into an environment that's a little bit more favorable for tornadoes. Uh, so that's why we have to watch to see if individual storms along this line uh, have the chance to do that. But if they don't, they're likely going to be producing 70, 80 mile per hour winds. Can't be ruled out with some of those storms as they move on in. Eventually, here, uh, we have about a little less than an hour of daylight is still expected. So uh, that line is going to come in as we get into tonight. So it's going to be, it's moving here in the central Mississippi rail on the I-55 corridor, uh, but it's going to take a while till it gets into Birmingham, potentially here uh, in the next six hours or later. Uh, so it's going to be a while uh, until we get that line coming on in here. But we still have some of these storms to worry about. I'm not seeing anything overly concerning with them right now uh, locally here. Uh, but as we take a look at the radar back here at home and kind of focus in on some of the storms here off to the north. Uh, we're still watching this one that came uh, out of Aniana. Did produce maybe uh, did produce some damage there, some trees down. Uh, they did report a funnel cloud in the Aniani area, so there's the chance there. So northern Blount County, heading parts of the north there, Marshall County, you can see a little bit of not only some heavy, heavy rain falling, uh, but potentially here some strong winds. Uh, at least at this point, you can see the strongest winds kind of just uh, kind of south of Douglas, southeast there of Snead, right along Highway 278, seems to be where some of those are at least at this point. And for rotation, that's right where that rotation is at this time. So uh, not seeing at least here uh, any kind of debris showing up. So it looks like it's just some of those winds maybe knocking down some of the trees. So we need to, need to be aware of that and watch out for that there uh, at this point. But as we go back to the south here, uh, I'm going to kind of focus on those storms there back down here uh, south in parts of Shelby County. We're still going to be watching some of these for potentially with tornadoes here. Silicaga, just some rain for you back to Childersburg here. Here and back toward the Columbiana area. So, uh, Griffin, I know we're watching some of these here. Yep. Things are, I don't want to say they're calming down because right when we say that, things start to ramp back <laughs> up again. Yeah, that's uh, true. But at least at this point, they uh, hopefully would be raining themselves out, but there's still an environment here for they continue to intensify. Yeah, overall, the environment, I would say, is still pretty supportive, but locally speaking, I think the storms are kind of destructively interfering with each other, especially with those two cells that we have uh, tracking now through uh, northeastern Chilton County. County into the southern Talladega County. Uh, when you have two cells that are kind of too close together, they can kind of interfere with each other. So thankfully, uh, any what we normally look for with a tornado, uh, not really much in, as much of an indication there. Even though the tornado warning is still in effect, you still need to be sheltered in place if you're within that tornado warning polygon. Also, some more good news with that Blunt County storm. Uh, the Weather Service Office in Huntsville has decided to just go with a severe thunderstorm warning for Franklin County. So that's some good news that we're kind of getting a little bit of a lull in the action, certainly uh, not as active as it was when we had uh, that really strong potential tornado that came through eastern Tuscaloosa County. And let's take a look at the dew points. That's really one thing we really have to look at closely with severe weather situations, how high the dew points are. And the higher they get, uh, the more active weather we usually have, the more unstable the atmosphere is. And right now, we're sitting in the mid-60s. That's certainly not as bad as it could be. It certainly could be a lot higher. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason why things are kind of calming down a bit. So let's take a moment to take you through the hour by hour. Over the next two hours, still probably going to be seeing maybe a little bit of a lull in the action. You see maybe some cells that could try to form, but certainly not as, uh, not as widespread as what we looked at uh, earlier this evening. Once we get to around 10 p.m., that's when the squall line finally starts to come through at around 10 o'clock tonight. And there's still some tornado potential within that, but it's not going to be as... Uh 
it's not going to be as hard to, to find, you know. It, it, with discrete supercells, they just sort of pop up in random locations. But within the squall line, it'll be easier to track any potential uh, areas of rotation. Through around midnight tonight, that's when it'll be coming through places like Coleman and Tuscaloosa. After midnight, it finally clears much of West Alabama and crosses over I-65. Uh, at around 1, 2 o'clock this morning. And then it tracks through East Alabama. Can't completely give an all clear for everyone until around 4 o'clock in the morning. But as soon as the good news is, as soon as that squall line comes in, you're in the clear and you don't have to worry much about any further severe weather. And then you can finally go to bed. But until that time, we just got to have our guard up for more of those future thunderstorms to potentially come through. So, Sarah, if you're ready, I'll let you go. Uh, I'll let you have a breakdown of the radar, what's happening now, Sarah. Yeah, that's right, Griffin. Looking at radar, Right now, we're seeing the storms that are tracking through Talladega County. That has weakened, so the tornado warning really going to expire here for Talladega County. But we're still watching the far eastern corner of Shelby County for the potential of that storm to strengthen. Also, keeping a close eye on this one just west of Selma, this is towards Perry County. We'll watch this uh, really thunderstorm right now. It is a uh, listed as a tornado warning, but not seeing much indication of rotation at the moment. But that could change here as this nears Chilton County. So that's what we'll be watching as that one moves a little bit farther north. Also, we have an active tornado warning for Tupelo, Mississippi. That's going to track towards the Huntsville market. So out of our area in northern, uh, going to stay to the north of Marion County. So folks in Marion County, you do not have to worry about that particular cell. But we're still watching what's back to uh, back through Mississippi because that's what's going to near our area over the next several hours here. So we have active severe thunderstorm warnings through Mississippi. That's the flashing orange boxes that you see on your screen. Also, the area shaded in yellow here. This is the tornado watch that is set to expire at 7, but the Storm Prediction Center is expecting to extend that later. So we're likely going to have a new tornado watch that will probably pop up on your phone here within the next half an hour or so. Also, we have the flash flood warnings. That's what you're seeing in the red there. And our ground is really saturated. With the storms that moved through earlier, unfortunately, as the next line moves through, we're really going to have to worry about trees toppling down fairly easily just because the soil is so saturated. So with the severe thunderstorm warnings with winds that are going to gust upwards of 40, 50, even 60 miles per hour, that could easily topple down trees later this evening. So that's going to be something we're going to watch as the line nears West Alabama by around 10 o'clock. We're going to see the line near uh, the 2059 corridor. And then from there, we'll see it continue to sink towards East Alabama after midnight. We'll give the all clear in West Alabama around 2 a.m., continuing to push off to the east into Gadsden, Aniston, Talladega, Clanton around 2, and then exiting East Alabama somewhere between about 3 and 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. I want to show you the future wind gusts too because it's definitely possible that we have really gusty winds later this evening. But looking at our temperatures right now, we're in the upper 60s, low 70s. So warm, unstable air still in place, specifically in West Alabama, Moundville, Tuscaloosa in the low 70s right now. So really warm, soupy air out there, still conducive for when these thunderstorms to move through. They're moving into an environment that is prime and ripe for the potential for severe weather. Looking at our future wind gusts, by 9 o'clock, our winds could be gusting 40 miles per hour. So regardless of whether or not you have a severe thunderstorm move through the through your area. If you saw a lot of rainfall earlier today, it's top possible we could have some trees and uh, damage from downed trees later this evening. Around midnight, look at our wind gusts up to 40, 50, even close to 60 miles per hour through Jefferson County. So we are going to have really strong winds as this front nears the area and these storms move through. Winds calm by tomorrow, still going to be pretty breezy throughout the day tomorrow as cooler air starts to move on in here. So we are still in for a long haul here with strong winds overnight tonight. Possible you wake up to uh, pretty widespread power outages will be possible for the remainder of the evening. Now we'll send it back over to Dave, or we'll, tass, we'll toss it over to uh, Art and Sherry right now.
All right, Sarah Canty, thanks a lot. As we keep you abreast of what's going on, we've got our team of reporters and photojournalists spread out throughout the area. Uh, here on the screen, we have a, we're going to get to Mount Olive. We just saw those images. Our Catherine Mazone is out there. But you can see how widespread this mm -hmm. has been as it started in Dallas County and it's moved into Tuscaloosa County and then parts of Hale, um, Jefferson County. Um, and, and, and still, um, where we are seeing the damage and the type of damage we're seeing, we are not getting getting um, reports of injuries uh, right now and that's and that's a good thing with all of the warning we had you're looking at some some of the damage that we we are getting in um, off of our digital and our social media pages that one in Clanton yeah out of Clanton and we want to say courtesy of uh, Roger Bean thank you for this extensive damage in Clanton this is around County Rose 24 and 37 you see that house gone there other mm -hmm. debris throughout the area. This house completely gone, and this car, this truck, just um, just thrown in that area. And you see people in shelters as well, or or hovering to get away from the storm. And, <laughs> indeed, and we've got shelters running. The shelters running at the bottom of the screen, so that you can find some of those safe places to go from the storm. That's very important. We want to get to Catherine Mazone, who's in Mount Olive, where they've had some damage tonight. Catherine, tell us what you're seeing. Sherry Art, there is a lot of damage here. We are on Mount Olive Road, and that's where we met Deborah Murray, who is over here after a couple of trees fell on her house and her neighbors' houses. Tell me, what was it like when you were going through this at the moment, Deborah? Well, we had been watching uh, the TV and watching to make, you know, to see tracking the, uh, the storm, and we knew the roads and the area it was coming, and we knew it was going to be close, and we were we knew it was going to go uh, Fieldstown and uh, 65 and so that's a little behind us but we weren't sure how what the northern track was going to be so we were watching we were uh, in our house and we were looking uh, out the windows and uh, uh, on the front side of our house uh, that it, it began to rain real hard and it, and it got dark but not super bad you know we just knew it was the storm was coming and then on the back side of the house looked out the windows and it became pitch dark and then we started hearing debris and you could tell it's trees we started hearing trees hit things so we went to the hallway where it was safe and uh and it was over i don't know 30 seconds or something it, it went really really quick and um you know we just it was just hard rain and uh, I don't even know if I heard wind. I mean, your, your brain's kind of thinking, you know, you, you might, I know my heart started beating a little faster, but I never felt really scared, but, but I knew I was, I mean, I'm, I'm, I knew I was gonna be okay, you know. Yeah, and you've got, tell me what you uh, got here with you. I, ha I, I have uh, my brother and uh, my boss, uh, Ron Hughes from Hughes Printing. Both of them came uh, around the same time and they both brought tarps that we could put on our house and share with our neighbors if we need to. Uh, my husband's already taken one of the big tarps over there and I've got these two. And uh, all the neighbors on the street, everybody's coming out to check because the people on the other side of our road, uh, they were all fine. But all the houses on our side of the road uh, is where the tornado went through and, the, and they, it blew big trees down big oak trees, big pecan trees, and they fell on our houses. Yeah, and there are several ambulances out here, as and, and you mentioned. It, it, there are ambulances here, but they were just as a precaution. So far, as far as I know, and I talked to them, nobody needs any help, but they were here just in case. I know there's a lot of power lines down, a lot of trees down, blocking roads, and, um, but you know, thank God we're all, we're all safe. Our stuff's not strong to the next state, and, uh, you know, we're here and we have family and, you know, we don't know what's going to come tonight, but we'll just, uh, you know, have faith and be ready and see what happens. And one of the things you mentioned that stuck out to me was your neighbors and the outpouring of support just immediately. Everyone was outside making sure everyone was OK. Tell me, I mean, are all of these people, I mean, there are tons of people in this parking lot. You can't see, but there are tons. Do they all live in this area? Or are they uh, here to help? They are probably live down some of these side roads or coming in. On our road, I think there's 11 houses. It's a dead-end street with 11 houses. And then as soon as it, everything went away and we were going out and checking, then all of a sudden all the neighbors were coming out and checking on everybody. Because, like I said, half the road, half the street was fine. Half the street had tree damage. And, uh, and so everybody started checking. A lot of these folks, I know uh, one family that came a while ago, they were coming to check on 
their mother who lives across the road from us. So people are coming to check on their family. And, uh, and then probably a lot of these folks, they live down uh, Shady Grove Drive or live, live further down in Mount Olive. So they're just trying to, you know, see what happens. I know I'm, I'm waiting on my neighbor. She's a nurse and she's coming from the hospital and uh, to check on her place. And, you know, we just, uh, everybody's taking care of everybody and checking on everybody. Yeah, it's really neat out here. Uh, but just to take note, there is a roadblock. You can't get farther than, than Shady Grove. And a lot of the folks who do live down Shady Grove are unable to access their homes at this time. Right, due, due to power lines down and trees down. And so once, probably once they get the trees gone and, the, and then they'll certainly uh, secure those uh, live wires, then they'll open it up for people to go through. So what's next for you, Deborah? You have these tarps, you contacted your insurance company? Uh, I was in the process of, of contacting them and it's, they said it'd be like a 15 minute you know, call because you have to go through the automated processes and, and then every, my family and, and friends were calling and my brother and my boss were bringing stuff so I just put that on hold just for a minute. But I've taken pictures while it was still daylight of all of our damage and our neighbors on each side of us damaged so that we'll have it for insurance purposes. And, uh, and then I'll call the insurance in, in just a little bit. Well, we certainly wish you the best in the recovery process. Thank you so much Thank for you. speaking with us, Deborah. And of course, there are a lot of folks out here who have a lot of work ahead of them. We'll continue to take, take a look at this damage and send you video as well as kind of take you through what it looks like here in Mount Olive coming up. For now, I'm live in Mount Olive. Catherine Mazone for CBS 42 News, local coverage you can count on. Catherine, before you go, because you said there are a lot of people over there, and I see the wind picking up a little bit. Folks want to get back to their property. Are the conditions feeling like they're deteriorating at all? That's a good question, Sherry, because it does feel like the wind is picking up, but there's blue skies. There are patches of blue sky, so it's really hard to read the weather out here right now. It's dry, and it seems as though uh, it's, it's a pleasant afternoon, but then we also have all of these other clouds coming in, and you don't know what is looming ahead with the darker areas of the sky. So people are definitely on alert here. They don't know what's to come, but they're trying to prepare for anything that comes. All right, that's our Catherine Mazzone live from Mount Olive. As you can see, some of the uh, frontline workers, the uh, first responders there on the scene, fire trucks and police and EMA also out there trying to help those people in Mount Olive. And one thing that um, Deborah Murray said, the, the woman, the homeowner there that, that Catherine talked about, she says the best thing about it is that no one was hurt. And that's a recurring theme so far. We're not hearing about any injuries at this point, major. People getting that warning ahead of time and this not necessarily springing up on you as you look at some of this damage uh, as that uh, that's a piece of a tree into the power lines up there. But, you know, that's what we're hearing from the EMA, um, from some city leaders as well, that people have been in those shelters before we went to this live shot. We showed you one of those storm shelters where there were lots of people inside. And again, this is this system is hitting the deep south. A lot of people facing this type of severe weather. Deborah Murray also said, and I, I think, you know, we've been telling people get your tornado safety plan, your severe weather plan in place, and how she also has that information for her insurance company, and she's standing by. And we don't always think about that part of the severe weather plan, but it certainly is a part of the plan. Yeah, that neighbor there at Mount Olive certainly taking all the precautions and doing the things necessary to uh, recover from the storm in short order. And what we've seen throughout this area and other areas as well is just how quickly uh, EMA has responded, how quickly the fire department has been on the scene, how quickly they've been able to remove trees from the area. We're looking at power lines here. We know that there is power out in certain areas, but Alabama Power also prepared to move in to try to restore electricity to those areas that lost power from the storms. And this, this is something that moved in this afternoon around one o'clock this afternoon. We're about more than five and a half hours in since it first hit today. 
and we know we're just getting into it. Not even finished with the first wave. Got a second wave coming tonight. A couple of hours ago, Alabama Power did tweet that they had 9,100 uh, power outages. Waiting to see some updated information from them as the system has moved through um, Alabama and continues to move through. Some people hearing um, lots of rain and thunder and seeing lots of lightning as I take a peek at our radar over there. Um, we've got a tornado warning that's in, in place until 7 o'clock tonight for some areas. Uh, the storm team, uh, the watch remains into effect until 7 o'clock this evening. Um, and the CBS 42 storm team certainly keeping an eye on what's happening because we are pretty much in this mode until the wee hours of tomorrow morning, close to 4 a.m. Yeah, we're looking at Mount Olive here. We're going to give you a look at some of the other damage throughout the area. And we were showing you some pictures also from, uh, Mount, uh, from Mount Olive. We were showing you pictures from Moundville. But we want to get back over to CBS 42 Storm Team Meteorologist Dave Nussbaum now as we continue to track the storms moving through the area on this Wednesday afternoon. Dave. Yeah, right now uh, a little bit of lull in severe weather. That's good. Don't put your guard down, though. We're not done yet, though, with this here. Again, at the moment, no tornado warnings. Uh, we are still watching some strong thunderstorms, especially down to the south near Selma, toward the Montgomery area. They'll be working the way off here to the north and east. So it could be clipping potentially here near the Alabaster Brent area as well, too. Heading eventually toward Aniston. Now, that was the original storm. Fortunately, it's not severe anymore. That's some good news. But if you notice here, often in the parts of central Mississippi, we still have some severe thunderstorms out there. That uh, is the actual squall line. That maybe is a switch over to a national look at the radar here. And uh, if I can get this to run up, let me jump over here real quick just to turn this uh, back on. But th that was is exactly what we're talking about is part two is going to be coming our way here. And that is going to be that line of thunderstorms you see there working its way through Mississippi. Now, as that moves on in, that is actually going to be coming on in. But after tonight, we're talking a couple hours from now, 10, 11, 12 o'clock, as Sarah was showing you, wind gusts are going to start picking up with that line as it comes in. It's going to move into an environment that's a more favorable for development for severe thunderstorms including the chance for tornadoes may be embedded in that line. Right now, I don't see any warnings right in there, so that's some good news. All the warnings you see flashing right now are just severe thunderstorm warnings. So we're talking winds of 60 miles per hour, roughly, uh, maybe one-inch size hail out there, too. Uh, but all the storms, the heavy rain continue to work its way to the north from Coleman to Huntsville. Fairly quiet here in town. Some storms kind of moving on in toward parts of Sumter County, heading on in toward Lamar County, Fayette County, Tuscaloosa County, and points now here back to the south, again, over toward Dallas County, Marengo County, Getting some pretty good rain out there as well, too. But going back here to the Birmingham area, and looking at our radar, I want to show you what we have kind of coming in. Again, downtown looking pretty quiet. Some light rain area here over toward Mulga, Mount Olive. We were just showing you damage there. Remember that tornado we had kind of ramped up that produced probably about three tornadoes in its lifespan here. That's the one that eventually was, was down in Tuscaloosa County as well, too. Uh, but kind of zooming around the area here, we'll show you that uh, the entire area does show, again, we do have some scattered showers out there, some stronger storms coming over toward the Silicaga area here. So we're still watching a little with some strong thunderstorms here, uh, but these are coming through Wilsonville, heading toward Harpersville area. And Childersburg, uh, nothing with this here. Uh, we're not seeing any tornado warnings with them right now, which is good news. Uh, but Excuse me, uh, looking at the uh, velocity product here, uh, you can see that uh, we do have just a little bit of some rotation trying to come in with those. Nothing like it was before, which is good news. So uh, we're not seeing anything significantly rotating right now. I'd love to say the atmosphere has been totally worked over and the storms are going to be weakening out there. Unfortunately, we still have some stronger winds coming in before that actual front comes through the area. So, with that in mind, we are still have to watch all these storms the rest of the afternoon, evening hours and into tonight. But Wilsonville, very heavy rain coming in for your area here. To. This storm is going to continue tracking its here off, way off to the northeast and kind of tracking it out for you there. Uh, looks like Wilsonville there in about five minutes, the southern part of that storm coming through. Uh, Harpersville around 18 minutes, Childersburg 18 minutes there uh, to 17 minutes, Arc right around 20 minutes, uh, Bella Vista around 25 minutes. So it's still going to be working its way on off to the northeast there and still producing some pretty heavy rain. Kind of moving just off to the right now west of Talladega itself, but into Talladega County, of course, still dealing with all of this Childersburg area, Harpersville. Uh, uh, kind of seeing all that. Chelsea area, 
just some light rain coming on in toward Vestavia, Birmingham. Really not too much happening right there, uh, which is good news. But that's probably the strongest storm we have here now. Heading this way toward Pelham and Alabaster, a uh, pretty hefty storm coming on in here. This is not severe. Uh, still producing some heavy rain with it, too. Uh, kind of giving you an idea here what we're looking at with that storm track. Uh, looks like Alabaster in about 12 minutes, an uh, additional part of that storm. We do with some rain right now coming on in. Uh, Colmont, nine minutes there. Heading over toward Pelham, around 16 minutes for you. Hoover, if it holds together, coming on in there right about, say, in the 30 minutes. So we'll keep an eye on this one here as well. Uh, but it's not showing any rotation, which is good news. Uh, showing you the velocity product there. Uh, nothing to worry about. It, it just has an interesting look to it, uh, but nothing organized with respect to severe weather. So Pelham, Alabaster, possibly getting on in toward Hoover area here uh, as we get into the next 30 minutes. So don't be surprised to see some heavy rain. And it'll be very heavy rain. I mean, the rain's been falling, if you've noticed, it's coming down really, really heavy. Uh, we picked up over an inch of rain officially here in Birmingham today. We had a deficit going into the month uh, just two days ago, and now we've surpassed that deficit. So uh, it doesn't take long, you know, with any kind of storms here in the spring. Or, well, technically it's still winter. Spring doesn't happen until Saturday. But nonetheless, though, we're still dealing with, again, all of this moving on through. So we'll continue to watch all these storms here uh, coming into the area, but fortunately nothing here is severe, which is good news. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have on our cameras around the area. Uh, right now here in downtown, uh, things are looking pretty quiet. Just have the cloudy skies out there. Nothing too significant showing up, which is great news for us here. Over in the Tuscaloosa area, uh, we are looking at, again, from active weather earlier, now just some cloud cover here right now. As you can see here going down Bryan Drive, things are looking pretty good. Much calmer, quieter weather for you at this point, too. Heading over to Gadsden. I did have some storms come by near your area. Some low clouds here. Temperatures here have been really 59, 60, 61 degrees. Kind of cold, still foggy here. What that basically tells me is that you're more stable air coming on into the Gadsden area. So that's some good news. That means uh, you're not dealing with any severe weather up here. Uh, however, don't put your guard down. Again, we have that line that's got to come through later. This still could produce some problems. Over in Anniston, again, still uh, checking it out here. We have our vulture friends there. They don't seem to be bothered by anything. But notice <laughs> With the tower being up high, the feathers really blowing around. That's oh, yeah. those strong winds coming on in. So that's what's fueling all these storms coming out of the south. So we're still looking at all that. And finally, we'll go over toward the Summerton area here. And you can see here, still some rain coming down there with the camera er, getting some raindrops on it. But some cloudy skies overall. So not looking too, too bad here across our area right now, which is some good news. Uh, but we're still going to be looking at the latest here uh, with, again, the threat for some of that rain. Dave, I think we've got a new tornado warning for Coleman County. We do. Okay. Yeah, let me uh, zoom see in if on I can that. get this to pop in up there. Uh, but um, right now, though, we are still looking at roughly here I'm across pull the that area. Up real fast. Uh, there we go, up toward Coleman County. Okay, there we have it. I see it now. Uh, let me pull the radar down here. Uh, this storm here, okay, yeah. uh, fairly small storm, but you're right. Uh, we do have this coming on in. Just about looks like it to go right over top of uh, the heart of Coleman at this point. Uh, kind of. Southeast there, or south weather, southwest, I guess, a good hope, off to the west of Dodge City. Uh, rotation? Uh, yeah, there's some uh, pretty good rotation starting to show up there. Uh, there's winds as well, kind of coming in pretty strong, too. Uh, not seeing any debris at this point, which is good news. Uh, but yeah, watching this one here, Coleman County, so just kind of the northern part of the area now, moving fairly quickly now. Uh, with the storm here. Uh, so, as kind of get an idea for you here, just we'll take this uh, point here and show you uh, in about seven minutes, Coleman heading up your way. So, tornado warning, need to take shelter now. Uh, this is, is showing some rotation, although not as strong as it has been, but uh, again, still need to watch out for this. South Vinemont, about 10 minutes. Falkville, around 20 minutes. Ava, around 21 minutes. Uh, so, we're still going to keep an eye on this one here for you. Uh, with uh, that tornado warning in effect. So if you're living in the Coleman area, Good Hope area, South Vimont, need to take shelter immediately right now. Lowest level of your home. Again, interior closet, bathroom, basement, the best place to go if you have one. Uh, again, out of mobile home anyway is the best place to be at this point too. So again, uh, we still have, again, that tornado warning until 7.15. Actually, a flood watch, you see that until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. with some heavy rain expected too to come on in. But that does go until 7.15. Current time is 6.47. Uh, so we still have some time to watch this one here. Uh, but uh, that is definitely what we're keeping an eye on there with the uh, storms continue to come on in. So Coleman County, again, tornado warning here until 715. We're still going to keep an eye on this one here. Storms off to the west of that, pretty heavy near Carbon Hill right along I-22. Then Jasper uh, coming on in from Walker County area there. Uh, this... Uh, 
It'll be worth watching too. Again, maybe some weak rotation showing up there. Uh, but at least at this point, though, uh, heading up toward Double Springs, Addison, just get ready for some very heavy rain. Maybe some gusty winds tied in with that. Uh, but we still have again the one tornado warning still left on the on the. Uh, Books here, this new one uh, coming on in for Coleman County. So I'll uh, be watching to see how this one uh, plays out here. We have not had really any severe weather up here yet today. So uh, again, there's uh, been a lot of rain up here, heavy rain falling, uh, so causing some flooding issues. It concerns earlier today, too. Uh, but still going to keep an eye on all this. Still, maybe some small hail mixed in with this one as well. Again, good hope around two minutes. Coleman there right around, say, seven minutes. Vinemont about 12, and Ava there right around, say, about uh, 21 minutes with that one. So so still going to watch this one here. I, again, the rotation with it, it is showing some starting to get maybe a little better organized with this one. Uh, if there is a tornado, it's likely going to be, to be rain wrapped. So we do need to be prepared for that one as well, too. So uh, we'll continue watching that one here uh, as it sits just off to the north of us. But right now, that is the only tornado warning we have across the area here. Uh, otherwise, we're just watching some other strong storms coming out of Mississippi. Gradually, we'll start seeing this uh, coming on in from Mississippi. So we'll have more on that in a bit. Right now, let's check in with Sarah and see what you've got there. Yeah, Dave, I want to go over the tornado warning that we have right now in effect for Coleman County. This includes South Vinemont, <clears throat> Coleman, Good Hope, right along the I-65 corridor, stretching along Alabama 278 or US 278. There, we're going to zoom in to show you where this possible tornado could be moving through right now. So. State Route 157, so right through downtown Coleman and points to the east right now. You guys need to be getting into your safe place. Anyone west of Coleman, you guys are in the clear, so towards Baldwin and Pine Hill right now, the center of circulation is to your east, so you're fine. If you're in Baldwin or Pine Hill, you're just seeing torrential downpours right now, possibly even some hail. For folks in East Point, this is tracking towards you. Pleasant view as well. You have a few minutes here to get into your safe place, as well as State Route 69 that tracks through East Point and then up uh, towards Pleasant View. You guys need to be in your safe place. County Road 1. 1319, State Route 157, and State Route 74. Get into your safe place. If you have a basement, that's the best place to be. Get into, if you don't have a basement, lowest level that you can get to, interior most room. So a uh, hallway closet, uh, interior closet, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible, or a bathroom. That is your best place to be right now. Smithdale, Nor Northwood, South Vinemont, you guys need to be in your safe place right now. Stretching a little bit east to give you a little bit more time uh, to prepare right here. County Road 1613 in Coleman County. County Road 1464. 1608. All need to be in your safe place right now. If you have family up in Coleman County, tell them to get into their safe place because we have an active tornado warning in effect right now through Coleman County, including Good Hope. Giving you a broad picture of what's going on uh, to our north right now, we have flash flood warnings as well. So here's the current tornado warning, and then these boxes are the flash flood warnings. The reason we're seeing flash flooding is because these storms are basically tracking over the same area like a train on the track. We're seeing these heavy downpours just consistently going over 278 through Addison. So if you are traveling through Winston County right now, through Double Springs, Addison, and even into Coleman County right now, flash flooding is dangerous. You do not want to be driving with this. That is very dangerous and a life-threatening situation as far as flash flooding goes through Addison. So do not get on the roadways right now because of the potential for flash flooding. See this heavy rain just consistently moving over the same area? That's why we have that flash flood warning in effect. This is just south of Double Springs, so the heaviest rainfall is south of Double Springs along 278 here. I want to show you the big picture. We have the active tornado warning for Coleman that is going to lift up out of our area within the next 30 minutes here, but get in your safe place if you're in Coleman. We have a tornado warning 
down through Selman, Selma right now and active and no other active warnings in our area right now so only the active warning in Coleman. Looking off to our west though we still do have severe thunderstorm warnings in Mississippi. We have through Columbus, Starkville under severe thunderstorm warning right now. That is what is going to be moving towards our area within the next several hours here. So the main line should arrive between about 8 and 10 p.m. so not done with the severe weather threat just yet. Along the 2059 corridor, we are going to have strong storms pop up within the next few hours here, continuing to push into East Alabama after about midnight. In East Alabama, between about 2 and 5 a.m., that's going to see that's going to be the time when we have heavy downpours, strong winds as well. And then we'll finally be done with this around 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Future wind gusts looking pretty impressive here. By around 9 o'clock, we're seeing winds gusting above 40 miles per hour. That's going to be possible that we see some trees fall, tree damage likely this evening if these winds do in fact gust to near 60 miles per hour around midnight all ahead of a front that's going to move through overnight tonight and we'll see the winds slowly back down here by the time we get to tomorrow morning. I'll send it back over to Griffin right now. All right, thank you, Sarah, very much for that breakdown. want to obviously turn our attention to the active storm out there that is currently in Coleman County. This, uh, we had a little bit of a lull in the action, but it only lasted about 15 minutes before we had another tornado warning that was issued. So this tornado warning in effect for much of Coleman County. There's a good area of rotation right here. Looking up to the north, uh, we've got a lot of really strong winds that are coming through downtown Coleman right now. If we query some of these, it's up to 80 mile per hour winds. Wow, tornado or not, there are some really powerful winds that are coming into Coleman right now. Uh, so it doesn't matter if there's a tornado down or not, 80 miles per hour. It doesn't matter if it's rotating or in a straight line. That's enough to cause damage. Uh, so again, this is mostly going to be, I would say, impacting the eastern suburbs of Coleman. You go towards East Point. You go down Old Hansville Highway, down uh, Highway 31, and down 278 to the east of Coleman. That's where a lot of these really strong winds are coming in. Once again, on the order of 70 to 80 mile per hour winds that we could be seeing here. There's a little bit of broad rotation here, but like I mentioned, it really doesn't matter if this is in a straight line or if it's rotating. 80 miles per hour is still 80 miles per hour. So all the more reason to take this storm seriously. Just to just to check just in case there, the debris indicator. I'm not really seeing much here. I mean, it's kind of noisy, getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of everything showing up there, but uh, not really much of any, not, not really a cohesive tornado debris signature up there. But still, you need to take the storm seriously. It looks like the rain's lightening up a little bit in Good Hope. The winds were really uh, whipping out there about 10 minutes ago. Most of the main core of those winds are now lifting northeast. Uh, moving about like this, moving like that up to the northeast of Coleman. So uh, if you're in the eastern suburbs of Coleman, the rain's coming down torrentially hard. The winds are howling out there, potentially on the order of 70 to 80 miles per hour. So just stay sheltered for a little bit longer. Wait for this storm to pass. Uh, let me check the uh, chat room, see how fast this is moving. Moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. So let's draw the storm track out for you. Northeast 35, about like that. Uh, this is in the, once again, the northern half of our viewing area. Most of the northern half of the viewing area has been pretty quiet today. Uh, this is the furthest north we've had a tornado warning issued today. Uh, that's go, except for, with the exception of Blunt County, of course. This will be moving towards Bailyton, and it'll arrive in about 21 minutes. It's right now 6:56 p.m., so that puts it in Bailyton at around 7:15, uh, and that's going to be again the northeastern corner of uh, Coleman County. That's the reflectivity that you're seeing there. That's showing how hard it's raining out there. Uh, but the wind velocity really tells the story. So there's a little bit of rotation there. Uh, we have the outbound winds going that way and we have the inbound winds going like that. And it's not nearly as focused as some of the other uh, areas of rotation that we've seen today. But it, it, it doesn't have, it does, again, it doesn't matter if it's a tornado or if it's a straight line. 80 miles per hour is 80 miles per hour. And that is now crossing over 278 in downtown Coleman. Now, we don't have a camera to show you here, but we can show you some of these wind speeds that are showing up on radar. Once again, 86 miles per hour, 77 miles per hour, 73 miles per hour. Uh, there's, there's a chance that we could be seeing some damage happening here up in Coleman County. 
Uh, so just stay put a little bit longer. Uh, if you're in the western part of Coleman County, if you're near Smith Lake, this is not going to be impacting you. This is well past of you, uh, well past you. If you're in Smith Lake, uh, also if you're in Dodge City, this is also well off to the north of you. Looks like Good Hope. Um, we can pretty much give you an all clear from this particular storm. Of course, the the morning polygon continues. The rain's still coming down pretty hard, but it looks like most of those really strong winds are now to the northeast of Good Hope. This is the bare and severe wind product. This kind of helps highlight where exactly those strongest winds are showing up, kind of looking under the hood of the thunderstorm. And it's closing in on, on places like East Point right now. Uh, looks like most of it is, well, if you're in the western suburbs of Coleman, especially if you're west of 65, uh, you don't have much to worry about here. This is all going to be passing just to the east of you. So we'll stick with this just a little bit longer. Uh, I'll keep switching back and forth between products to see if we can see anything. Uh, maybe a little bit of returns of the debris indicator, but that's not, yeah, that's not the most well-defined signature. I'll put it that way. We saw, you know, uh, a, basically a bullseye that showed up on radar with the tornado that came through eastern Tuscaloosa County. Uh, and this is this certainly could be a lot worse. Uh, it certainly could look a lot worse, but it's not all that impressive. Uh, but. It doesn't matter. Winds, 80 mile per hour wind is an 80 mile per hour wind. I know I sound like a broken record here, but still all the more reason to take the storm seriously. Here's the path that this storm took. This originated uh, back on the eastern shores of Smith Lake, really got going there towards Dodge City, and then tracked up to the northeast, and now it's moving through places on the eastern side of Coleman, uh, crossing over 278 right now. So, uh, that's the main storm we're watching. Let me zoom out a little bit more, give you a brief overview of what else is happening out there. We got another storm that uh, is kind of worth watching yet again down to the south towards Selma. Uh, it seems to be, that seems to be where all the storms we've had originate from, for the most part, uh, down towards Selma. But thankfully, that warning that you see there now up in Coleman County, that's the only active tornado warning that we have in our area. Uh, we don't have anything in Jefferson County, Tuscaloosa County. There are some downpours out there, especially to the north of downtown. Uh, but everything that you see here, <clears throat> with the exception of that Coleman County storm, is uh, non-severe. Zooming out a little bit farther. So the squall line appears to be moving in a little bit more closer. Uh, we've got a ton of severe thunderstorm warnings that are popping up along that squall line. But fortunately, uh, no, tor no tornado warnings that are really showing up along that squall line over in Mississippi. Uh, it looks like it's kind of transitioning into maybe a straight-lined wind threat, which you still need to take seriously, but it's going to be a little bit easier to track that because it's not like you're playing whack-a-ball with a bunch of different supercells. This is all just one cohesive line that will be sweeping through uh, all at once. It's now 7 p.m., top of the hour. We are, of course, tracking severe weather that's been ongoing all afternoon across central Alabama. And the active warning that we're dealing with right now is in northeastern Cullman County with some really strong winds in the order of 70 to 80 miles per hour that could be happening up in Cullman County. We've been wall to wall with you for about the past six hours now, uh, and it's 7 p.m. Central Time. We've got more, more warnings to track. And Sarah, I don't think we'll fully be out of the woods until, you know, potentially 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. We had that tornado watch extended until 3 a.m. That's right. The tornado watch for our area has been extended until 3 a.m. We still have the active tornado warning in Coleman County, but the threat is nearing the edge of the warning. We're not seeing it extended, so that's good news for folks in Coleman. Right now, the threat has moved out of Coleman, so we're tracking this towards Baileyton right now, and that'll continue to lift up towards the northern portions of <coughs> Coleman County. So the difficulty with this tornado warning is because of the distance from the radar site. The radar beam is shooting at the storm and hitting it at about 5,000 feet above the ground. So it's hard to see exactly what's going on the surface, but we have to keep a really close eye on this one and potentially see the area of rotation tighten up here. So we have to be overly cautious this evening just because these storms have had a history of spinning and producing tornadoes and producing damage. So even though uh, it's not easy to see closer to the ground here, we still have to keep a close eye on it. So we're seeing some lightning start to develop here um, and might show some signs of strengthening for the storm in Coleman County, but it is nearing the edge of that warning. But for folks in Pleasant View towards good 
Gold Ridge. You need to be in your safe place right now through County Road 747, County Road 1629, County Road 1635 in Coleman County, 1506, State Route 69, and then even over towards Dyer's Crossroads and Providence, all in this tornado warning that will expire here shortly. We also have flash flood warnings that extend from Winston and Walker counties through Coleman County as well. So this is this includes Addison and uh, just south of Double Springs here along 278 near Arley. Really heavy rainfall, torrential rainfall falling through Winston County right now, likely causing flooding. That's why we have the flash flood warning in effect. Zooming out to show you the big picture, we do have the main line of storms back through Mississippi that is nearing the state line right now. Also, we have a current tornado warning for Selma, including the city of Selma. That is the Montgomery area, but, or the Montgomery market, but this is going to be tracking into Chilton County once again. So we still cannot let our guard down for folks in Chilton County. I know you guys dealt with multiple tornado warnings just about an hour or so ago, but we still have a very strong thunderstorm possibly producing a tornado tornado near Selma that was going to continue to move towards Chilton County. So we're going to be watching that one extremely closely. Showing you the big picture here, the area in the yellow, this is the tornado watch, was set to expire at 7. Well, now it's been extended until 3 a.m. So that shows that our environment is still capable of producing severe thunder or, uh, tornadoes. The that just means all the ingredients are there. So definitely do not let your guard down until the threat moves out later this way later this evening into the early morning hours. Severe thunderstorm warnings through Mississippi right now. That's the next round of storms that we're going to be watching. Here's where the time, the latest timing on Futurecast along the 2059 corridor through about 9, 10 o'clock. Heavy rainfall will continue to move through Tuscaloosa and then track into Jefferson County between about 10 and midnight. Not looking quite as organized on a future cast. Originally, we were looking at a pretty clearly defined squall line while the storms have broadened out just a bit. That's encouraging, but still, we could have some very strong winds in this line. The front will slowly move through the area and move in behind uh, colder air behind this as it moves out early tomorrow morning. All clear by 5 a.m., so still dealing with this for several more hours this evening. I want to show you the future wind speeds as well. So this is looking at wind gusts that could exceed 40 to 5 miles per hour by around 9. Heavier pockets of winds that could get close to 60 miles per hour around midnight. Because of all the rainfall we saw earlier today, the ground's really saturated. So really high winds are going to knock down trees easily, so power outages will definitely be possible overnight tonight. And falling trees are just pose a significant danger as well. So wind speeds near 60 miles per hour, severe thunderstorms will be possible when our winds are in excess of 58 miles per hour, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. So severe thunderstorm warnings will be possible around midnight tonight. You'll notice once the brunt of the storms move through, our wind speeds will calm down and tomorrow will be vastly different than what we were dealing with today. I'm going to send it over for, to Griffin for the latest on the active warnings we have in the state. Yes, Sarah, uh, Sarah thank you very much. Obviously, uh, there, there's been a very crazy day in Central Alabama. For lack of a better word, there's been just a whole lot of different severe weather. It was a scenario that we were afraid would happen, where we had discrete supercells that started popping up. It was a favorable environment for it. And as of right now, here's some good news. The window for us to see more of these discrete supercells popping up, that's getting shorter. It's getting closer and closer to sunset. It's getting darker. That means the atmosphere is getting cooler. And you really need, you know, really warm air, really warm, unstable air in order for supercells to start popping up. So right now, that window for supercells is getting smaller. That's that's some good news. And more good news farther east, or excuse me, farther west along the squall line that's coming in East Mississippi. It's only severe thunderstorm warnings that are popping up. Now those are still worth taking seriously because damaging winds are still a big hazard. And that's what we were kind of thinking would happen is as we got later into the night, maybe along the squall line we could have a few uh, spin-up tornadoes that could develop, but that's certainly 
maybe a little bit less of a worry compared to all the supercells that we saw earlier today. So again, fortunately, it appears to be severe thunderstorm warnings that are just developing along the squall line. Let's take you back to that Coleman County storm. Let me zoom back in on that. Uh, still an active warning until 7.15 p.m. It looks like the Weather Service office in Huntsville, who's, uh, who's what, which is what uh, Coleman County's they're included in Huntsville's county warning area. They may or may not decide to continue that warning, uh, but we'll see. Uh, as of right now, we've got about eight minutes left until that warning expires. Switching over to the high top radar. Uh, like Sarah mentioned a moment ago, the radar beam is still really high up. It uh, looks like uh, it's about 4,000 feet off the ground, so it's going to be really hard to tell for sure whether or not there's a tornado there. But it doesn't matter at this point because you see how bright those shades are. Uh, the, those bright, the, how bright those shades of green are, potentially indicating 60, 70 mile per hour winds that could be mixing down in the downdraft of that storm. So that's the only storm that's currently on the board. Uh, more good news. Uh, looks like it's moving away from Coleman. So if you're in downtown Coleman, I think we can give you an all clear. Still technically in the polygon, but uh, the storm is now past downtown Coleman. It's also past Good Hope too. So that's some good news there. Too. It's now to the uh, north of, ju passing just north of Berlin and passing northeast of East Point. If there is anything to worry about in that particular storm, it's all to the east of you. So if you're in Coleman, thankfully we can give you an all clear for this storm. Uh, if you're in Good Hope, this is well past you as well. Uh, it's also passing east of Vinemont. That's also worth noting. And farther down to the south, if you're in Coleman County watching us in Smith Lake, this is well past you. Again, no need to worry there either. Zooming in, zooming out, I should say. Uh, we do have another storm that maybe will bear watching. That's down towards Selma again. But like I mentioned before, we're kind of losing, kind of losing daylight here. Where um, any 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 of these storms kind of need more un, warm, unstable air to work right. with to in order to maintain themselves. So we got that storm that's outside our viewing area down towards. Uh, I believe it's Perry or Dallas or Atauga County that's down there to the south of our viewing area. But just one more active warning that will likely expire within the next uh, within the next five to ten minutes. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, Dave, if you're ready, uh, I can go yep. ahead and toss it back to you. Yeah, just uh, checking the latest here to see uh, what's uh, uh, on the uh, books right now with everything going on here. Right now, it looks like basically we're still watching those storms. As you mentioned, those tornado warnings there. A uh, new tornado watch has been extended till 3 o'clock this morning, or rather tomorrow morning, I should say, here uh, for all of central Alabama. So we're still watching that really closely at this time, too. Uh, so kind of highlighting that first and jump to that and show you what we're talking about. Uh, here, there's that watch that goes until three o'clock in the morning, and that is because we're waiting for that line to come in that's still well across part of Mississippi. So we still have some time uh, for that one to move on in, and when it does, uh, it's going to be bringing us the threat for some damaging winds, and we cannot rule out the threat for possibility of maybe a few more tornadoes coming in with that as well. Now that line of storms is currently coming in here just to the west right now, heading toward Columbus. Mississippi back to Starkville area, heading over toward Carrollton now. You can say kind of the edge of it here. I'll try to zoom out just a little bit and show you here uh, what we're talking about with the system. But as it moves on in, uh, it's going to continue working its way through part of the area here. And as it moves through into the Carrollton area, some of these storms could be strong, possibly severe. Uh, so we'll be watching to see how that does play out uh, moving forward here. But right uh, right now, though, uh, we're continuing to see here uh, the latest with the storms moving on into much of the area. So. Go here and kind of zoom out a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. There's that line kind of coming into Starkville right now. That's the one that's producing some of those stronger winds for us. And as it continues to move through the region, uh, that is what's going to help to bring us again the threat for uh, maybe those storms producing uh, some stronger damaging winds, maybe up to 70, 80 miles per hour with it as well as it continues to move through the region. So this is not going to be done right now. We're going to continue looking at this moving forward. And when we do, that's when we're talking about, again, all those storms kind of passing by the region. And it's going to take till, as we talked about earlier, Sarah was talking, maybe two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning until it finally clears the viewing area. So definitely something we'll be watching here moving on forward here. But still watching those storms up into the Coleman area, finally down here to the south.
Moving on in towards Shelton County once again uh, as it continued to clean up from the storms you just had. Uh, those have been, uh, again, some tornadic type storms out there. All of these, fortunately, are just some severe thunderstorms, at least at this point. So that's some good news. It's not rotating storms, uh, which we do have to watch out for. There is still the environment here in Alabama favorable for those tornadoes. Uh, so that's why we have the tornado warning extended until 3 o'clock in the morning. And some of them, unfortunately, could still be on the strong side. So again, up here in the Coleman area, we're still watching this storm. It's kind of moving out of the region now, uh, headed toward the Baileyton area. So we're still going to keep an eye on this one here for you as we go forward here. But uh, go ahead and stop that and kind of just show you what we're watching here. Uh, again, we just kind of talked a little bit about this. Uh, the rotation, not really significant here, but if, as we go over toward Huntsville and get a better view of it, you can see still has some stronger rotation tied in with that there. Uh, but definitely watch for some stronger winds here. Uh, this is going to move kind of just north of Holly Pond area toward the Baileyton area as well too. As for the debris tracker, again, not really seeing anything too significant at that point, uh, but definitely be watching for some heavy, heavy rain, uh, maybe the possibility there of some strong winds uh, potentially here. 50, 60 mile per hour winds. That's just going to still cause some damage for you. But up in Coleman itself, the storm has passed by you, uh, which of course is some good news. So we don't have to worry about that one, at least at this point. Light rain kind of to the south of there. A few more, some heavier downpours here coming out of Winston County, Double Springs area. So still going to be watching that. That's going to move into Coleman. So continuing near Hartsville area, Decatur there. Heavy rain continues to fall with flooding concerns up there as well, too. And they have a flash flood watch in effect uh, for the Huntsville area as well. Here at Birmingham, again, we're just looking at at some uh, really not much happening here. Some showers and some maybe claps of thunder at times here. I'll turn on the lightning and show you yeah, a few lightning bolts kind of coming on in toward the area there near Walker County. So at least at this point, uh, we don't have too much happening here in town, but we still are not done. So we still have a ways to go. Now with more news, let's go over to Sherry. Dave, thank you. We want to go out. You've seen what the radar looks like. We want to go on the ground in Tuscaloosa County. That's where our Michael Clark is now getting another look at some of the damage there. Michael, where are you? Yeah, we're on uh, South Rosser Road. It's a little bit beyond uh, where we were doing our broadcast uh, around 5.30 this evening, but we were able to get past the trees, and wow, look at the damage that we found at this one uh, property owner's home. You can see that the tree uh, in the front lawn here just toppled her uh, Mitsubishi. The glass is shattered out of the, black win uh, the back window. It's almost hanging from the uh, top part of the sunroof there. It's just, uh, uh, just one piece of the damage that property. We've seen uh, all sorts of items from her home that have been uh, strewn about the front of the lawn. We see this is the top of the roof uh, from her mobile home. And then uh, as we uh, kind of pan around, you can see again that insulation from the inside of that mobile home. Uh, and in the background, there's a mattress from the inside uh, that is onto this tree branch uh, that is from a large tree that is also on top of the mobile home. The woman who lives here miraculously took shelter behind the house. She was in a ravine. She wasn't able to find her keys to get inside. She had been looking for her uh, keys or car keys to try to leave to go to her son's house. And so uh, when the storm came about so quickly, she had to give up and eventually took shelter in a ravine oh under some uh, trees back behind her home. Yeah, she said that she uh, was holding on for dear life. She was on the phone with her son uh, as this storm was going overhead. She was just hanging on to this branch. She said she prayed to God, and as soon as she uh, asked for this to be over, uh, she said that's when it started to dissipate, and she was able to walk away from this. So uh, good news so far. No reports of any injuries out here. Definitely some property damage as well as plenty of trees uh, and power lines down. We've uh, seen some of the power crews out here working, trying to get uh, this all cleared, but it's going to take quite some time for that to happen. So uh, still in the dark uh, tonight. Obviously not uh, any power back here tonight, but um, folks are all just keeping their eyes peeled for the potential for a second round of severe weather out here. But for now, reporting live in Tuscaloosa County, Michael Clark, we'll send it back to you. Michael, thank you. What a story. Thank goodness for prayers answered. I want to send it back to the CBS 42 storm team as we get to the end of this latest warning. 
Yeah, uh, so the one up there in Coleman County, that warning has expired, which is some good news. So we don't have that anymore. That's going to be the storm itself moving out of the viewing area toward Huntsville, at least at this point. So still could produce heavy rain, gusty winds for those watching up there. Just be aware of that. Uh, the only other thing we're watching for locally here is this storm down to the south. Let me go ahead and turn this lightning off. Uh, but it's this storm here uh, kind of working its way toward Otago County. Uh, this one still has a tornado warning with it. It's some of the heavy rain from it is moving on in toward uh, Chilton County at this point. Uh, it looks like this one may kind of continue on that track there to Otaga County and may try to clip here on in toward Chilton County here a little later on. Right now, kind of just kind of give you an idea. It's all the way down to your Selma uh, Valley Grand there around eight minutes. So it's going to be a while, uh, but it does have the potential here for uh, some pretty strong uh, rotation with it. So that's why we're continuing to watch that one here. Uh, looking at the velocity product, it is rotating there near the Selma area again and not seeing any necessary debris at this point, but still going to be keeping an eye on that. And otherwise, Though the other things we're watching is that squall line coming here from the west. As that moves on in, the storms have been severe and will continue to be potentially severe as it moves into Alabama. We'll have more on that coming up here in just a little bit. Sherry. David, thank you. Now, just to remind you, our app right now, you can get the CBS 42 News app. Uh, it has the weather included to keep you up to date on the very latest tonight because we're only halfway through this particular weather event. So you can download that free app right now at the Apple Store or Google Play, the new CBS 42 News app. We want to get you back to your programming. And remember, stay with us online and our news app for the very latest on this widespread storm. Our crews are out getting images of some of the damage that people have had so far tonight. And remember, we've also had the um, tornado shelters listed at CBS42.com should you need to get to a safe place tonight as new storms move through. We'll return you to your programming now. This has been a severe weather alert from the CBS42 storm team. winds and yeah kind of some line straight line winds kind of closing in on the Fayette area there in Fayette County as well as on into Lamar County so just be aware again nothing tornadic with this one but again we're still talking about some very heavy rain uh, coming on into that area with this storm here so this is going to be moving on in the straight line winds kind of coming in with that system as well too and that's we're going to be looking at this entire line basically doing all of that but it's the kind of the southern part of this here that is where we have that storm here uh, that is producing producing Again, some of the chance here for maybe a tornado uh, as this crosses on into parts of Alabama at this point here, producing the chance here of maybe, maybe producing a tornado. And right now, uh, it looks like it's right on the state line. Uh, our debris tracker not really showing anything with that here, so that's some good news. Uh, but we'll definitely be watching this here throughout the next day hour here until about 9 o'clock just to see if this does try to produce anything with it. But really heavy rain, strong winds with this too. Uh, you can see the severe wind will put it on there and is kind of being mixed in with there. So we will see these winds 40, maybe up to 60 miles per hour at times with this, but that's because we have those stronger winds coming in. A lot of times you get some of these lines of thunderstorms building in and you get these little notches on them and sometimes they can produce like this one here, try to produce a quick little tornado. So uh, this is what we'd be watching here. Livingston, you're not under any severe thunderstorm warning or tornado warning, but we do have, again, uh, pretty much some strong uh, winds coming from there as well too. Here across Metro Birmingham, some rain back to Colorado. And nothing severe with any of this, but as that line kind of moves on in closer to us, Griffin, we are going to be dealing with again some heavier rain coming into more of the area. In just yeah, a while. absolutely. Yeah, this is just kind of turning into this big wash of uh, heavy rain, really gusty winds. Uh, you just mentioned that severe thunderstorm warning up in Marion County. That's mostly to do with wind. Uh, if I look, switch over to the reflectivity on that, uh, there's really not much that indicates there's any hail with that. Looks like this will just be a ton of heavy rain, if anything. It's coming down uh, like cats and dogs and Hamilton, Gwin, uh, even as far east into Walker County, Carbon Hill, Jasper, getting a ton of heavy rain right now. Uh, a lot of lightning strikes too, especially up towards Carbon Hill and Jasper. Uh, you see there just especially that big cluster up towards Carbon Hill. But thankfully, uh, the only storm that really poses any 
major significant danger uh, to life and property is this storm down in Greene County. Uh, <clears throat> well, excuse me, it's it's not quite into Greene County just yet. The only uh, real area of rotation that we're kind of watching here is riding riding on top of the Mississippi Alabama state line, and it's about to cross over Highway 17, which is the uh, Highway that goes parallel to the state line. Uh, if there's any area of rotation within the storm that could produce a tornado, uh, it's going to be just to the northwest of Gainesville. So if you're watching in Gainesville, kind of along the uh, 10 Tom waterway there, this is about 10 miles west of you guys over in Gainesville. Uh, the problem is in this part of the state, the radar coverage is not very good. So what we're looking at right there, that's rotation that's occurring about 5,000 feet above the ground. And the, the, of course, the tornado stretches all the way down to the surface. So it's kind of hard to tell for sure if we know if there's a tornado down or not. It would really have to be a very significant tornado to loft debris. And as of right now, it does not appear to be doing so. That's something we'd like to see. Uh, so we're going to stay with this just to make sure it uh, doesn't hold together. We have a lot of lead time with this. The tornado warning in effect for Sumter County and into northern Greene County for uh, until 9 p.m., so about the next 45 minutes. Uh, again, as Dave mentioned a moment ago, there's another small area of rotation a little bit farther north uh, that's kind of closer to Aliceville along the uh, Pickens Green County line, but that doesn't appear to be too significant, and the Weather Service appears to think so as well because there's not a polygon attached with that. It's just this rotation that's a little bit farther back uh, that's going to take a while to actually get into Green County. It might be another 10 minutes before it does so, but we'll stay with it. Uh, we'll stay with it nonetheless. So, um, uh, again, a tornado warning in effect until 9 p.m. for Sumter and Northern Green Counties. Uh, Sarah, if you're ready, I'll toss it back to you. Yeah, so here's the latest tornado warning. Let's zoom in to show you some of the communities that need to be getting into their safe place just out of an abundance of caution. Griffin talked about how the radar beam, this is kind of an area that isn't a great coverage for the radar site. The radar is a beam that's shooting up into the air. The farther away from you from it that the radar is farther away, it hits higher up in the atmosphere. So it's hitting 5,000 feet up in the air, so it's hard to see what's going on the surface. So we have to take these threats seriously and get into your safe place. If you're along State Route 14 in green, this is in the green and west green area. So new west green and west green right now. County Road 120 in Green County, County Road 115, Warsaw, Fair Oaks, County Road 85, Gobbler Road in Green County, County Road 107. If you have anyone that you know in Green County right now that lives along these roadways, they need to be getting into their safe spot. We're at that time of night where you are not going to see this coming. It is very dark outside. These storms are completely rain wrapped. You cannot see a tornado coming at this time of evening and with all the rainfall that is around this right now. So get into your safe place. If you're on State Route, State Route 14 in Greene County, Creek Road, Alabama Highway 39 in Greene County, County Road uh, 122, County Road 117. Zooming out to show you where this is tracking as well. We're also seeing a good bit of lightning starting to fire up in Pickens County. So these storms are strengthening in West Alabama. Where we see these lightning strikes starting to fire up, that shows intensity, that shows these storms really starting to bubble up and really intensify. We're even seeing uh, significant lightning through Tuscaloosa County right now. Leading edge here where you see this quick contrast between the dark colors and the lighter colors, that can show very strong winds. So wind speeds could be very gusty through Tuscaloosa County right now. And if this storm holds together, that's moving through green or towards Green County right now, this tornado warning could be extended into Tuscaloosa County depending on how uh, this holds together here. But there's a lot of lightning in Carrollton right now. Southern Pickens County is included in the tornado warning, not including not included uh, Carrollton in that, but but still folks along the green uh, Pickens County line need to be in their safe place as well. Going to zoom out to show you the big pictures. We have 
flash flood warnings. That's the darker reds that you're seeing on the map. The boxes that you're seeing flash are severe thunderstorm warnings in the orange, and then the one active tornado warning that we have right now. We'll continue to see these storms race through the area throughout the remainder of the evening. Strong winds will be likely. Isolated tornadoes cannot be ruled out as well. Through about midnight, we'll continue to see these storms push through. After midnight, we'll start to see clearing in West Alabama, but continuing to see the storms track into East Alabama, all clear between about 3 and 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll be done with the severe weather threat. Now, there is a chance for very strong winds throughout the remainder of tonight. Look at our future cast as far as the wind gusts go, around 50 miles per hour possible through around 9 o'clock tonight. Winds gusting over 50 through midnight, and then we'll see those high winds push east upwards of 60 miles per hour by around 3 o'clock in the morning in East Alabama. So high winds and power outages will be possible overnight tonight. I'll send it back to you, Dave. As we continue to watch this here, the storm as it continues to move on in, that is our one storm with the tornado warning. We have a severe thunderstorm warning here up near the Hamilton to Fayette area as well, and also some severe thunderstorms here kind of just south also of the uh, Chilton County area here. This is for hail, so we're watching this one here kind of moving off to the northeast as well. So things after a little lull for a while kind of picking up a little bit. Uh, one thing to notice here up here across part of the Hamilton to Fayette area, I want to zoom in on that one as well too. Uh, these storms here, as they were in Mississippi, you did produce some significant damaging winds. So a uh, brilliant area. Be careful. We do have again these storms kind of coming on into your area there. Gwyn area there coming in as well uh, as it moves on through could produce uh, pretty strong winds here. We're talking 60 mile per hour winds and this is what we're talking about with this that little line kind of coming through crossing Interstate 22 toward the Haleyville Carbon Hill area. Uh, be careful of that. That's going to be more of a wind event uh, than a kind of tornado event, uh, which is good. Uh, you don't have to worry about the tornado there. Uh, but as we go farther to the south here, uh, we're looking at these storms here also heading into Birmingham now. We do have some more downpours coming on and nothing severe, but some stronger storms coming to the area too. Let me go ahead and switch the rack to the Birmingham radar for those storms uh, just to give you an idea. It's coming, brain's coming down here uh, at the station, but you can see here uh, right now Vestavia back over toward midfield area, Lipscomb back to Bessemer, pretty heavy rain. And then check out this pretty heavy red downpour coming on in. This is going to move through the Hoover area here. Uh, so you can be dealing with again some pretty good downpours coming into your area and then following behind it still a longer track of this uh, more of that heavy rain continue to coming on in as well. Uh, so let me go ahead and move put this in motion and show you uh, as those storms come up here from the south. We need to watch them. None of them showing any rotation right now which is good but any kind of storms ahead of a main line traditionally have a chance to start rotating. So uh, we're going to be watching that. This is bringing some pretty wet weather to the Alabaster area and then back to Hoover, Birmingham, Hueytown, eventually Bessemer are getting some pretty good heavy rain from this too. Uh, again, throwing on the lightning with it. Uh, not a ton of lightning, which is good news with this. Usually if there's not much lightning, you don't have as great of a tornado threat. Not to say you can't get a tornado, but uh, a little less of a threat there with those. Uh, but still some strong gusty winds coming through Tuscaloosa now with this line as it passes on through that area there as well. Uh, just to give you an idea here, <clears throat> with the gusty winds there uh, back through Tuscaloosa here and put on the uh, severe wind threat and you can see here that's that little line right there. It's not a large area of heavy strong winds, but definitely some to watch, keep an eye on here. But let's go back over to see what's going on here with our storms back over to parts there heading on in toward uh, just south of Carrollton, not too far from the Utah area at this point. Still watching the storm here. Uh, it does have a threat that's trying to get maybe a little better organized. As mentioned, uh, this is kind of far from the radar in this location, so it's going to be a little bit harder to see. But we do have that rotation showing up right now here. This is kind of embedded here. If you look uh, right in part of this little line, so you don't have the perfect you know, supercell uh, hook echo what we did with the other storms earlier. But definitely some strong storms, or strong storm coming on in here. Where again not only the chance for a tornado, but also some straight line winds going in toward the Gainesville area. So if you're watching us in Gainesville, you need to take shelter immediately here with this storm. Uh, doing a track on it here and see if we can pick up any kind of cities with this one. It is moving about 55 miles per hour, so uh, the storm is moving fairly quickly. Uh, I'm going to eventually get to the uh, Clinton area there around, say, 15 minutes, Lewiston 17 minutes, uh, Bene uh, Benevola there around 22 minutes, uh, heading to Snotty there around 24 minutes, Pioneer around 28 minutes. So again, give you some pretty good lead time here as we go on in toward Green County there as we're still watching this one. 
still has the chance there possibly to produce a tornado, uh, but we'll see here at this point if we have anything with it. And right now, though, not seeing any kind of debris picked up with this here, uh, but that's the area we're going to be watching to see with that. Again, that's where we have some of our strongest rotations, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Gainesville area, you need to be in your safe place right now, but to go over the 10-Tom waterway there uh, as it moves on through here could produce some straight-line wind damage, but also that chance we could see, again, maybe a tornado tied in with that, too. Again, looking at the debris tracker. If we have something, we'll be watching that location right there to see if anything does start to pop up right now. I'm not seeing anything, but on the radar, though, intense rain, intense winds with this as well. This has been basically the windy part of the system coming out of Mississippi. So we still have this to go through the area as it continues to move on in. Maybe some hail tied in with this as well, too. Uh, but kind of zooming out even more with this, uh, you can see we do have that storm. Storm up to the north near Hamilton. That's already past you, but that's more of a straight line wind event coming on in. 60, 70 mile per hour winds possible with that. And then the system down here to the south, uh, this has been more of a uh, threat there for also some. Um, uh, hail with the one down there. So uh, Birmingham, we're just dealing with some pretty heavy rain coming on in. This one's going to be a hail storm. This is uh, we're talking about severe thunderstorm warning down there uh, for this storm here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one now uh, heading on in towards Shelton County. But that's some pretty good hail uh, expected with this here right now coming on in You see kind of the hail track with that one. Very, very heavy rain coming in with that as well. Not showing any rotation with that, which is good news. Uh, but checking out the reflectivity when it's really bright like this and and that's not the Columbus radar. Let's go ahead and move it back over to the Birmingham radar. Uh, you can see here, maybe trying to get a little bit of something going on there. Yeah. They canceled the tornado. Okay, that's good. Uh, watching this one, though, we'll still have to keep an eye on this. This is the south here. I have a potential with that as well, uh, but good news is they canceled that tornado warning, uh, which is good off to the west of us there. So again, kind of let's go back over to that real location real quick. And just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, heading over toward those locations that were Sumter, Pickens and Greene County. Fortunately, that storm has weakened quite a bit and they have now canceled that warning. So uh, right now, though, we'll continue to watch all this. Do be prepared for some heavy rain, some gusty winds. We have a few of those severe thunderstorms out there to watch as well, too. We'll keep an eye on all that. We're here with you all evening long. As uh, Be sure to keep it tuned to CBS 42, our app, as well as our social media pages and web page, too. So stay with us uh, there, and we'll be back in to break in with more programming. Uh, if we have to have any more severe weather for the rest of the evening hours. But right now, with that tornado warning canceled, let's go back over to our regular programming. This has been a severe weather alert from the CBS 42 Storm Team. This one now uh, with a tornado warning on it. This one does go uh, until right around 915 this morning here with that tornado warning. So we're going to continue seeing this here lasting for about another 45 minutes uh, with this storm as it continues to work its way into the area there here. But uh, not has not seen a significant debris. This is not debris with it. It's still back in here is the area we're looking at here uh, where you can see that's where the strongest rotation is. So we're not seeing debris tied in with that location right there, uh, but we do have kind Kind of that more hook echo, the classic look or supercell look to this thunderstorm. And so right now, uh, kind of zooming out from here, there is nothing really south of here. Really warm air. Temperatures are in the 80s down here in South Alabama, and that warm air is going to be transported north. And this is what's going to be fueling some of these storms here. So as this line comes in, that's working its way through Tuscaloosa, to Greensboro area right now as well, and the severe weather there up across part of Marion County. Uh, those are more straight line winds we're looking at here potentially coming on in. But we still have that one storm here and any storms ahead of that line, they have the potential to be tornadic and that's where we're watching any of these individual storms that get out ahead of that line and that it's that one we're talking about right now here over coming on in toward Chilton County, moving out right now of Otaga County where that's where the uh, uh, hook, if you will, is down there still to the south, but it will be working its way in toward Chilton County, uh, kind of working its way through parts, kind of clipping Elmer County here. 
and eventually could move into Coosa County. Uh, so we're still going to be watching as this moves on in here. Again, it does show some strong rotation with it. Uh, pretty easily to tell here what that rotation is as it continues to move on in. Again, does have that threat of being a storm that possibly produced a tornado again. So this is Interstate 65 here. Here's Highway 31 kind of running along it as well too as it kind of goes around here. Uh, so this is going to be crossing right over those areas. So to give you an idea of where we're going to be seeing the storm kind of moving on through, uh, you can see some of the different roadways here. Again, there's Interstate 65, Highway 31 right now uh, with that as well too. But you're going to be going over toward part of Otaga County 21, County Road 65, County Road 32, 123, as well as 57. All those are going to be in the potential path here of what could be a tornado. We'll eventually crossing the interstate right around the county line of Otaga and also into Chilton County there. Uh, so that's about where we're going to see this kind of working its way uh, through that region there. So kind of following it here, giving you an idea of where it's going to be going. Again, midway, about 11 minutes, take shelter now. Verbena, take shelter right now. 13 minutes away from you. Richville, around $28, around 28 minutes. Need to take shelter. I know you've done it a couple times. Keep doing it. Uh, we already had damage across part of Chelton County here from the storms earlier. This easily could produce some damage with the storms as well, too. So we do need to be aware of what's going on with these storms as they move on in through parts of there of Otaga County, heading back into Chilton County. This is not too far away from Interstate 65 at this point. Uh, you can see here on the radar, if there is a tornado, it's likely going to be rain wrapped. So again, this is going to be not easy to be seen. Of course, it's nighttime at this point, too. It can be a little scarier uh, since you can't see these, unlike the ones we had earlier, too. Uh, still not seeing any true debris kind of coming on into the area there, uh, but where we have the strongest rotation right here. And you can see that again where that is located. We do have a lot of heavy rain. So if there is going to be a tornado with this one, Again, just going to have to listen for the wind with that. Don't rely on those tornado sirens outside. If you're in your home, you probably can't hear them. Hopefully you have your weather radio ready to go. Your cell phone's fully charged. Be able to get you the alerts through there as well, too. You want to be in that lowest level of your home. In a basement would be preferred or interior bathroom or closet. Turn up the TV. Listen to our voices here uh, to give you the idea of where this is going and uh, who can be impacted by this as well, too. So that is the one storm we have with that tornado warning. Again, the tornado warning does go till 9:15 here. So we do have that uh, for about another uh, 45 minutes to go with this one as well, too. So we still have some time on that one around 30 minutes, I should say. But uh, still going to continue watching this one here uh, as it moves out there of Otaga County, heading on into Chilton County and eventually could make its way in toward uh, Coosa County here if it does hold together. So we'll be watching that one again. Looking at the debris tracker here, uh, not seeing really too much with that right now, which is good, but definitely has some strong winds with it. Uh, looking at the severe wind threat uh, right in through there. So we do have, again, winds 60, 70 plus mile per hour with this. So if there is not a tornado, uh, you're still going to get the intense winds tied in with this as well, too. So do be aware that that's something we'll be watching here uh, going forward here at this point. So that is the main storm we're watching here again, moving up from the southwest to the north Northeast, just like they all have uh, throughout much of the day and not too far away from crossing Interstate 30 or 65 and Highway 31. Sarah? Yeah, Dave, let's look closely at the communities in Chilton County that need to be in their safe place right now because I know you guys in Clanton and all across Chilton County have had multiple tornado warnings. You're probably sick of it. I completely understand, but this one is definitely one to watch if you are in the tornado polygon. You need to be taking this extremely uh take it seriously right now and get into your safe place. So this is tracking into uh, Chilton County right now in Otaga County nearing Verbena. So the heaviest rainfall right now is near Cooper. This is going to track in between Cooper and near Verbena. County Road 59 right now in Chilton County. Really heavy rainfall, torrential rainfall. You see the purples here, possibly some hail, but really strong downpours right now right along Interstate 65 near the Verbena exit. Midway also in the Tornado Polygon, County Road 447, 439, 437, 445 in Chilton County, all in that tornado warning. We're going to continue to see these storms race across the area this evening. 
The good news is he, the time frame has moved up a little bit, so we do expect the storms to push through a little bit sooner and get a little bit, uh, move a little bit quicker so we can give West Alabama the all clear uh, just around about midnight. They'll continue to push east and move out of East Alabama by the early morning hours tomorrow. Looking at the current active warnings that we have in place, we do have the tornado warning for Chilton County, including Verbena right now, and and then we have the flash flood warnings up to our north and currently the severe thunderstorm a thunderstorm warning up to our north. No warnings or no uh, severe thunderstorm warnings right now um, towards Columbus or Meridian. That is good news for us. That means that uh, thankfully the severe weather threat off to our west is coming down just a bit and we'll can see that trend continue for us here in the next several hours. Wind speeds will be high anywhere between 45 and 50 mile per hour wind gusts will be possible this evening. So very strong wind speeds with these sun thunderstorms, even if they do not meet the severe thunderstorm criteria, they will be producing very strong winds. Let's send it over to Griffin for the latest on the the warning right now for Chilton County. All right, thank you, Sarah. Yes, tracking that same. It's just it seems like it's just the same spots over and over again that are in kind of that southern part of our viewing area deeper into central Alabama that just keep getting hit repetitively today, especially if you're in Chilton County, like Sarah mentioned. I mean, it's 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 easy to kind of get you know, kind of get used to these tornado warnings that continue to pop up. Uh, but this is just yet another one that we're going to have to take seriously because uh, uh, even this late in the day, we're still seeing these supercells kind of hold together here. So this tornado warning that's in southern Chilton County, this is not going to be including Clanton. If you're watching us in Clanton, of course, we had that really powerful storm that came through a few hours ago and really came right through the center of town. Thankfully, it's just heavy rain that's happening in Clanton. The most dangerous part of this storm is down to the south of Clanton. This is only going to be impacting the southeastern part of Chilton County. Same goes for you guys farther north up in Jemison and up in Thorsby. Uh, if you live along Highway 31, Chilton County, if you're uh, excuse me, to the north of Clanton. You don't really have to worry too much about this storm. This is going to be passing down to the southeast of you, lifting northeast like that. So let's zoom out a little bit more to give you a better idea of what's happening across the viewing area. We have just this, uh, we have, uh, we, we've got a big line of storms, but I would hesitate to really call it a squall line because it's not very organized. It's just kind of devolved into this big mass of thunderstorms that's spread out across much of Tuscaloosa County, a lot of Walker County getting a ton of lightning strikes and torrential rainfall right now. Actually, if I can, I'm going to pull up the Summiton camera to show you what it looks like outside right now. That's Gadsden that you see right there. There's Summiton, so they're kind of in the, the thick of this thing. A lot of those lightning strikes you see there off in the distance looking to the uh, to the west uh, from that summiting camera there. Obviously, it's a, it looks pretty bad if you're if you're kind of watching this from your window all across much of west central Alabama. But the only really dangerous thing that we're really concerned with now is back in southeastern Chilton County. As Sarah mentioned, no severe thunderstorm warnings happening right now. All the heavy rain that's falling in Birmingham right now. Again, that is also non severe. It's just like I said, a big mass of disorganized heavy rain, a lot of lightning strikes. But of course, we got to turn our attention down to this Chilton County storm, and this is probably the third or fourth tornado warning that Chilton County has had today. Uh, there's a it's, it just seems like they can't escape the action. So let's pause the radar here, try to see if we can diagnose this storm a little bit better. Uh, again, this is south of Clanton. If it's going to be impacting anybody in Chilton County, it's not going to be Clanton. Uh, this will just be the uh, southeastern tip of Chilton County. And as of right now, I'm not really seeing anything that would indicate any uh, debris in that storm. And really good, same for the wind velocity here. I mean, you kind of look for uh, inbound and outbound winds to be touching each other here. We're, there was, there's definitely some strong winds that are coming into Chilton County right now. Uh, right about here, it looks like just west of 65 near County Road 57. You know, 48, 55 mile per hour winds. But once again, this is this is going to be happening south of the more populated areas of Chilton County. The Big Peach is up towards the Clanton exit, and we did have reports of damage that have happened from earlier storms. But this particular storm is most likely not going to pose a threat uh, to Clanton. Just to reiterate, 
Back farther to the west, more heavy downpours in progress. Uh, and it just, it just keeps on going. A ton of heavy rain across much of Tuscaloosa County, Walker County. Uh, I want to zoom out a little bit farther to give you more good news. Uh, we don't really have any active warnings happening right now in Mississippi. We were kind of thinking that we would have the squall line develop back towards uh, the Mississippi Delta region, all up and down I-55, uh, going between Memphis and Jackson. We were kind of ex anticipating some storm development here around this time. And uh, good news is we're really not seeing that. I, I think the atmosphere is just kind of running out of juice, so to speak. I mean, we've got we've had these thunderstorms that have been ongoing all day long, and now that we're getting later into the day, uh, we're kind of running out of energy to tap into. So temperatures getting cooler back here. Uh, the front itself is somewhere back but along that I-55 corridor, and all these storms are forming out ahead of it. Uh, you can hear, probably hear that thunder on top of Red Mountain here at the station, uh, but once again, that that looks pretty good. I mean, that we'd like to see that. We don't really want to have to deal with any too many more storms. But of course, we're going to have to stay with you for as long as that tornado watch uh, is in effect. So once again, the only main area of concern in terms of any severe weather right now is Chilton County. Uh, if you're watching us in Gadsden and Anniston, it's been qu pretty quiet out there all day long. And the main reason for that is because there's been this nose of rain cooled air that's kind of put a damper on any potential storms from developing. I'm trying to pull up the temperatures here so I can show you that uh, the, all the, the really warm, moist, unstable air has been across our southern tier of counties. So we have been Everywhere that's in northeast Alabama has been pretty low key today. You see Gadsden sitting at 64, Anniston only at 67. Uh, that's the actual temperature and the dew points uh, certainly not even not very high either. So we got to wait until uh, until this watch expires to continue uh, to to really give it all clear for everybody across central Alabama. Here's the tornado watch, which includes everybody uh, in effect until 3 a.m. That may or may not be cut short, but we'll obviously have to wait and see about how this severe weather situation uh, develops. Dave, if you're ready, I'll toss it over to you. All right, Griffin. Yeah, so again, the main storm we're watching is this one here coming out of Otago County going into far southeastern Chilton County at this point. It is has that to hook echo with it here still, and we still have that uh, rotation with it as well, too. So we do have this storm has the potential to produce a tornado uh, as far as we can tell has not done so yet. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, though, we're still going to be watching this one here very, very closely with it. Uh, looking at that debris tracker, we're not seeing anything where the main circulation is, so it's not this we're looking at down there. Uh, so that that is some good news, but uh, nonetheless, though, we'll be watching to see how this one does play out here as we go forward here as it kind of closes right along the county line there of Otaga heading on into Chilton County. Now, Clanton, you're not going to be impacted by the storm directly. You're still getting some rain, probably hear the thunder, see the lightning tied in with this as well, too. Let me go up here to the north, and you're probably hearing all kinds of thunder and lightning here across the Birmingham area. Yeah, check this out here. We do have plenty of it coming on in from Birmingham all the way to the west here. Uh, this is that line that we were talking about also kind of coming from Jasper back into Summerton right now, uh, and this is going to produce some pretty strong winds, 40 to maybe as much as 60 mile per hour winds as this moves on into the area there. Uh, pretty intense, heavy, heavy, heavy rain coming in with this as well, too. So I'll be watching that, but let's close in uh, more into the Birmingham area. You can see the lightning in the Tuscaloosa camera there uh, right now as well, too. But let's go straight on into town here and uh, show you what we got going on. Uh, heavy rain coming in. You can see I have the lightning on there as well, too. And so as we see some of the lightning get pretty good downpours from Lipscomb area back to midfield, heading toward Bessemer, much of the Hoover area going over toward Homewood, Vestavia, all the areas here. Very heavy rain coming in. It's been fairly quiet for some of you uh, for some time here now. Uh, we'll continue to watch this, though, now. Uh, still seeing uh, that uh, tornado warning continuing uh, from the weather service there to the south. So we'll still be watching that. Indian Springs, they had the heavy rains kind of working its way to the north here, uh, kind of loop this for you and show you that all this continue to work its way on in. Uh, it's uh, kind of slowing down a little bit and when that happens this is where we can see some of that heavy rain uh, kind of starting to possibly begin to run off quicker. So some of the streams and creeks are probably starting to run a little bit high. We picked up over an inch rain earlier today. This could easily drop a half an inch to an inch of rain real quick too. So if you live in an area that's prone to flooding, you live near a creek, uh, keep an eye on it. It's going to be coming on up here with all the heavy rain, not only from this, uh, but from what's coming 
coming down the pike here. Uh, you can see what's going on near Summerton right now. Heavy storms continuing to come in with this. Uh, still producing some pretty strong winds with all that as well, too. Uh, going ahead and look here, we'll kind of give you an idea of what we can expect here uh, with some of those winds here. And uh, looking at that right now, uh, we can see here uh, right now some of that line right in through there. See that kind of a C shape? That's where your stronger winds uh, would be with. Let me go ahead and stop this and show you. So that's coming on in closer to the Summerton area, at least at that point. So we'll continue watching that. Also, the storms here from Alabaster to Hoover. Heavy, heavy rain coming on in. I'll just track that here for you right now. Looks like it gets to the Turner area in about a minute. Helena there in about, say, six minutes. Pelham about seven minutes. Lipscomb around 12. Hoover in about 12 minutes, Vestavia about 15 minutes. That's that heaviest rain coming in here from the south. Homewood about 16 minutes. Uh, Mountain Brook about 19 minutes for you as well too uh, with that storm that we'll be watching right there. Uh, so definitely going to be continuing to watch some of those. Uh, let's go back down here over towards Sylacauga area. You still have some pretty heavy rain coming on in with this storm as it moves on in here. Uh, Childersburg, that's going to give you some pretty good downpours coming on in as well. Uh, not seeing any rotation right now with this one, so that's at least good news, uh, but it's going to produce just some very, very heavy rain. But as we go down here, uh, this is our storm we've been watching here with that. Uh well, it looks like the tornado warning has just been canceled with that one. Uh, so that's at least good news here. We still have the severe thunderstorm warning the southern part of this, uh, but uh, at least good news here. Let's kind of zoom right in and check this one out here again, too. Uh, still showing some rotation with it, but uh, again, has not produced a tornado, maybe more broad or larger, wider area rotation, want more of a tighter area uh, for it to be maybe a tornado warning with that one. Uh, so still looking at this one here, uh, looks like the tornado warning has just been canceled, which is good news with this one. Uh, but nonetheless, though, still going to produce some very heavy rain with it, probably some strong winds with that as well, too. You can see it's going to continue on that track here off to the north here and maybe could be impacting Alexander City if it holds together, maybe just kind of beyond there, heading up toward eventually between there and Silicaga. So uh, we'll continue watching that one here, Griffin, as it moves on out. But at least at this point, uh, we don't have that tornado warning anymore, which expired a little bit early. Originally it was out till 9. 15. But right. nonetheless, we're starting to see a little more active weather coming in. At least at this point, nothing too, too bad. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, kind of devolving into, well, obviously we're getting later in the day, which means there's a lower overall chance of seeing discrete supercells pop up. Usually that only happens, uh, or, or usually most of the time happens when it's warmer during the day. And as of right now, of course, that tornado warning now expired for Chilton County. Excellent news uh, because they've just been get, they've been put through the ringer today in terms of tornado warnings. Watch is still in effect until 3 a.m. We've got a couple flags. Flash flood warnings as well to, that are worth noting up in northern Walker County, southern Winston County, and up into Cullman County. Uh, these consistent waves of heavy rain obviously exacerbating all of the excess water in our streams and waterways and potentially in low-lying areas on roadways. So, I mean, it's, it's certainly not a night you want to be out and about, that's for sure, because it's just a total mess out there. Severe weather or not, which we have a lot of, you probably don't want to be out and about right now because it's just raining, it's nasty, it's a mess out there. So, um, thankfully, that severe thunder, excuse me, that tornado warning has since been expired for Chilton County. I want to take you through our latest future cast here. Uh, we, before I toss the anchors, I want to show you this. There may be a little bit of redevelopment that happens here later this evening. That is still kind of to be determined. I mean, our forecast model may, may not be quite up to date with the situation in terms of how the atmosphere is stabilized a little bit with all those storms over in Mississippi, but still a chance for a few more storms later tonight as the front sweeps through. So we're going to stay with you with more updates as the tornado watch remains in effect for the rest of the night tonight. Art and Sherry, if you guys are ready, I'll toss it back over to you. Yes, Griffin, thank you. We want to get out to Chilton County. We have the director of the EMA there, uh, Derek Wright, on the phone with us right now. They got hit pretty hard tonight. So, Derek, tell us what, what you guys are experiencing right now. Uh, earlier today, we've uh, been on our, our third tornado warning right now mm -hmm. uh, for the southern part of the county and then one for the northern part of the county as well. So it's going to be our four total. Uh, the first one didn't touch down and produce too much damage. The second one, we uh, had a small area that we had uh, multiple homes destroyed in, and now we're just north of uh, in Cooper's of the tornado warning that's, that's on right now. Uh, we're not expecting that one to produce too much. It's, it's kind of falling apart, but we're still just north stage to be able to prepare to respond to it. But uh, 
Uh, it's been an interesting evening. Uh, we, we've been able to handle it pretty well. Our first responders have done a great job so far. The uh, National Weather Service has done very well in keeping us informed and being right on target and letting us know where they're at and giving us a heads up. So everything has played out pretty well, uh, you know, as it could be. Well, I'll correct that then, Derek. I said you guys had hit pretty hard. You've been in a holding pattern tonight. We're looking at some of the damage, so certainly for some homes in Chilton County, um, it was pretty rough. We also had some, some video earlier, too, of people inside some of the, some of the shelters. How, how have you found the community to respond to all of the warnings and the information put out ahead to keep them safe? The community has done really well. Uh, you know, we've known about the storm for days, so many of them are prepared. Uh, the shelters have been been open so they've been taking full advantage of those for pretty much most of the day uh, we've had those at a, at a very large capacity um, so they, they've been doing pretty well uh, communities obviously been out there helping uh, as soon as the storm hit the community's out there helping these those who lost their homes be able to go through their things and get valuables and things so the community has done very well uh, with this storm for us and uh, we're proud we're proud of our community I'm proud indeed and director Wright um, so far we have not heard of any major injuries, any serious injuries. What do you attribute that to? Uh, that is a lot of the, about the tornado warnings. Uh, everyone in the location actually had been destroyed, had uh, took shelter uh, within minutes prior. Uh, they, they had known it was coming for them. They were able to take shelter. Uh, so we were glad that they were able to have some kind of way of getting notification for those warnings and, and taking heed to those warnings and uh, being prepared. So we uh, we do very well there being able to get them the information they needed. Um, just one quick last question for you. As far as roads and things in that area, any place you need people to avoid, any roads blocked or closed tonight? We have been able to get all the roads back open at this time. Uh, there is some areas that have uh, heavy water on them, so just take caution when driving, but all the roads at this time have been open back up. Well, Director Wright, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to um, spend with us this evening to give us an update on the condition there following, as you say, four tornado warnings that you guys have had there. I'm certainly glad to hear that everyone's all right and you've got the roads back open again. And some limited damage. Thank you, Derek Wright, Director of Chilton County EMA. We're going to return you to our regular programming going on right now here on CBS, and we'll see you back here for the news at 10 or, if need be, sooner. That's right. This has been a severe weather alert from the CBS 42 Storm Team.